Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto had the power of Kurama and ancient silver dragon sealed in him. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. A bloodline from you both? Naruto asked. Yes, Kayubi said, we can alter your genetics so you can get one from us both. What would you like? Naruto thought for a couple of minutes. Well, from the dragon. Naruto said, I think one like the Sharingan, although it would copy bloodline if I wanted to not just everything I see. Plus if it's a jutsu it gives me the hand signs and how much chakra it uses. This is so I can get an understanding of it. I don't want to steal someone else's hard work. The dragon smiled at this. This kid was always willing to learn. And from you Kayubi, how about on with Genjutsu? I think one that can cause actually wounds and be able to break the one event he Sukonomi. Sounds like you're trying to find a way to fight an Uchiha, Elion said. Well, Naruto said, if Sasuke does get that strong or if by chance I run into his brother I want to be ready with that. Plus let's face it my Genjutsu sucks. All right kid, the fox said, it will take a while for us to get these done. About a week or so. In the meantime train. When we get those swords we'll teach you some techniques. All right, Naruto said, see you two later. Naruto then woke up to find Sakura watching over him. Hey Sakura, Nartuo said, what are you doing here? Well, she said, I felt sorry when you got hurt, I decided to watch you. Thanks, Naruto said, as he got up to leave Sakura kissed his cheek. That was for saving me. She's safe as she saw the shocked look on Naruto's face. Naruto and Sakura walked downstairs. When they got there they found Kakashi sitting at the table reading his little orange book. He got an annoyed look from both Sakura and Tsunami. Hey Kakashi sensei, Naruto said, can I talk to you later I have something I need to talk to you about. Okay Naruto, Kakashi said. As dinner started a little boy with a fisherman's hat came down. He didn't eat saying he wasn't hungry and left. Naruto had a feeling that this kid had been through some tough times. He hadn't seen the village so he didn't really know. After dinner the silver-haired ninja pulled Naruto to the side and out to the backyard. What is it you needed to talk to me about Naruto? Well it's about what happened in the forest, Naruto said. I know about my tenant before you ask and as it turns out I have another one. What? Kakashi asked surprised. Yeah, Naruto said, his name is Elion. He's supposed to be the king of the dragons or something. Anyway according to them they gave me their chakra so that I could survive being slashed across the chest by Zabuza back in the forest. Other than these physical changes I have enhanced senses that are on par with the ninja hounds and my physical abilities have increased tenfold. Kakashi was currently slack-jawed. He had heard that the influence of such creatures could result changes but this really took the cake. Anything else Naruto? The man asked after he regained his composure. Yeah, Naruto said, I'm going to end up getting bloodlines. Naruto it's good that, he stopped when he had to do a double take, wait did you say bloodlines as in more than one bloodline? Yeah, Naruto said, one from the dragon will be able to give me an understanding of moves I see and copy bloodlines. The other gives me some genjutsu abilities since my own just plain sucks. Kakashi was right now having a moment where he thought that this was just some messed up dream. He decided to just leave it to them since he couldn't tell if Naruto was lying or not. Okay, Kakashi said after being silent for a moment, do you already have them or are we going to have to wait? They both said that it would take about a week before I'm able to use them, Naruto said with a tone that said he was a bit upset by it, until then could you not tell anyone about it I don't aunt Sasuke trying to interrogate me about how I got it. That's understandable Naruto, Kakashi said. He had been looking forward to training the boys since he had a debt to pay to Obito. Unfortunately or fortunately, depends on how you look at it, that little crack about how Naruto was being stupid by nearly giving his life for his teammate was what broke him of that. Uchiha or not this kid really needed to learn some humility. Is there anything else? Kakashi asked. Yeah, Naruto said, I'm going into town tomorrow so I can get some swords. Is it okay if I train on my own? I don't want Sasuke getting any ideas. Okay, Kakashi said, I'll tell them that you awoke a bloodline during the fight with Zabuza and that you're trying to get it under control. Thanks Kakashi sensei, 
Naruto said with a grin. With that the two entered the house. Almost immediately Sasuke walked up to them. What were you talking about? He asked wanting answers. None of your business, Naruto said. Sasuke growled at Naruto and turned to Kakashi. Naruto was just telling me something about the abilities he used, Kakashi lied, he thinks that it might be an old bloodline. It's probably nothing compared to the Sharingan, Sasuke said making Kakashi mentally groan. What was I thinking when I wanted to train this kid, he thought. After that and some amazing dessert, which happened to be cake, everyone went to bed. Sasuke was eyeing Naruto though trying to figure out how he could get power like that. The next day Kakashi was in thought about something. It was noticed by Naruto since they were at the breakfast table. Hey sensei what is it? Naruto asked. I don't think that Zabuza is dead, he said making everyone at that knew the name sit up. Tazuna and Tsunami were both a little pale at this. If this guy was really alive then they could come for them at any time. The boy who was with them, Inari Tazuna's grandson, was nervous also. He had heard about him from Tazuna. He was really nervous. What? Sakura scared, but we saw him get carried off by that hunter ninja. How can he be alive? Sakura, Kakashi explained, if that was a hunter ninja then he would have started getting rid of the body as soon as he was able to. So what you're saying is that that was a fake one and was in league with him? Naruto asked. That's what I'm getting at Naruto, Kakashi said, apparently you're smarter than you let on. Yeah, Naruto said, by the way do you really think that we can do this on our own? To be quite honest Naruto, Kakashi said, I don't. Kakashi got up from the table taking a knife with him and used it to cut the end of his thumb. Then he slammed his open palm onto the ground. Summoning Jutsu. There was a puff of smoke and when it cleared it revealed a small pug. Hey Kakashi, the dog said making the people around him freak out. Pakun, Kakashi said, I need you to go to the Hokage. Tell him that we've run into some trouble and we need Ozmi back up for the mission preferably some anbu. The small dog nodded its head and then vanished in a puff of smoke. So, Kakashi said as the children and adults around him gained their composure, judging by the injuries Naruto gave the swordsman I'd say it'll be about a week before Zabuza comes after us again. Until that day we train like there is no tomorrow. Everyone nodded at that and got up. They followed the one-eyed wonder before he stopped in an old field. Naruto, he said, I want you to go off on your own with that bloodline who knows what will happen. I want you to try the tree climbing exercise. To do this just concentrate the chakra into the soles of your feet. Then use a kanai to mark how high on the tree you've gotten. If you have any problems let me know. Naruto nodded at the older man and ran off. Why does that loser get to go train on his own? Sasuke asked. Naruto's new abilities may cause some problems, Kakashi explained. For all we know he might end up blowing up the tree that he uses less damage for us i guess sasuke didn't say anything he just grunted and took out a kanai then he ran at the tree and ran up it he broke the bark on the tree he grunted as he fell to the ground sakura however reached the highest branch hey kakashi sensei i did it she yelled good job sakura kakashi said but don't stop the only reason you go so high is because your chakra reserves are low keep at it and you will raise your reserves if you start to feel exhausted take a break. You're no use to anyone if you don't have any chakra. The girl nodded. Since she got over Sasuke she was starting to think more clearly. She decided to stop kidding around and to finally start her training. She jumped down from the branch and started running up again. Meanwhile Naruto was walking through the town. As he looked around he felt his anger build up. He couldn't believe that someone would put so much suffering on so many people in all honest it made him sick to his stomach. Calm yourself, Elion said, that pig's time will come, until then focus on the matter at hand. Naruto did that. He walked until he found a small store that looked like it had weapons. He walked in to find the place completely devoid of merchandise. The only things there were two small swords on the wall. Hello, Naruto said, is anybody here? An old man walked out and looked at Naruto fearfully. Please, he said, don't punish me. It's been a hard time for me I comma I can't pay this month. Sorry old man, Naruto said, I'm not with Gato. I was brought here to guard the bridge builder so that this place can thrive again. Oh, the man sighed relieved, thank you, now what can I do for you? I'll take those two swords on the wall, Naruto said. 
The old guy grabbed the two swords and handed them to Naruto. Naruto then took out his wallet and emptied the contents on the counter. I hope that will cover the pay, Naruto said as the man looked on the verge of tears. Thank you, he said, thank you. No problem, Naruto said as he hefted his new swords onto his shoulders and walked out, he got back to his training spot in the forest. So what am I supposed to do with these? He asked his tenants. Focus our chakra into the sword kit, Kayubi said, then watch. This is going to be good. Naruto did as they said. Silver and red chakra flowed out of Naruto's arms and morphed the two swords. The swords grew until they were about four feet long and wider than the average katana. Then what looked like a fox head and a dragon's head formed form the chakra and went down to the swords. As they did there was big flash. When Naruto opened his eyes he got a surprise. One sword ha di golden blade. The hilt looked like it was made of gold and had two green emeralds on the hilt. The handle was silver and was wrapped in a brown leather. On the bottom of the hilt there was a red crystal that was made to absorb sweat to avoid loosing one's grip. The other sword had a crimson blade with a black hilt. The two red orbs on the hilt and it also had leather wrapped around the handle. On the bottom of said handle was green crystal that pretty much had the same function as the one on the gold one. Now all I have to do is name them, Naruto thought out loud. He decided to name the golden one, Dragon Claw, and the red one, Fox Fang. Fitting names are they not? Elion asked Kayubi. Very fitting, the fox answered, now that that is out of the way we can get started. Try that tree climbing thing your sensei mentioned. Naruto ran at a nearby tree Kanai drawn, he ran up the tree without any problem, he reached the top and stayed there for a few seconds in shock. How the heck did I do this? My chakra control was never this good. Apparently when we merged with you we evened out your control, Kayubi said. Nice, Naruto thought to the fox, by the way what am I supposed to do with my swords? If I have them out more than likely Sasuke Teme is going to try and steal them. Don't worry, Elion said. You can seal away the swords in the tattoos on your arms. Plus, we put a defense mechanism on both swords. If anyone other than you tries to pick them up, then they get burned by quick bursts of our chakra. Naruto nodded. He continued to do the tree climbing exercise for the rest of the day. Even though he was convinced he had it down, he didn't want to come off as lazy. After a day of doing this, he sealed away his words with instructions from his tenants. Then he went to Tazuna's place. He walked in to find the other members of his team. Sasuke and Sakura both looked completely exhausted. What happened to you two? Naruto asked. Training takes a lot out of a person, Sakura groaned. As Naruto sat down the Inari decided to voice his mind. Why do you try so hard? Inari asked, Gato's just going to kill you just like everyone else who's gotten in his way. Inari. Tsunami gasped. Kid, Naruto said, we aren't from here. We just won't roll over and take a beating we will fight back. So what, Inari yelled, you're from a big fancy village, here we've been forced into poverty and have to work just to keep a roof over our heads. You probably haven't had to work a day in your life, then you just come in here without a scratch on you, you don't know what it means to be in pain. Kakashi, Sakura and Sasuke all looked at each other, then they all got up from the table taking the bridge builder and his daughter with them. They knew that his was as our subject for Naruto. Back at TH Academy one kid made fun of Naruto by saying that he was worthless orphan with a whore for a mother and a drunk for a father and that he was always going to amount to nothing. The very same boy went home with a cracked skull, a few missing teeth, a busted lip, a few bruised ribs, his upper arms and lower legs cracked and a black eye. Everyone from then on knew not to talk about that or like that to Naruto. The teachers and the boy's parents tried to have Naruto punished for that but the old man said that the boy brought it on himself with his relentless teasing. Naruto turned to Inari his face dark. You think, that I, don't know pain, he said in a low voice. He got up and lifted Inari off the ground to look the boy rigged in the eyes as he glared at him. Listen kid do you have a mother that loves you? A place to call home? Do you have to spend your tm digging food out of garbage just to get something to eat? Do you get chased down by a mob almost every day and beaten within an inch of your life and even worse on your birthday? Let me tell you something you little crybaby. No matter how bad you think that your life has been that there is always someone who has it worse than that. Also if you don't like the way things are going around here, then why don't you stop brooding around like a spoiled runt and do something about it? 
Naruto then dropped Inari on his butt and headed for the door. I'm going to go blow off some steam, he said while walking out the door slamming it behind him. Sensei, Sakura said after a tense silence, what Naruto said, is it true? Did all of that really happen to him? Sakura, Kakashi said, if anything, that was the severely sugar-coated version. Everyone nearly had their jaws unhinged as he said that, Kakashi continued. When Naruto was younger me and a few other Anbu were assigned to guard him. Almost all the time we had to save him from being beaten to death by the villagers. One night I remember taking him to the hospital after he had been nailed to a cross. I had to dig him out of the forest after he was buried alive. I even remember saving him from some drunk who had put him in a burlap sack drenched with alcohol and nearly burned alive. All this they did and much worse. If anyone knows what pain is it is definitely that boy. Sakura was completely in tears, she had been told that Naruto was a demon. After she had her eyes open she couldn't help but cry. She couldn't believe that her mother actually supported this. It brought tears to her eyes. Inari was in tears also. After hearing all that he knew that he had been wrong when he said that Naruto had not known pain. Tsunami was crying over the fact that a child had to go through all that. Tazuna was clenching the side of the table. If it weren't for the fact that this was Ninja Village he would go down there and beat the crud out of every person that ever hurt this kid. Kakashi secretly had tears because Zhu the thought of his own village doing this to a little boy who had no control over what had happened to him at birth, it just made him so upset. The only person who seemed to be indifferent was Sasuke. Where did he get all that from? He asked getting looks from everyone, he probably just made all that up, he probably just said that so people will pity him. He would have continued but he was cut off by a killing intent from practically every person in the room. Though how three civilians, one of which a kid, were able to use killing intent none would ever know but still. Sasuke then decided to get out of there and headed upstairs to bed. I can't believe I wanted to date him, Sakura yelled. Meanwhile, Naruto was panting. He had just destroyed a few trees. He had dragon claw and fox fang out and was currently slashing at anything in his path. He stopped to breath near a river. He looked into it to see his reflection. He saw that his eyes were now red and his pupil was still slit. They are right, Naruto said to himself, I am a demon. No. Naruto stumbled back at the force of the yell from the dragon inside him. Child you are not a demon, the dragon said, if you were a demon you would have laid waste to that infernal village that you live in. Oh yeah, Naruto said speaking out loud, if I'm not a demon then why am I alone? Why did my apprentice abandon me? Boy, Elion said, your parents did not abandon you. How do you know? Naruto asked. Well if you don't believe me, Elion groaned, then why don't you ask them? Naruto had to do a double take when he heard that. My parents, are alive? My parents are alive? Yes they are alive, Elion said. I thought that they died in the fight with the Kyubi, Naruto said clearly confused. Yes, Elion stated, you father should have. When I entered the seal at your birth it broke the deal with the Shinigami. The deal broke and he could not take your father's soul. However, he put your father in a deep sleep that prevented him from coming for you. He did the same thing with your mother who would have survived the attack. Oh so my dad fought the, Naruto paused for a moment, wait a second, does that mean that my dad was the? Yes boy, Kayubi growled, your father was the Yandaimi. Naruto felt himself get dizzy for a few moments. This was a lot to take in. First he finds out that after being an orphan for a few years that his parents are alive and that his father was the Yandaimi, the greatest hero of the village. Man this was a lot to take in after a few seconds. Fortunately Naruto was alone and since he was talking out loud he didn't have to worry about someone coming along and thinking he was mentally insane. You know who my mother was? Naruto asked. Yes, he said, I did. You see the man who started your clan was Master Swordsman. My father Garen was in a battle with a few demons. Your ancestor fought alongside him. As a result my father said that in the future the dragons would help him. A few years after I hatched I found my father gave me my mission and I watched over your family. For centuries I watched your family. I only acted when I sensed that your father was going to seal the fox into you. I knew you would need a mother and a father. That is why I did what I did. Okay, Naruto said understanding, so how do I know where to find my parents? If what the death god told me is correct then they should be in a hospital about a few miles away, the dragon said, 
But first you might want to get back to your team. They might be starting to get worried. Okay, Naruto said as he ran back to Tsunami's house, as he did he didn't notice a figure in a hunter mask watching him. What was that all about? She thought, maybe Zabuza-sama knows something about this. She vanished in a blur. Naruto ran back to the house to find that everyone had gone to bed. Naruto snuck upstairs to his room and found it and went. Don't worry mom and dad, he thought as he drifted off to sleep, we'll be together again soon enough. Meanwhile, he was talking to himself? Zabuza asked the figure in front of him. Yes, Haku said, I was out trying to get some info on the people who we are going against. He was talking to himself like he was having an argument with someone else. Zabuza was in thought as he heard this information. As were the demon brothers. When Zabuza learned of their failure he dispatched Haku to retrieve them. Luckily she got there before the Anbu did. When the two heard about what happened to Zabuza they were pretty upset. He was like a father to them, or just a very bossy big brother. Zabuza remembered something. He had heard about these things back in the Mist Village. He guessed that this kid was Jinchuriki. The only question was what this kid had contained. Haku, he said, I don't want you to survey these people anymore. If this kid really is what I think he is then we might have more trouble than we think. Yes Zabuza-sama, Haku said. Don't call me that, Zabuza said shocking the three present. But I am just a tool for you to use, Haku said confused as to why he told her not to call him her master, you told me this yourself. I did see you as a tool at first, the swordsman explained, but as the years passed you grew on me. You aren't my took Haku, you're my daughter. Haku felt tears in her eyes. She had her mask off so you could see her face. She started to tear up and then rushed forward hugging the large swordsman, but being careful of his wounds. Thank you father, she said crying. Hey what about us? Gaizu the first of the demon brothers said. I see you as sons as well, Zabuza said, or just as some very annoying little brothers. Hey, both brothers yelled in indignation. Haku just giggled at their antics. The following morning Naruto wolfed down his breakfast. Naruto where did you go last night? Sakura asked. I went out so I could get some air and clear my head, Naruto said to her then he turned to their sensei. Hey sensei can I talk to you for a minute? Sure thing, the on-eyed man said as they got up to get somewhere more secluded. As they did Sasuke was a little upset. The dope got another meeting with their sensei and he wasn't in on it. What exactly was Naruto hiding from them? What is it we need to talk about Naruto, Kakashi asked. I know who my parents are, Naruto said looking at the shocked look on his sensei's face. Don't you mean we're Naruto? The man asked. Noir, the blonde repeated, they're alive. I need your permission to go find them. Kakashi nodded, I think you should go find your parents. I want to meet the mom and dad of the boy that saved my life. Naruto nodded and then bolted out the door. Which way big guy? He mentally asked his second tenant. About a half a mile east of here kid, the dragon said, child when you get there you will need my chakra to wake them up from the coma that the two are in. Got it big guy. Naruto thought to the dragon. Naruto ran for a while. While normal people would have been tired by now Naruto had large chakra reserves. He could go for a long time without getting tired. After about 20 minutes of running he made it to what looked like a minor village. Naruto walked through the village. As he did he was getting looks from the villagers there. To be more specific the girls. Apparently his new appearance had an adverse effect on girls. Naruto looked around the village until he found a hospital. Naruto felt a little nervous as he entered the place. He never really did like hospitals. First of all the doctors and nurses that worked there had either tried to poison him, refused to treat him, or when he had broken bones they set them wrong. And worse than that, the food that Hay served there was absolutely horrible. He steeled his nerves and walked in. He walked up to the front desk. How can I help you? The woman asked. She had a slight blush on her face as she looked at Naruto. Yes, he said. I'm looking for some people. A blonde man and red haired woman. No recorded names. I know of people like that, she said, we couldn't find them in the database. How do you know them? They're my parents, Naruto said, making the woman gasp. Right this way, she said, getting up from her desk. The two got into an elevator and went a few floors up. Naruto followed the woman through the halls. Eventually, they arrived at a room in the back. As they walked in, a doctor who was checking up on the two coma patients. Naruto looked at the two. 
they had aged a bit in the thirteen years they had been asleep. Nurse, the doctor said, who is this? He says that our John and Jane Doe here are his parents, the nurse explained. The doctor was skeptical at first but he gave in. Naruto walked up to the two and mentally spoke to his second tenant. Now what? He asked. Focus my chakra into your hands and put it on their foreheads, the dragon said, that should wake the two up. Naruto did that. He focused on the feeling of Elion's chakra. When he first used it the chakra felt like a strong yet gentle feeling rushed over him. As he focused silver chakra began to radiate from him. The doctor and nurse both had wide eyes. Naruto then placed his hands on the his parents' foreheads and sent it through them. The silver chakra flowed through the two. As the silver chakra dissipated the years left them and they began to look younger soon they looked like they were in their prime again. The doctor and nurse were both surprised when this happened. Naruto felt a little drained from this and stumbled back. As he sat down his mother and father began to stir. Slowly the woman rose up and looked around. She was confused. Then she saw a boy in front of her that looked so much like her husband only with whisker marks on his cheeks. And Naruto? She asked. Her voice was shaking. How's it going mom? He asked. Kashina gasped and then she leapt out of bed and latched onto her son in a tight death hug. She held onto her son like he was going to fade away into nothingness at any moment. Oh my sweet baby boy. She cried as she started kissing his head right above the forehead protector much to her son's embarrassment. Mom, Naruto groaned. You two going to leave me out of this? Both turned to see the blonde man had risen up from bed. Kashina got away from Naruto and his dad swept his son up into a bear hug. About the same time the hugging started the doctor and nurse decided to leave. They decided to leave the newly reunited family alone. So Naruto, Minato said as he set his son down. How have things been in the village? Before we get to that dad, Naruto said before nailing his dad in the gut with a strong punch. That, Naruto said, was for sealing the Kayubi in me. Minato hung his head. He had a feeling that Naruto would be mad at him. He was then shocked when Naruto started hugging him. This is for caring enough to say that I should be treated as a hero, Naruto said smiling. Minato hugged his son back and Kashina joined in on the tender family moment. So, Minato said as he got out of the hug and sat down on the hospital bed, how have things been? Dad, Naruto said, I hate to tell you this, so I'm going to have to show you. Naruto lifted up his shirt and both his mom and dad had to resist the urge to gag. Naruto had multiple scars from his life in the village. There were even some branding marks from when the villagers decided to get a little sadistic on his birthday. Minato clenched his fists and so did his wife. The two were releasing so much killing intent that a lot of patients in the hospital experienced a code blue. In case you were wondering that is when the patient's heart stops. Naruto, the older blonde growled, who did this to you? The people you sought to protect did this to me, Naruto said shocking his father and mother. What? Minato asked clearly shocked, why? Why would they do something like this? Because of all the trouble that was caused by the Kayubi the villagers couldn't let go of their hate. Naruto explained, they saw me as the reincarnate of the fox. As a result I was beaten, starved, neglected and nearly killed on multiple occasions. The only reason I survived is because a few Anbu always came and saved me. Also the fox's healing ability helped me out plenty of times. Minato was clenching his fists in complete and utter rage. How could he have been so stupid? He had condemned his only son to a life of suffering because he thought the village would be able to see past their hate. He couldn't believe that he had actually nearly died trying to save that whole of a village. Right now he couldn't even believe that he was actually a ninja from that village right now. His wife was having similar thoughts. Only she was in total disbelief that this had happened to her precious baby. She was going to be kicking a lot of butt when she got back to the village. So now what? Naruto asked. Kashina got out of anger induced stupor first. First off all, she said, we are going shopping. No son of mine is going to look like this when he's fighting someone. Then we're going back to that village and kicking the butts of the people who dared do this to my little boy. First of all mom, Naruto said, I'm not little, and second I can't. I have a mission in wave country not far from here. I can't just abandon my team. Okay then, she said, we'll get you some new clothes, we'll go back to finish your mission. 
and then we will go kick the butts of the people who dared to this to my little boy. Naruto sweat dropped as she said that. He made a mental note to never make his mother angry. Naruto's mother and father grabbed their things and left the hospital. A lot of people were surprised to see the John and Jane Doe for the past 13 years up and walking. As soon as they left the hospital they immediately started looking for a clothing store. They walked in and almost immediately Naruto started browsing for something to wear. After a few minutes of searching and some designing by the woman who owned the shop Naruto had gained a new look. Naruto now wore a pair of black anbu style pants and black sandals. He also had a belt that held his weapon holster. The buckle was just a red square with a black X on it. He had on a red shirt that showed off the muscles on his chest. Over that he wore a silver vest. It had the Konoha symbol on the left side. On the back that he had the picture of a red and silver yin yang symbol. Off the silver side came the shadow of a dragon and the red had the image of a fox coming out. The jacket didn't have any sleeves allowing for free movement of his arms which, according to both of his tenants would be helpful when using his swords. Oh you look so handsome, Kashina said as she and her husband paid for the clothes. Naruto blushed in embarrassment again as he heard his mother compliment him on his looks. After that they left the village. The family actually got into a bit of a foot race on the way there. Minato came in a tie with Kashina while Naruto came in second. Naruto might have been strong but he didn't have enough strength to match the abilities of a cage. So this is wave country, Minato said as he looked around as they walked through the village, I could have sworn that this place was healthier when I saw it. It was, Naruto said, but a tycoon by the name of Gato has been bleeding this place dry ever since he set up shop here. The only reason these people don't fight back is because all who tried to oppose him were publicly executed. HMPH, Kashina grunted, men like that don't deserve the life that they have been given. I can't wait to bring that tycoon down a peg. The trio walked the rest of the way in silence. As they approached Tazuna's place they heard a scream. Get away from my mom, Naruto immediately recognized the voice, it was Inari. Naruto ran up to the door his mom and dad following close behind him, and broke down the door. He was greeted by the side to two samurai thugs who had tsunami by the hair. Inari was on the ground sporting a bruise on his face from where one of the thugs had hit him. Hey, Naruto growled getting the attention of the toe thugs, leave the kid alone. Oh and if we don't little boy? One of the thugs said. Naruto answered by unsealing the swords in arms and charged at the two. One of the thugs swung his sword but missed as Naruto ducked. Naruto then swung Dragon Claw cutting his arm and causing him to drop his sword. The man screamed in pain, but Naruto shot a hand forward and nailed him right in the face loudly cracking his jaw. The other thug would have tried to get back at Naruto for hurting his partner but was stopped when Minato suddenly appeared behind him and nailed him in the back of the head with a strong punch. Naruto picked the first thug up off the ground and slammed him into the wall growling. Who sent you? He asked. Forget you brat, the thug growled. Who sent you? Naruto repeated. I'm not going to tell you. Who sent you? Naruto growled a third time. Gato, the thug said. Everyone looked at each other surprised that the man had answered the question. That was easy, Naruto said. Why did you answer? I can't stand to be asked the same question three times, the thug groaned. It irritates me. Where is Gato now? Naruto asked, not telling you, the thug said. Where is Gato now? Naruto repeated. To be honest this was really starting to annoy him. The thug just spat in his face, still not going to tell you. Where is Gato now? Shoot, the thug growled, three times, he wasn't going to pay the two missing ninja he hired so more than likely he's on his way over to see if the man succeeds so that he can kill him. Thank you my friend. Naruto said as he swung his fist and connected it with the thug's face. The thug was sent sprawling to the floor. Inari, Naruto said turning to the boy, your old man would be proud of you. Inari beamed at the blonde and smiled widely. Come on, Kashina said making her presence known to the others, we have to get to the bridge. Naruto nodded at his mother and the three all ran off toward the bridge. Kakashi was in trouble. He was currently in the rematch with Zabuza, and it was not going well. Zabuza had apparently figured out that I took eye contact for the Sharingan to work and was fighting away from him using the mist to hide and had his eyes closed meaning he couldn't use the Sharingan illusions. With him was a new figure, Anko. 
She was tall, shapely and had on a fishnet shirt that was covered by a trench coat and a short skirt. She had purple hair that was tied up in the shape of a pineapple. Although she immediately got some mixed interactions after calling herself the sexy and single Anko Midarashi. Flashback, Anko had just introduced herself. Kakashi was now sweating bullets since with her around he wouldn't have a chance to read his Icha Icha Paradise book. Sakura had to admit that this woman was a little bit too open in her choice of clothing. So Kakashi, she said with a smirk, you called for some backup on this mission. I can see why you'd need it. Watch your tongue, Sasuke said, I'm an Uchiha. You're superior. Now I suggest you make sure not to upset me. Anko was quiet. Kakashi made a motion for Sakura to move. They both did taking Inari, Tsunami, and Tazuna with them. As soon as they were clear Anko vanished and reappeared with Sasuke facing away from her in a grip. She then took out a kanai, cut his cheek, and then licked the blood off the knife. After a second she spat it out. Yuck! She yelled. Worst I've ever tasted. Sakura couldn't help but giggle at the fact that her former crush had just been schooled. Anko then turned to Kakashi. Aren't you missing a brat? She asked. In truth she was really worried for him. A few years ago she had gotten a little drunk, and some punks thought that they could have some fun with her. Fortunately for her Naruto showed up. The sight of what was happening really made him mad. Mad enough to draw on some of Kayubi's chakra. The result was three drunk punks with broken bones and a fourth that had his head busted open. Naruto then ran out into the street and made a commotion making villagers chase him so that Anko could get home with her dignity intact. The sight that they did that to him, though, angered her. It was what made her Anko Midarashi. You should sit down Anko, Kakashi said, this is going to be a really long story. Kakashi told her of what had happened, and of Naruto's bloodline. Anko thought it was brave of Naruto to try and save his teammate like that, but she was mad that Sasuke would spit on his grave like that. She was contemplating killing the boy until Kakashi brought up Naruto's parents being alive. She was thrown for one heck of a loop after that. End flashback, when they were done training they went to guard Tazuna at the bridge. They found the workers all unconscious or dead. Zabuza then made an appearance with the hunter Nin that took Zabuza away from danger. Sasuke went to fight the hunter Nin while Anko and Kakashi fought Zabuza. And that lead to their current predicament. Sakura stood in front of Tazuna with a kanai drawn and was ready to fight. Sasuke was fighting the hunter Nin, Haku, and was trapped in a dome of ice mirrors. Sasuke was also doing a very good impression of a porcupine with a lot of needles sticking out of his body. All right Kakashi Zabuza said, it's time for me to end this. He lifted up his cleaver of a sword, but as he was about to use it a cry rang out, water style, water bullet. Zabuza managed to jump out of the way before a massive water ball the size of a beach ball slammed into the spot where he was standing. He followed the trajectory of the shot and found a tall red-headed woman standing a few feet away from them. Kakashi and Anko saw her too, and Anko was wide-eyed. Kei Kashina? She asked receiving a nod from the woman. Kashina? Zabuza asked, as in Kashina Uzumaki? The Red Death and the Bloody Whirlpool? The very same, Kashina said. Oh boy, Zabuza groaned, Haku finish off that runt. I'm going to need help over here. More than you know, said a voice behind him. Zabuza spun around just in time to meet a fist to the face. He was sent flying back towards Kashina who brought back her arm, and then sent the man flying another direction with a strong back hand. Zabuza groaned in pain as he rose up. When he saw who hit him he nearly lost it. He saw a tall blonde man with a white trench coat with red flames on the bottom and Konoha's yellow flash written in kanji on the back. Oh crud, was all Zabuza was able to get out. S sensei? Kakashi managed to get out himself. Hey there Kakashi, Minato said, I see you have a sharing ganai. Kakashi had the modesty to look sheepish. He had known that there could be consequences to putting a sharing ganai in a person who doesn't have an Uchiha's blood. Kakashi promptly ignored that because he knew that he owed Obito. I owed Obito sensei. Kakashi said, I think this is my way of keeping him alive. Okay, Minato said, but when we get back to Konoha you're getting that thing removed or I will have Kashina carve it out. While this was going on Anko was having a bit of a fangirl moment. Kashina had been her idol when she was a little girl. Right now she was seeing her in person. If it weren't for the fact that they were currently in a fight with enemies she would have asked for an autograph. 
Zabuza was sweating bullets. If these two were who he thought he was then he was going to be in deep crud. Though he had the demon brothers in hiding a little bit away he doubted that they would be any help at all. He was currently trying to think of ways that he could get out of here when he saw the blonde kid a few feet away from them. He had to risk it. He had to take this kid hostage. Zabuza vanished and then reappeared behind Naruto with his sword drawn and at the ready. HT put it at Naruto's throat. I can't believe I'm resorting to this, Zabuza muttered before speaking louder, unless you want this runt to end up a head shorter back off and let us go. Kashina and Minato both growled to themselves as they saw their son be taken hostage. Naruto himself was nervous. Before he had managed to beat Zabuza, but that was only with the use of Elion's and Kayubi's chakra infusion. Without it he was completely toast. Kit. The fox yelled, use the kitsunai, it should detain him enough for you to get away for at least try something. Naruto got the message and then focused the fox's chakra into his eyes. When he felt his eyes change a bit he smirked. Hey, he said, Mr. Number Eyebrows. Zabuza looked down as Naruto turned around, look into my eyes. Naruto's eyes opened to reveal a pair of changed eyes. The whites were now black. The iris was always changing shades of red like a lava lamp, and the pupil was now an orange slit. Zabuza made the mistake of looking into the eyes and was instantly plunged into a massive genjutsu. In the genjutsu, Zabuza was still on the bridge and all the figures had turned to black wisps of smoke. What the heck? Zabuza asked as he looked around. The water under the bridge turned black and started crashing up against the bridge. The entire bridge shook as parts of it broke away from the force of the waves crashing against it. Zabuza was now in panic and decided to run, as he did he beheld a sight that made his blood run cold. An. I'm not good at describing scenes like this let me know if it's any good. He saw the bodies of Haku and the demon brothers. They were covered in blood and horribly mangled, then there was a dark laughing. It started out low and then it burst out into a boisterous laugh. The bridge beneath him shook and parts broke off in front of and behind him. Soon he was only standing on a platform, he looked around and the black water rose up. The sky flashed with lightning. The water began to rise forming a large monster. It stood about ten stories high, it had four massive arms with clawed fingers. The claws were actually made of ice. It had four large glowing eyes, if you could call them that, that seemed to stare into your soul. Zabuza was paralyzed with fear as he saw the massive monster. He then realized this was some sort of messed up genjutsu. He put his hands together and yelled Kai. Nothing happened. The monster rose one of its arms and swung down. Zabuza jumped back, but wound up with a massive slash mark on his chest. At that moment the genjutsu let up. Zabuza looked around and saw everything as it was before. The only difference was the gash he now had on his chest. He looked forward to see the blonde kid now standing in front of him with a golden sword with blood on the edge of the blade. You little, Zabuza groaned as he felt pain in his chest, what did you do to me? It was a genjutsu that I made with my bloodline, Naruto explained, it looks like it's multi-layered too. That's a handy feature. Zabuza narrowed his eyes at this punk. He had been hurt by a little kid twice now, he was never going to be able to live this down from anyone who was watching. He felt something tug his arm and looked to see Haku kneeling beside him helping him up. So the so-called demon of the mist is just a baby demon, said a snide voice. Everyone turned to see a short pudgy man wearing a tux, sunglasses, and holding a cane. Behind him was practically an army of mercenaries. You never planned on paying us did you? Zabuza asked. Nope, Gato said, you missing ninja are a real pain sometimes. When you do your job I just take care of you and turn in your head so I can profit off it. Kakashi, Zabuza said, it doesn't seem like we're enemies anymore. Do me a favor and help me kill this little runt. I plan on, Kakashi said cracking his knuckles. At that moment the villagers, led by Inari, arrived on the bridge with a bunch of makeshift weapon. I don't think so you corporate fat cat, Inari said. He had heard his grandfather call him that. That was probably one of the few times that he was sober. Kill them all, Gato yelled to his mercenaries, but leave some of the women. I could use some more entertainment. There was tense silence that was broken by a lot of killing intent. Most of it coming from Naruto and his father. Minato was mad that this guy said that he was going use his wife as a plaything. You can be that that really made him mad. 
Naruto was seething that someone would dare do something so foul and despicable as this. He felt his anger reach critical levels. Inside of him the two monsters were also quite angry. Kayubi may have been a demon, but even he wouldn't go so low as to do something like this. Elion, well, he was a noble monster. To him this was one of the most heinous crimes a person could commit. Naruto. The dragon growled, I want you to call on my power, show them the true meaning of divine wrath. The mercenaries were about to start charging when Naruto started to radiate silver chakra. Naruto's eyes were previously closed, when he opened them his eyes were now completely gold. He snarled showing his teeth sharpening to points, his nails grew to claws. Slowly his skin began to harden, it wasn't noticeable, but it was hardening like dragon scales. The silver charka flew up and formed a ghost of Elion. The dragon image threw back its head and roared angrily. The chakra focused on Naruto and gave him a chakra cloak. The cloak formed a dragon's tail on the small of his back and a pair of dragon wings on his shoulder blades. His arms were covered in chakra and the chakra formed claws as well. Claws formed on his feet as well. Everyone was staring at the transformed Naruto with awe and horror. The horror was mostly from the mercenaries and the awe was from his friends. Although there was huge look of jealousy from Sasuke. The Uchiha was seething at the fact that the so-called dead last had a power that he did not, that he deserved. I will learn your secrets loser, Sasuke growled, I will gain the power to kill him and then you. Naruto glared at the mercenaries and then let out a massive roar that shook the ground beneath their feet. Forget this freak. Gato yelled, it's some ninja trick. Just go and kill them already. The mercenaries believed his words and then charged at the group. Minato and Kashina both got at the ready as did Anko, Kakashi and Naruto. Sakura just stood in place as the rest of the villagers tensed. Sasuke just stood there. He was waiting to see the strength of the two people Naruto came with. If they w were strong then he would get them to train him. Naruto, the Junin, and the former cage all charged at the mercenaries. Zabuza made a signal and the demon brothers joined them. Haku got up and took out a lot of Senbon. Zabuza grabbed his sword despite the pain in his chest. Kashina with her swords drawn cut down anyone who got in her way, she mostly just moved quick, after she cut one down she jumped to another and sliced him up. Minato wasn't as quick, he just cracked down all who stood in his way, he used a few wind jutsu to knock them back into a group and then used a fire one to burn them all at the same time. Zabuza was just swinging his large sword. The blade either killed whoever he swung at it or it cut of a limb. Anyone who didn't die immediately died from blood loss a few moments later. The demon brothers just hit whoever they could with their claws or their bladed chain. The ones hit with the chain were cut up badly and died from blood loss. The ones hit with their claws died from the poison. At one point their chain was destroyed. That just made things better the two were now able to move more freely. The numbers of their fatalities doubled. Haku though she didn't like it that she had to, had to kill. She used her senbon and sent them at a few mercenaries hitting them in the heart. It made her sick to the stomach, she never really did like killing. Kakashi mostly just used his chidori to cut down as many enemies as he could in one shot. Though it was a little exhausting he did it anyway. Anko mainly used her striking shadow snakes. She also used some poison laced kanai to finish off the enemies that weren't killed already. Those who actually managed to get close to them were then taken down hard and beaten within inches of their existences. Naruto seemed to have the most brutal method out of all of them. The chakra claws on his hands tore through each mercenary like a hot knife through butter. Naruto's chakra tail hit each one like a hard whip and practically tore through the mercenaries as well. One mercenary actually tried throwing a spear at the blonde. Naruto just ducked his head back. He glared at the mercenary with ice cold eyes. Naruto then took a deep breath and shot out a massive burst of flame from his mouth. The golden flames engulfed the mercenary and a few others. Finally all the mercenaries were dead on the ground. All that stood were the Konoha ninja, the villagers, and one very terrified Gato. Naruto's golden eyes glared at the man with such intensity Gato felt like his soul was being looked into. The boy then stalked toward the short man. Wait! Gato yelled backing away, don't I can give you anything you want, money, power, women, please just don't kill me. Can you bring back Inari's father? Naruto asked his voice taking on a rather vicious tone, 
can you bring back all the people you've killed? Gato just remained silent at the teen's feet, I thought not. Naruto, still holding Dragon Claw, raised his sword up and then brought it down. The next thing everyone heard was the sound of metal hitting skin and the sound of a body hitting the floor. Everyone was quiet for a moment. Then the villagers burst out into cheers. Their nightmare was finally over. The silver chakra dissipated and Naruto returned to his regular state. It was that moment that Enko walked up to them. Naruto was standing in place for a moment before he realized what he had done. At that moment he ran over the side of the bridge and blew chunks. The purple-haired woman stood next to Naruto as she finished throwing up his lunch. Hey kid, she said getting the blonde's attention, nice work. How's it going Kakashi? Minato said as he held out his hand to his old student. I've been doing good, Kakashi said, I go into it now, but let's go on about this later. I trust that you don't need to know anything about what's happened over the years. No, he answered, I don't. After that Minato and Kakashi both used some fire jutsu to burn the bodies and Minmato used a wind style one to blow away the ashes. You're Kashina right? Enko asked stepping up to her. Yes, the redhead answered, I am why? I just want to say that, you rock, I can't believe I'm actually meeting you in person. This is one of th greatest moments of my life, can I get an autograph? Enko had gone into fangirl mode and it had a lot of people freaked out, she had been talking at a mile a minute so Kashina had a little trouble getting all of that down. She did get the autograph part though. Anko took out a pen and paper from who knows where and presented them to Kashina with an enthusiastic grin. The redhead signed it and Anko squealed happily as she did. She turned to everyone present and said, if any of you tell anyone about what just transpired, I will cut off your balls and shove down your throat. And if you're female I will tear out your eyes and shove those down your throat. All the males and females present paled dramatically as they heard here say this. The men covered their male parts while the women just backed up. Anko smirked seeing that her reputation was once again saved. As the day had been pretty exhausting everyone had decided to go back to Tizuna's house. Since Gato was gone they didn't have to worry about anything, so they decided to work on the bridge tomorrow. Right now everyone was talking. Kakashi was catching his old sensei up on the times. Kashina was discussing a few things with Anko and Zabuza, and Sakura was talking with Naruto about his bloodlines. She was also asking for some training tips. Gaizu and Maizu were both hitting on Tsunami. At least until Inari threatened to use them for arrow practice, and that he would put the target in between the legs. Sasuke walked up to Naruto a greedy gleam in his eye. Where did you get that power dope? He asked. It's part of my bloodline, Naruto answered, that is all I'm going to say on the matter. Where did you get those swords? Sasuke asked. I got them from a weapons shop, was all Naruto answered. Give them to me, he ordered getting a few looks from everyone who was present in the room. What was that? Naruto asked gaining an annoyed look in his eye. I said I want those swords, Sasuke repeated, and it's not a request. The day I give you these swords, Naruto growled, is the day that someone calls Choji fat and he doesn't go ballistic. Meanwhile in Konoha, Choji crushed his bag of chips and growled loudly. What's wrong with you? Ino asked the boy. I can't help but think, Choji growled, that someone in the world just called me fat. The boy's team looked at him and then they all stepped back a good way. They all knew that you don't want to get near Choji when someone calls him fat. Back with the gang, I said give me those swords idiot, Sasuke growled lunging at Naruto only to get hit in the face by Sakura. Everyone stared at her in shock at what the fangirl just did. She looked around and said, when the guy you have a crush on spits on someone who saves your life the crush tends to die. The next few days were basically uneventful. Luckily the punch to Sasuke's jaw broke it so no one had to listen to him complain. Naruto and his parents managed to catch up some long lost bonding time. Naruto got some better practice with his clones by using them to work on the bridge. Zabuza and Haku both agreed to come to Konoha. They were both sick of running from the hunter Nin and Zabuza told them that his daughter was sick of running around. Everyone was surprised that he regarded the others as his children, but they understood. Sakura had gotten better over her training as well. She had gained larger chakra reserves. Just enough so she could use one shadow clone. She was currently working to try and use two. All the while Sasuke looked on in jealousy. The two dead weights of his team were getting strong and he was left in the dust. 
he would make them pay for trying to show him, and Uchiha, up. After a while the bridge was built, and everyone was ready to leave. Do you have to go big brother? Inari whined. Hey kid, Naruto said putting his hands on the shoulders of his little brother. Don't you go crying on me now. I want you to keep an eye on things here. Take care of you mom and grandpa. Especially your grandpa. Inari laughed as his big brother got up and left for his team. You do know that the council is going to want to hear about your abilities when we get back, Kakashi said, and I know that they will try and demand you hand over your swords to Sasuke. If they try, Minato said, there is going to be hell to pay. I'm with you dear, Kushian said, no one messes with our family and lives. Don't I know it, Naruto said. Sakura just smiled to herself. She was glad that her new friend finally had the family that he deserved. She had gotten over her grief on how she had treated the boy, but she did have some anger toward her parents or more specifically her mother. She remembered when her mother asked where Naruto was, and she always told her. Her mother would then leave with a large group of friends. Not anymore, she thought determined. Konoha, Minato thought as he and everyone else walked to their home, or in certain cases new home, get ready for a major wake-up call. The now group of ten were going toward Konoha, since they didn't have a civilian to drag them down they were able to tree jump. Kashina and Minato slowed down their normal pace so that everyone else could keep up. As they all went Sasuke glared at the back of Naruto's head as if wishing for him to just burst into flames. After a few hours of tree jumping the group made it to Konoha. As they approached the gate Katetsu and Azumo both stood up and faced them. Okay, Azumo said, name and, your, he trailed off when he saw the fourth Hokage walking with the group. He actually felt his jaw drop when he saw a few missing ninja and someone whose rank he didn't even know. It fell even further when he saw the red-haired girl that the fourth always hung out with when he was alive. Hello boys, Kashina said as they got closer. Azumo and Katetsu were both snapped out of their respective stupors when they saw that they were right in front of them. They both regained their composures. Names and your business, Katetsu said. He made a brief glance at Kashina, which got him a glare from Minato. Kakashi Hitaki, Kakashi stated, and his team returning from a mission with a group of former ninja from Konoha and a group who wants to join our ranks. The two nodded as it seemed to check out as Kashina was the one holding Zabaza's sword and the demon brother's claws were being held by Naruto. The two let them pass and they headed right for the Hokage's office. As they walked in Kakashi walked up to the secretary. Excuse me, Kakashi said politely, we're here to see the Hokage. Yes he's expecting you she said. As they walked past she gave Naruto a dirty look she was then give two looks that put hers to shame when Kashina and Minato both glared at her. As she saw the two the woman looked pale. Then she reached under the desk, pulled out a bottle of sake, went to the nearby window, and poured it all out. Then she put her right hand over her chest and started praying to her god that she would never go anywhere near the stuff. The team entered and Naruto could have sworn he saw a flash of orange before the Hokage looked at them. Team 7, Enko welcome back, the Hokage greeted. He scanned the group. He saw the missing ninja, but he didn't see his Minato or Kashina. They decided that they would have a little word with him when the team left. Kakashi, the Hokage said sternly, would you mind telling me why there are three missing nin and an unknown standing with you in my office and why Naruto has had a slight change in appearance? Not at all sir, Kakashi said, you see we first saw the demon brothers on our way to wave. Sasuke managed to detain them and we got information out of them saying that man named Gato had hired them to take out our current client Tazuna. We found out from his why they were after him. A while down the road we had our encounter with Zabuza here. During that encounter Naruto died. The Hokage jumped out of his seat when he heard that, but Kakashi motioned for him to stop and that he would explain. Kakashi continued, after his so-called death Naruto seemed to unlock a powerful bloodline. This enabled him to heal, to change physically like he is now, and then kick Zabuza's eyebrow less butt. Zabuza glared at Kakashi while the others stifled laughs. After that we continued to wave where we continued to guard him. We encountered Zabuza on the bridge a week later. During that encounter we met two other characters who would like to have a little word with you when this is over. Anyway Naruto showed up with these two characters and we managed to beat Zabuza who showed up with his daughter here. He motioned to Haku. After we beat them Gato showed up and he said a few things that got under all of our skins. Basically we charged in, 
killed a whole lot of mercenaries and finally Naruto killed Gato. The Hokage stiffened when he heard that. What happened when Naruto killed Gato? He asked hoping he would have to do anything to his surrogate grandson. He went to the side of the bridge and threw up practically everything he ate for breakfast and lunch, Anko said. The Hokage felt a little relief. Since Naruto didn't like the killing it meant that it wasn't a moment when the fox had taken over. Okay, the Hokage said, the ninja participating in this mission will receive payment for an irranked mission. Kakashi, I want you to stay along with the missing nin. The others all left. The Hokage did some discreet hand signs and put up a silencing jutsu. The old man then looked at Kakashi with a serious face. Kakashi, he said, I can't help but feel that there is something that you left out of the explanation. There is, Kakashi said, the chakra that healed Naruto wasn't the Kyubis. The Hokage gasped as did all the others in the room. I knew it, Zabuza yelled, I knew that kid was a Jinchuriki. You knew too San? Haku asked. When you said the kid was talking to himself I guessed, Zabuza explained, plus that chakra he used in our first encounter was nowhere near being human. Yes, Kakashi said turning to the Hokage, anyway it turns out Naruto has a second tenant. This one being a dragon by the name of Elion. That is pretty much what saved him. A dragon? Sarutobi asked. Yes, the silver-haired man explained, in addition Naruto gained two bloodlines. As he heard the Hokage heart gave out for a few seconds, he could tell because the area around his vision became dark for a second, he breathed heavily to gain his senses and bearings. What are they exactly? The Hokage asked. Well, Kakashi explained, the first he calls the dragon's eye. It allows you to get a basic understanding of a technique and to copy bloodlines. I think Naruto will only use that last part as a last resort. The second he calls the Kitsunai. It allows him to cast powerful genjutsu and even see through them. The Hokage was currently drooling over the fact that Naruto had these abilities. Kakashi continued. He also came into possession of two sword that work well with Kyubi's and Elion's chakra. I don't know what he calls them, but he knows how to basically use them. He doesn't use them much though. The Hokage looked at Kakashi and nodded. Now, the Hokage said, moving on. What are these missing nin doing here? After our final confrontation, the Junin sensei explained, they decided to come with us. Zabuza was sick of running and he decided to let the demon brothers come as well as his adopted daughter Haku. What are your skills? The old fire shadow asked. Well, Zabuza said, I'm very strong in the use of a sword and the demon brothers here are about Chunin in power and very good at sneak attacks. Haku has a bloodline that allows her to use ice and she's about Chunin in strength. The old man was quiet for a minute. He was considering the pros and cons of this. The village could use some more assassins. He thought for a minute and then came to a decision. All right, the old man said after a few minutes, Haku will be given the rank of Chunin. But the demon brothers will be on a three week probation and Zabuza on five week probation. All the while they will be under watch. At the end of their probation, the demon brothers will receive the rank of Chunin and Zabuza the rank of Junin. Agreed? Agreed, they four said. Good, the old man said, smiling. Now send in those two who wanted to have a word with me. Yes, sir, Kakashi said while walking out the door, and good luck. The old man was about to ask why when Minato and Kashina made their entrance. The old man grinned as they walked in, but his face grew worried when he saw the angry looks on their faces. Old man, Minato said with an angered look on his face, we need to talk. Meanwhile, Naruto was making his way to his apartment, he was currently having a pleasant conversation with Sakura. They were both giving each other ideas for training. Naruto suddenly stopped. Naruto? Sakura asked. What is it? Naruto sniffed the air for a minute then he growled slightly. He shot off and in the direction of the smell. Naruto had smelt something foul. When he did something kicked in and he tried to find the source of the stink. What kicked in was an old instinct. Since Naruto now had some of the fox in him he had some fox instincts. Luckily he didn't have the one that told him to dominate mates while they were in heat. He did however have one that made him have to fight other males for dominance and right now he was smelling someone who was a threat to that. He followed the scent for a few minutes before he came across the source of the smell. He looked down at team 8. The scent was coming off of Kiba. Kiba was chatting idly with his teammate when he smelt something. 
He looked over to see Naruto. Bye guys, Kiba said, I have something to take care of. He motioned for Naruto to follow him and he did. The two ran until they found a training ground. The two then faced each other. You should back down Kiba, Naruto growled, before you get hurt. No way dead last, Kiba said, I'm going to beat you down. Akamaru, Kiba's dog, jumped down and was about to enter the fight until Naruto focused his chakra and his eyes turned red with black slits. Akamaru whimpered and backed away. Naruto smirked and let more of the fox's chakra course through him. His nails grew sharper and his teeth sharpened to a point. His whisker marks became slightly darker. He wasn't using enough to radiate the chakra. He was just using enough to make himself look more feral. Your dog knows when to back down, Naruto growled, I'm giving you one last chance. Kiba just activated his family jutsu. His nails grew sharper and he got a more feral appearance. The two glared at each other and then charged at one another. Kiba swung his claws and Naruto ducked. He brought a strong uppercut to Kiba's jaw sending him back. Kiba regained his bearings and growled loudly. He charged at Naruto and spun like a drill. Tunneling Fang. Naruto jumped to the side to avoid it. Naruto sent a strong punch to the side of Kiba's head. The Inazuka was sent flying a few feet, he slammed into a tree. He growled as he got up and shook his head, he roared in anger and Naruto roared right back. The two charged at each other again. Just as they were about to hit each other again a green blur shot out of nowhere. The green blur appeared in between Kiba and Naruto. It was a guy with an ugly bull haircut, large eyes and eyebrows, a green jumpsuit with orange leg warmers, and bandage wrapped around his arms and hands. He shot out both arms and caught Kiba's clawed hand. He managed to catch Naruto's punch but he grimaced as he did. Stop this! The boy yelled, it is most unyouthful for comrades to fight. Back off punk, Kiba snarled, this is a fight to show who's the leader of the pack, so back off. Forgive me, the boy said, I did not know this was a battle for dominance I shall stand aside. The strange boy jumped off to the side and Naruto and Kiba went right back at each other's throats. Unknown to either of them their chakras were being felt somewhere else. At the Inazuka complex Kiba's mother Sume and his sister Hana were tending to the dogs in the kennel when they started to whimper. As they did the two female Inazukas looked at each other. You don't think, Hana started but stopped when her mother rushed out the door. Sume sniffed the air and knew that this had something to do with her son. What did Kiba get into this time? She thought as she ran toward the source with her daughter in tow. As she ran she was joined by Kakashi. Sume, he called, what's going on? I don't know, Sume called back, I think Kiba may have gotten in some kind of trouble. Why are you heading there? I'm sensing Naruto's chakra along with Kiba's, Kakshi explained, any idea what's going on? Sume was about to answer until she sniffed the air. The air was thick with pheromones. She also recognized the smell, it was Naruto's. Sume what is it? Kakshi asked as she came to a halt. The air, Sume said. It's thick with Naruto's pheromones. It's a good thing I had a husband otherwise, uh oh. Sume turned around to see Hana with a wild look on her face. Before she could say anything, Hana rushed off with a feral grin that Sume knew all too well. Kakashi, we have to stop her, Sume yelled as she and silver haired man chased after the girl. Why? Kakshi asked as they gave chase, what happened to her? The pheromones, Sume explained. Normally a woman would have to be in close quarters with Naruto for them to take effect, but with our sense of smell we can smell them from here. The smell brought out Hannah's wild side. I'm not affected because I've already had a mate. Kakshi nodded in understanding. They both knew that they had to stop Hannah before she did something that they both would regret. Back at the battle Kiba and Naruto were panting in exertion. Naruto jacket was ripped as was Kiba's. All the while the green clad boy was watching in interest. It was not every day you got to see two people fight like rabid animals. Naruto glared at Kiba and growled. He was about to charge at him again when he was tackled by someone that wasn't Kiba. Naruto looked up to see Hana holding him in a tight and grip and looked like she would let go. Hana grinned before kissing him deeply. Naruto in his feral state let his instincts guide him and kissed her back. At that moment Sume and Kakashi arrived to see this. Kakashi though he looked worried on the outside was mentally cheering for his student kissing a really hot girl. Sume was looking at her daughter worriedly. 
Suddenly Hana's eyes snapped open and she broke away from Naruto. She turned and growled at her mother. She held Naruto tighter like she was trying to protect something precious of hers. Tunneling Fang Naruto and Hana separated from each other to avoid the spinning drill that was Kiba in Azuka. He stopped spinning and D landed a few feet away and yelled, Stay away from my sister. Sumei took advantage of her daughter's momentary distraction and rushed over. She brought her hand down on Hana's neck knocking her out. Naruto looked over to see Hana out cold. Kiba took advantage of Naruto's distraction and charged at him. Naruto, however, sensed him coming. He turned around to send a clawed hand over Kiba's face. Kiba was knocked back a little bit. Naruto then took a deep breath and roared. The result was a blast of sonic waves that hit Kiba hard. Kiba clutched his ears and screamed in pain. Naruto rushed forward and threw a hard punch that sent Kiba into a nearby tree knocking him out. Naruto growled and threw back his head roaring again. This one meant to let the animals know this was his territory and that he was top dog. Wow, Sumei thought, that kid really knows how to mark his territory, if he was a few years older. No, bad Sumei, it's the pheromones talking. Naruto reverted to his normal self and groaned slightly, he shook his head to clear the cobwebs. My friend, the green clad boy exclaimed, that was a most youthful battle. You flames of youth burn brightly. Naruto looked at the boy. He remembered him stopping the fight for a few seconds. It was then he realized he didn't even know his name. I'm sorry, but who are you? Naruto asked. Oh, forgive me, the boy said. I am Konoha's beautiful green beast, Rock Lee. At that moment, three other people showed up. One was an older version of Rock Lee, another was a boy who had long hair and was Hyuga from what Naruto could tell because of the eyes and a cute girl with brown eyes and her hair up in toe buns. Naruto what happened here? Kakashi asked. I'm not sure, Naruto said, I think I was just have a puberty moment or something. Anyway we might want to get Kiba home he might have broken something. Sumei went over and picked up her son. She nodded at Naruto approvingly. Naruto didn't want this other team to know about his change over the mission to wave. Naruto couldn't help but feel bad about lying to someone but it beat having a team out for his blood like most of the village. Well Naruto, Kakashi said, I believe it's time that you went home. We'll have a team meeting tomorrow around 9. Naruto nodded and then he turned to Lee. Nice meeting you Lee, Naruto said and he turned to Lee's team, nice to meet you too, he added giving a wink to 1010. The bun-haired girl couldn't help but blush as he winked at her. Naruto turned around and walked home. As he walked home he noticed some people were looking at him, but not in the same you discussed freak way. Some were looking at him in interest and some of the girls had a heart in their eyes. Naruto made it home without incident. As soon as he got home he opened up a thing of instant ramen, when he did Elyon spoke up. Child if you want to grow strong you will have to eat other foods, said the dragon. I can't really do that since the other stores won't sell me anything other than the filthy junk that should be in the trash can right now. Naruto said feeling dejected. Maybe you should try hanging into another form and shop in that. It would help you get past he arrogant pricks who work there, the dragon suggested. Naruto thought it over and thought it was a good idea, just so long as he didn't run into a Hyuga there. Oh who was he kidding the Hyugas were too arrogant to mingle with, how they put it, commoners. Naruto had just finished his ramen when an Anbu in a wolf mask appeared out of nowhere. Uzumaki-san, he said, the council has Demur asked for your presence. Naruto nodded and grabbed his jacket. He then ran out the door for the Hokage Tower where the council chambers were located. Meanwhile in the council room Kakshi along with his team, Zabuza, Haku, and the Demon Brothers all stood waiting for Naruto. Naruto arrived a few minutes later. What's going on? Naruto asked. The others just shrugged their shoulders. One of the civilian council members stood up. We are here, he said, because you have tainted out village by brining these missing nin here. Why have you done this boy? Well, Naruto said, as the old man probably already told you they came here for a place to stay. I mean they do have a few things that they could contribute to the village. And what could they contribute? The same councilman asked. Why don't they tell you? Naruto asked. Gladly, Zabuza said, I have incredible skill in swordsmanship. I can also teach a new generation of sword fighters the silent killing technique. The demon brothers here have skill in assassination and a basic knowledge of poisons. The council was quiet for a moment. 
They were considering the pros and cons of this like the Hokage had been doing before. They knew that this man would make a good teacher for the Uchiha and with skill like that they could kill the demon child. Then their eyes fell on Haku. What can she do? A pink haired councilwoman asked. She, Zabuza said, starting to get a bad feeling, has an incredible aim and has a bloodline that give her the ability to control ice. The council perked up at this. They could always use a new bloodline. Plus if they could get her to breed with the Uchiha then they could get a stronger Uchiha clan. The demon had just brought their dreams closer to being fulfilled. We propose, the pink-haired councilwoman began, that Zabuza and the demon brothers teach the Uchiha all that they know and that the young girl be betrothed to the Uchiha and become his wife when he turns 16. Motion denied, the Hokage said shocking the council. What do you mean, denied, the pink-haired woman screeched making everyone cover their ears in pain. Did I really sound like that? Sakura thought as she heard her mother yell. I mean, Sarutobi said, I'm the one in charge and I call the shots. Not some civilian pricks who've let a little bit of power go right to their heads. The civilian council all paled as they heard this. If the Hokage got all his power back then they would never be able to get their hands on the demon brat. The Hokage sank back in his chair as he thought about what brought on this change in him. Flashback. Serutobi was currently pinned to the wall by the throat being glared at by Minato and Kashina, or in this case a very, very angry mother and father. You, Minato said in a deadly whisper, have six seconds to tell me why no one carried out my so-called dying wish or I will paint this office with your body parts. Serutobi gulped loudly despite the fact his throat was currently being crushed. He told them why he hadn't done a good job of protecting their son. It was mostly the fault of the council because the shinobi clans had always tried to adopt naruto it was the civilian council that kept him from letting naruto have a family when he finished the two parents had to restrain themselves from both releasing a monster load of killing intent and going down and killing every last one of the civilian council members old man minato growled only few people know of our existence the next time the council tries to pull something let us know and we'll let them know that we are alive and well also you need to grow a backbone. You can't let these civilian punks push you around like that. The next time they do something take charge and show them who's boss. With those words Minato dropped the old man and he and his wife vanished in a sudden shushin. They are right. The old man thought, I'm the Hokage around here and it's high time I acted like it. End flashback. Hokage-sama be reasonable, said a councilwoman, they can help the Uchiha grow stronger. Enough. The old man growled, I don't care. We are not having them teach the Uchiha and we aren't marrying the girl to him either. And before you say anything we aren't putting the girl under the CRA either. I'm with you on that, Zabuza growled, I'm not having my daughter turned into a breeding machine for a bunch of greedy old farts. On another note, said Hiyashi, not liking this part, we have received complaints from the Uchiha that he was denied weaponry from the Uzumaki boy. Secretly Hiyashi had sent some Hyuga to protect Naruto when he was a boy. He knew Naruto was Minato's son. Minato had introduced him to his wife Hitomi before he died. He owed the man and he knew that protecting his son was the way to do it. What's he whining about now? Naruto asked. He said that you stole a pair of swords from him, Sume said. She knew that that was a complete and total load of crud. I have weapons in my possession yes, Naruto said, but I did not take them from him. They were given to Mai by some allies of mine. May we see them? asked a man who was completely wrapped up in bandages. Naruto shrugged and unsealed the swords in his arm. As the red and gold blades came into view, everyone was in shock at the workmanship of the two swords. Zabuza admired them since he didn't get the chance to earlier. Kakashi, Sakura, Haku, the Demon Brothers, and pretty much all the shinobi clan heads gazed at the beauty of the weapons, and Sasuke. He just looked at them greedily along with civilian counsel. Child, the bandaged man said, it is obvious that you have stolen those swords from the Uchiha. You are to return them to him immediately. Not on your life you mummified weirdo, Naruto growled. This made the civilian counsel glare, the shinobi counsel hide snickers, and pretty much everyone else laugh, except Sasuke who was glaring at Naruto for denying him weapons. The pink-haired woman looked at Sakura with a shocked look on her face. You agree with him? she asked. Sakura stopped laughing and glared at the woman. Yes I do, Sakura said. I learned Sasuke isn't the man I thought he was. 
Naruto took a sword for me and Sasuke spit on his grave. As of my last mission I don't want anything to do with him. The pink haired woman growled and was about to start yelling when the Hokage stopped her. That is enough Lady Haruno, the Hokage said stopping her, Naruto will not hand over those swords as they are clearly his. The civilian council was seething and so was Sasuke. If he won't give me those swords, I'll take them, Sasuke yelled. Sasuke ran across the council room and tried to make a grab for Naruto's swords. He managed to grab onto Dragon Claw's handle, but as he did he felt his hand burn as Silver Chakra flared around the handle. Sasuke yelled out in pain as his hand burned and he stepped back. He hand was now red and had a scorch mark on his palm. He could still use his hand, but it would be a while before he could use his fist. What was that loser? Sasuke asked through gritted teeth. That, Naruto said, was a security measure. If anyone other than me touches my swords they get burned. Elion sent Naruto a little more information regarding it. And that was a low setting, so unless you want your entire hand burned off I suggest you not do that again. Sasuke glared at the boy as if a glare would make him submit. Man this guy is a total imbecile. Now that that is out of the way, Naruto said, can I go home now? Go ahead Naruto, the old fire shadow said, I'm sorry that we wasted all of your time. They all nodded. The ninja summoned left. The council got up to leave but was stopped by the Hokage. Before you go, Sarutobi said, there are some people who would like to speak to you. The doors opened and everyone nearly had heart failure at what they saw. Minato and Kashina both stepped into the room and looked at EH Council. The Shinobi Council looked a little relieved while the Civilian Council looked about ready to wed themselves. It's high time we had a little talk, Minato said in a dangerous voice, as he said that the door closed and outside an Anbu put up a silencing barrier, so no one could hear what was going on. Yandaimi Sama, the Haruno Councilwoman cried, I knew you would come back to kill the demon and rid our village of its taint. The next thing the woman knew her head was grabbed by a very angry Minato and her skull was slammed down on the desk she was sitting at. There was now a Haruno forehead sized hole in said table with the pink haired woman's head stuck in it. Yandaimi Sama, a councilman said, what are you doing? No one, Minato growled, no one calls my son a demon. S son? Kaharu stuttered. Yes, Minato growled, my son. The one you've hurt, neglected and tried to kill as the son of your savior. There is no way, another councilman yelled, there is no way that demon child is the son of. The man was cut off when Kashina appeared in front of him and swung her sword cutting off his head. She glared at the civilian council with a very angry glare. Does anyone else have anything to say about our child? She asked with a very threatening voice. The council paled. Sume heard what she said and laughed out loud. Yes. She turned to Shikaku Nara, I told you they got married, pay up. Troublesome, Shikaku groaned as he handed her some Ryo. You were betting on my love life, Kashina yelled. Sume grinned. She and Kashina became quick friends when she bashed in a pervert's head who tried to feel her up. Kashina instantly became one of the first girls of the pervert's bane. A group of women who couldn't stand perverts and would hurt them if they ever tried anything on anyone. Well it was obvious you two were together, Sume said, I mean you two did spend a lot of time together. Mr Lazy Bones over here didn't believe you were together. We made a bet to see if you two were. Of course the Kyubi attack kept us from find out just that. The only reason I remembered was because I don't get cheated out of money. Anyway, Minato said getting everyone's attention, what I want to know is why the hell you didn't go through with my, dying, wish and see Naruto as hero like he was supposed to be seen. He needed to learn its place, an arrogant councilman said, a demon should be at our feet like the whipped dog it was supposed to be. He would have regretted his decision if his head was suddenly ripped from its shoulders. Minato now gripping the man's head threw it to the side. Well, Minato said, I think you should know a few thing s about a Jinchuriki. First off. The demon can only take over the host if the host's mind is broken. Everyone felt their hearts stop. You, Homura muttered, you mean that? Yes, Kashina said, every time you tried to hurt Naruto kun you were driving him closer to the edge and to the oblivion of this village. In all honesty though given how this village has fallen I wouldn't regret this place being burned down. Now, Minato said with a grin, since I'm back I'll be taking back my position as Hokage, and my first order of business, 
is that the civilian council be disbanded and the advisors be replaced with more level-headed people. You can't do that, one civilian yelled in anger. I can and I did, Mianto said, now get out before I get mad and kill every last one of you. The civilians and advisors all got out of there before they had to face the wrath of their savior. Truth be told a lot of people didn't see this coming. Of course they should have expected that he was alive since they didn't really find any body. Some were kicking themselves for not making sure he was dead, and were scheming to get back at him. Minato sighed to himself. Thank God those people are out of the way. They were noting but a pain, he said with a happy grin. And thanks for taking my place, Sarutobi said, I'm getting way too old for this. Yeah, Minato agreed, well me and wife are going home and we're taking out boy with us. The two then walked out of the council room. Naruto stood waiting for them as was Sakura. Both parents noticed that Sakura was crying and Naruto looked a little pissed off. Child, Kushian said, what it wrong? Sakura's mom, Naruto growled, she disowned her. What? Minato growled. Flashback, a few minutes ago. You little witch. Rose Haruno yelled as she rose her hand to strike her daughter, how dare you become friend with that demon. Naruto is not demon. Sakura yelled causing her mother to stop and everyone else to hear her, he saved my life on our last mission. Would a demon do that? If there is any demon here it's you? All of you? You hurt a boy for something he had no control over he protected our village by keeping that monster at bay and you only hurt him, you have no right to call yourselves human. That's it, Rose yelled, I will not be spoken to like that by a little whore. You are not longer my daughter. Do not bother coming back or I will kill you myself. Naruto had had enough. He took out one of his swords and swung it. Rose screamed as her face was cut. She turned to yell at the boy but was cut off when he glared at her his eyes now blood red with black slits. Leave, Naruto snarled, now, in panic of what they saw the former council members ran for it. After a few seconds Naruto calmed down and reverted back to normal. End flashback, Kashina got down on her knees and held the crying girl. It's okay child, she said soothingly, you are welcome to stay with us. I am, she asked. You were friends with our boy here, Minato said putting in his toe sense. I mean if he wants you to stay. Sakura looked at Naruto pleadingly. Well, Naruto said, I guess since you aren't a fangirl anymore I guess you can stay with us. However if you have anything to talk about do me and my dad a favor and take it up with my mom. Plus you might want to be ready for some heavy training because I think Kakashi sensei will be taking it seriously. Plus I think I know a way we can get back at that little hussy. How? The former Haruno asked. On occasion, Naruto explained. I did pay attention in class. From what I remember we can file what your former mother did as an act of treason since she did it in spite and on account that it was under a law that has yet to be provoked. I that case we can take all her stuff and leave it to you. Sakura grinned like a mad woman and hugged the boy in front of her. Naruto knew it was just an appreciate hug. Naruto had gotten over his crush on her some time ago. With plan of revenge in mind the group went home. Meanwhile in the Konoha hospital, Kakashi sat in a hospital bed with his headband sitting in position on his forehead. He had bandages over his eye meaning that he had in fact gotten the Sharingan eye removed. He was just sitting there relaxing when the last person he expected entered the room. Kakashi my eternal rival, Guy said with enthusiasm, but trying to stay quiet, what are you doing in this place on such a youthful night? First of all Guy why are you here? Kakashi asked. Oh, Guy explained, me and my students were sparring. 1010 10 seemed distracted and hit Lee with a kanai in a very tender area by mistake. Ouch, Kakashi said. Guy could only nod. That was when he noticed that Kakashi had bandages on his Sharingan eye. My friend, Guy said, why do you have those bandages on your eye? Did you get hurt on your last mission? No, Kakashi said, I did some thinking over my last mission. Something happened and I don't want that bloodline anymore. Besides after using it I forgot that my family had its own gift. I wanted to get rid of the eye as a request of someone I knew and that it is only a shortcut. If I want to do something I have to do it on my own. Guy was quiet. Kakashi looked to see that Guy now had large anime tears running down his face. He put his forearm to his eyes to wipe the tears away. That was beautiful Kakashi, Guy said sobbing. Well, Kakashi said, the nurse said I had to rest so I'm going to hit the hay. Right, Guy said turning to leave. 
Oh and Guy, Kakashi said as his eternal rival left, I was wondering if we could spar tomorrow I'm trying to work my strength back up to when I was an Anbu captain. Guy looked at his self-proclaimed eternal rival and grinned. He gave him a thumbs up and said, you go it my eternal rival. Kakashi eyes smiled and laid his head back down as Guy left and turned out the lights. Kakshi closed his good eye and went to sleep. Meanwhile with the Namikaze family and Sakura, the family and recently no name Sakura were both walking through the Shinobi district. Minato found a large vacant lot, he walked to the center of it where there was a large red spiral symbol. Minato cut his thumb and then smeared some blood and in the center of the spiral. The ground beneath everyone shook. Then out of the ground rose a massive complex as big as the Hyuga complex. There was quick tour of the place and Naruto was surprised to find out that everything was as fresh as the day they were put in. How is it that everything works? Naruto asked his father. Well, Minato explained. I put up some preservation seals around the place in case I had to hid things. To be honest I have a lot of powerful jutsu here and a lot of people would have wanted to get their hands on them. Naruto nodded understanding his father's logic. The group then went upstairs and found the bedrooms. Naruto got his own as did Sakura. Minato and Kashina were sharing one. Though Naruto might not have been one of the smartest of people he could understand what it meant when two older people wanted to share a room. Luckily Minato had silence seals all over the house. The next day, Naruto rose up to the smell of cooking bacon. He immediately got up changed into some clothes and ran downstairs. It was pretty much the same outfit he wore during his mission in Wave. Naruto ran down to the kitchen to find his mother cooking breakfast and his father already wolfing down a stack of pancakes. Sakura was also wolfing down food, which was unlike her. Ah uh, who are you and what have you done with Sakura? Naruto asked getting the girl to giggle. The only reason I was on a diet, Sakura said, after she swallowed her food, was to try and look good for Sasuke. After my crush on him died I realized that it was just plain stupid. Naruto nodded in understanding. Kashina set down a big thing of pancakes at his seat and motioned for him. Naruto sat down, poured on a little syrup, and ate like a pig. After breakfast the Feili and guest went out back to get a little bit of training in to try and work off some of their breakfast. Plus just because Kakashi sensei was going to be two hours lad doesn't mean that they should have to wait that long for their training to start. Naruto and Sakura were sparring and Minato and Kashina were both watching them. Sakura had gotten better in the art of taijutsu. She was now proficient enough to actually punch someone hard when she wasn't really angry. Naruto and her were currently in a grappling match. Then something weird happened. Sakura started to radiate a different type of chakra. Her body gave off a brownish glow and he eyes turned from green to brown. Then she lifted Naruto up and then threw him across the courtyard. I mean literally across the courtyard. From the middle of it to the other wall. Oh man. Sorry Naruto. Sakura yelled as she ran over to check on her friend. What was that? Naruto asked in a dazed voice. He had big swirls for eyes at the moment and was currently a little out of it. I don't know, Sakura said, while we were fighting I felt something it. I drew on it and I don't know. Boy, Elion said, I think I know what happened. Ask the girl if you can have a look at her back. Naruto was surprised as he heard this. Minato and Kashina were both helping their son stand. Ah uh, Sakura, Naruto said, I know how this is going to sound but, can I, take a look at your back? What? Sakura asked yelled. Hey, Naruto yelled, one of my tenants thinks he might know what it is you just did. The night before Naruto had told Sakura that he had another tenant and that is what saved his life. To be honest Sakura was pretty shocked, but she was happy that that is what saved her new friend on the wave mission. Sakura growled at the boy slightly. She turned around and lifted the back of her battle kimono up. As she did Minato, Kashina, and Naruto gasped. On Sakura's back right below her shoulders was what looked like the tattoo of a large falcon. The bird was in a circle of chains and there was the kanji for earth in the upper left corner. Sakura, Naruto asked, when did you get a tattoo? I don't, have a tattoo, Sakura said. Minato pulled them inside, and pulled her in front of a mirror and Sakura saw the mark. So Naruto, Kashina said as Sakura was contemplating what the mark meant, what is that? Let me ask, Naruto said. That, Elion explained, is the mark of the falcons. A long time ago they were one of the strongest summons. 
they were the only ones who were able to use not only the elements of earth, fire, water, lightning, and wind, but the sub-elements metal, ice, wood, boil, steam, poison, storm and lava. During their years there was a war between the summons after it they vanished. It was said that one day a human would be marked as the one who would summon them. Apparently this girl is the one. Unfortunately it looks like the seal is blocked. From what I can tell it's also limited her chakra capacity. Naruto relayed all the information to his parents and Sakura. Everyone was in complete shock. This seal had blocked the strength she should have right now. I'll see if I can get rid of this, Minato said, that is if she wants to be rid of it. Sakura nodded. She wanted rid of the seal that was suppressing her strength. Minato cracked his knuckles and placed his hands on Sakura's back along with a piece of paper. Then he focused chakra into his hands. Slowly the chains on the tattoo receded onto the paper and left. Sakura felt something wither her be set free. Sakura groaned as her hair changed from pink to red. Sakura fell to the ground in a heap when Minato took his hands off of her back. Naruto went to help his friend up. Naruto was shocked to find that the Sakura's eyes now had a bluish ring around her eyes. You all right? Naruto asked. Yeah, she said, I'm fine. Naruto grinned at her then he looked at the clock and started to panic. Kakashi's going to be at the training ground in a few minutes, he yelled. Sakura's eyes were wide now. She knew that she was always hard on him when he was late, she didn't want to get the same treatment. Sorry, mom and dad, Naruto said as Sakura got up, we got to go now bye. The two shot out like rockets leaving behind a major dust trail. They also left Naruto and Sakura shaped holes in the door since they didn't open the door. The two parents just stared at the hole the two teenagers made in their door. I'm not fixing that, they both said at the same time. Meanwhile at training ground 7. Sasuke had been waiting for about two hours for both his teammates and his sensei. Sasuke was kind of annoyed. How was he supposed to master his Sharingan if he couldn't even train with anyone? That was when he noticed a large dust cloud. He saw two figures at the front of it but he couldn't tell who they were. When they got closer he saw that it was Naruto and some red-headed girl. After a few seconds the two screeched to a stop in front of Sasuke. The two were breathing hard because they pretty much just ran a marathon in a few minutes. Almost as soon as they caught their breath Kakshi showed up. Yo, Kakashi said. He then noticed the red head. Who are you? He asked not recognizing Sakura. It's me Kakashi sensei, Sakura said making both of Kakashi's eyes widen. Sakura? He asked, what happened to you? Sakura unlocked some crazy bloodline, Naruto said, we're not sure what it does exactly, but it changed her appearance. It was then Naruto noticed that Kakshi had both eyes out, and both of them were normal. He also noticed Dada looked a little beat up. Kakashi sensei, Naruto said, where's your Sharingan eye and why do you look beat up? In order, Kakashi answered, I had my Sharingan eye removed because when it comes to power that thing is a shortcut. And I'm beat up because I just got out of a sparing match with my guy and he doesn't know the meaning of the words, hold back. Naruto accepted the answer. It also seemed an actually good reason for him to be elate and to look like he just walked away from a train wreck. Sasuke was a little annoyed that he called the Sharingan a shortcut. It was the way to true power. So, Kakashi said, today we're going to start some special training today. What kind of training sensei? Naruto asked getting a little excited, but not jumping around like he normally did. During his training with Elion and Kayubi on the wave mission they had managed to breaking him of some of those habits. Elemental training, Kakshi answered taking out a few pieces of paper. These, he explained, is CH Kara paper. If you focus chakra into it the paper will react allowing you to know your elemental affinity. Earth turns it to dust, lightning causes it to crumple, fire ignites it, water soaks it, and wind splits it in half. He gave a piece of it to Sasuke and he focused chakra into it. The paper crumpled up and then caught fire. Afraid that he would get burned Sasuke dropped it. Two affinities, Kakashi said, impressive. Kakashi was going to train Sasuke, but he wasn't going to obsess about it. He was going to train the other two just as much. He was still mad at Sasuke for what happened over the mission. He told Serutobi and said that the Uchiha would get a mental exam in a few days. If Sasuke didn't come back sane he was dropped from the program. Your turn Sakura, Kakashi said handing her a piece of the paper. 
Sakura focused her chakra and there was one heck of a reaction. The paper split into four pieces. One piece caught fire, another crumpled up, another turned to dust, and another got soaked. Then the water and fire touched and a bit of the water started to boil and some started to give off steam. Some of the earth and water mixed and formed wood, while the earth and fire mixed and formed a metal and a small amount of lava. Some of the water froze and some turned purple. Whoa, Kakashi said both eyes wide in complete shock, I'd say you have one heck of a bloodline Sakura. Sakura could only nod dumbly. Though she already knew that her new abilities gave her this kind of power she couldn't comprehend what kind of power she could have when she was older. Sasuke was looking at her with a greedy look in his eye. With that kind of power he could use her. Naruto noticed Sasuke's look and leveled a vicious glare at the last Uchiha. Okay Naruto your turn. Kakashi handed Naruto some of the paper. Naruto focused and there was a very strange reaction. The paper split into six sections. One caught fire, another grew damp, another turned to dust, another crumpled up, one part turned black, and the last part gave off a slight glow. Everyone was staring at the paper with looks of complete and total shock. Naruto, Kakashi said, it looks like Yuru bloodline gave you some strong affinities too. Though I've never heard of a light affinity. Maybe you should go to your mother about this. I think I should, Naruto answered then asked mentally, Kaiyui Belion, did either of you have anything to do with this? Yes, the dragon said, during the merge the fox gave you the abilities of the five main elements and the dark element. You can control the sub-elements too. The light element came from me. From what I can tell your mother and father can teach you some of the main and sub-elemental jutsu and so can your sensei. We'll teach you the light and dark techniques. Naruto nodded understanding the answers. Well, Kakashi said taking some scrolls from out of who knows where, these jutsu are basic ones. When you master these I'll give you some more of them. Sasuke took a scroll on a fire and lightning jutsu. What he didn't know was that these were relatively weak ones. They were fire style, fire spin, and lightning style. Thunderbolt. Yes I got those from Pokemon, but they aren't really that strong. Kakashi gave Sakura five main element jutsu. She got fire style, fireball jutsu, earth style, earth shaker, water style, water bullet, lightning style, thunderball, and wind style, great breakthrough. Naruto got five main element jutsu as well. He got fire style, flame grenade, water style, water dragon, earth style, arms of Gaia, lightning style, storm shock, and wind style, great tornado. All three went to separate parts of the training ground to practice. Sakura did a few CH Kara control exercises first before she started practicing. She did those for a little bit rested and then started on her techniques. Sasuke just started on his jutsu immediately. He was also planning on going to the council to try and get Sakura to marry him so that she could bear him strong children with that bloodline of hers. Oh poor psychotic self-obsessed misguided fool. Naruto decided to see if he could try to understand his jutsu first. It was one thing to know a jutsu and it was another to master it. Another thing that Kayubi, Elion and Naruto's parents did was make him a bit smarter. He wasn't on Shikamaru's level but he was smart enough to know that he can't just jump into a fight fist swinging and expect to win. After a few hours after training with the new jutsu everyone went home. Naruto was walking home with Sakura. The two were currently chatting with each other about he jutsu they had learned. Meanwhile at training ground 8, Kuranai was not having a good day at the moment. She was currently dealing with a very angry Kiba who was going on about some humiliation he had and that some punk had put his hands on his sister. She was slightly mad as Hana was one of her friends. Hanada was close by trying to comfort her sensei who was on her last rope because of Kiba's anger at whoever it was who beat. Suddenly Kiba stopped ranting and sniffed the air. Akamaru sniffed too. The small dog then started barking at its master as if telling him not to do something that he would ultimately regret. Kiba of course didn't listen. The dog user took off in search of whoever had gotten his fur in a knot. Kuranai, Shino, and Hinatao ran after the boy. They both knew that Higai could be very brash. If they didn't stop him now then they would have to deal with whatever trouble he was going to cause. They ran after Kiba for a few minutes before Kiba grinned in a feral manner as he had found who he was looking for. The rest of his team stopped and saw that the guy he was after was, Naruto. Kuranai was surprised that Naruto was the one who got Kiba's fur ruffled like that. 
Shino was contemplating why Kiba was so mad at him, and Hanada was blushing up a storm at Naruto's new look. Kurenai was silently looking at the boy herself though she was never going to admit it. Naruto. Kiba yelled getting the blonde and silver haired boy's attention. Hey Kiba, he yelled, sorry about yesterday, no hard feeling right? Oh there are hard feelings, Kiba yelled, you took my place as alpha you punk and I'm going to take it back. You were alpha? Sakura asked, I thought his mom was? I think she was, Naruto said, I think he's just a stupid mutt who thinks he's top dog. He probably can't even do something right without mommy there. The two started laughing which really got him mad, he got even angrier when he heard Hinata and Kurenai giggling slightly at the jab. That's it, Kiba yelled, as he got in his family's stance. Kiba's chakra flared for a few seconds, he charged blindly with Akamaru barking at him to try and stop him before he got killed. If Kiba hadn't been in a blind rage at the moment he would have noticed that Naruto was focusing chakra into his hand. Kiba jumped and used his tunneling fang attack. Naruto drew his arm to the side. His arm started to radiate silver chakra and then he swung. There was a loud cracking noise and his fist made contact. Kiba now lay on the ground unconscious with a fist shaped indent on the side of his head. Kurenai, Naruto said getting the red-eyed woman's attention, good to see you and if you see Hana tell her I said hi. Naruto then turned around and went home with Sakura. While they left Hanada was seething inside, she had just seen Naruto laughing and smiling, with another girl. She was now thinking of ways of making the red-headed girl pay. Oh yes she would pay. Hanada's eyebrow started to twitch when she thought of it. Shino Kurenai and Akamaru all noticed the twitch and they slowly backed away from Naruto had just finished his training for the day. It had been a few weeks since the team started the training with each other. In that time Naruto had gotten some sword training from his mother. Sakura had gained some skill herself. She was now able to create at least three shadow clones. However it did make her winded after using three so she only made one at a time. Sasuke was still the same arrogant piece of crud that has yet to actually learn teamwork. He had managed to learn the jutsu he was given, after that he tried making Kakashi give him more. At the time Kakashi was doing his best to keep Sasuke from getting too many jutsu. The young Uchiha tried to get Naruto and Sakura to fight with him so he could use the Sharingan he awoke from his fight with Haku, but they always turned him down. At one time he even flirted with Sakura to try and get him access to her techniques. This got him an earth chakra powered punch to the stomach that broke one of his ribs. He tired complaining to the council, but since the civilians were done in a way with he didn't succeed, obviously. Over her training Sakura had gotten a little stronger, she had managed to unlock the water part of her chakra. This in turn not only made the water Judas she could use stronger, but allowed her to try and use wood style moves. She hadn't unlocked it yet, but she was on her way to it. She could tell cause when she unlocked her water chakra she felt a rushing feeling one that controlled and strong at the same time. Since their disbandment most of the civilians had been thinking about what had happened. They realized that when they had tried to kill Naruto they had nearly destroyed themselves. In light of this they were actually starting to warm up to him. Some of them were anyway. A few civilian clans and merchants were still upset about the whole thing since the India men stopped the ninja war in which they made a killing. How self absorbed can you be? Anyway, shop owner and restaurants let Naruto in now. Kashina and Minato were still far from forgiving them, but it was a start. At the time, Team 7 was waiting for their sensei who was being late yet again. What's taking him so long? Sakura complained. In her time of being disowned, she had grown much quieter. She could still be loud, but now it was only when she was very angry. It was a major relief on the people and dogs of the village. After a few more minutes of waiting Kakashi appeared in a puff of smoke. Yo, he said with a double eye smile, since he had his Sharingan eye removed he didn't need to keep his eye covered, because of this a few girls noticed him. Why are you late this time? Naruto asked, sparring with Guy again. The three teens had been shown a picture of Guy a few days prior, to be honest they were pretty freaked out about his appearance. Even Kayubi was freaked out saying that Guy's large eyebrows were actually large demon caterpillars. Elion didn't say anything because he was hiding behind his wings saying, Make the bad things go away mommy, make them go away. Naruto was upset when he didn't have mental camera for the moment because then he would have some blackmail for both of his tenants. 
No actually, Kakashi answered, I have signed you three up for the Chunin exams. The Chunin exams? Naruto asked, I forgot it was that time of year again. Yes, Kakashi said, now I suggest you guys train as much as you can. You're going to need it. Naruto can I speak with you? What is it? Naruto asked, I want you to keep an eye on Sasuke, Kakashi said, the mental examiner wasn't a Yamanaka, so I don't know if it was another Uchiha lover and if he is really sane. Understand? Naruto nodded. After that the team went their separate ways. Naruto and Sakura both headed to the Uzumaki complex. As they were walking Naruto noticed something that was definitely out of the ordinary. It was a rock, but not just any rock. It was a completely square rock. The blonde stopped walking. The two looked at it. Kid, Naruto said, rocks aren't completely square. I told you he was good, said a child's voice from inside the rock. A few seconds later the box exploded in a large burst of smoke, there was the sound of coughing from three individuals. I told you used too much gunpowder, came a male voice. You said you wanted a big sniff, came another male voice. Oh shut up you two, came a third voice that was female. The smoke cleared to reveal a boy in a yellow shirt and khaki pants with a long scarf around his neck. The second boy wore green and had on glasses and apparently had allergies due to the fact that he had a little snot running down his nose. The third was a girl that had her hair done up in two pigtails. Who are you supposed to be? Sakura asked. I'm Konohamaru, future Hokage, the first of the three said. I'm Udon, and I like math, said the second boy. I'm Moegi the cutest girl in my class, the girl said. And we are the Konohamaru Corps. All three of them said at the same time getting in funny poses. Naruto and Sakura both sweat dropped at the fact that these kids were really doing this. Naruto had met Konohamaru before. When he passed after beating Mizuki he met Konohamaru as he attacked High Grandfather Hiruzen Serutobi. Yeah that's right. This kid is the grandson of the Sandame. Anyway Naruto used his sexy jutsu which can knock out perverts and the old man went down. The boy saw this and chased after Naruto wanting him to teach him. After taking him to a few places and getting hit by a few women he managed to teach Konohamaru the sexy jutsu. Around that time the boy's sensei Ebisu came out. Like the others he didn't like Naruto either. Konohamaru tried the sexy jutsu, but it didn't work on him. Naruto brought out a couple of shadow clones and had them do the sexy jutsu. Thus creating the harem jutsu. The move knocked Ebisu out cold. After that Naruto told the oi that no matter what he did there was no shortcuts to being Hokage. The boy apparently took that to heart. Hey boss, Konohamaru said breaking Naruto from his thoughts, is this your girlfriend? No kid, Naruto said, she's just a friend of mine. Good, the boy said, cause you could do better, I mean she's got a massive forehead and a flat chest, she's not really that appealing. Unfortunately for the same dame's grandson Sakura had yet to improve her temper. What did you say? Sakura asked in a sickly sweet voice that a lot of people feared. Kids, Naruto whispered, run. The three kids then ran for their lives with an angry Sakura hot on their tail. Naruto ran after them because he knew Sakura would kill him grandson of the Sandame or not. The chase was uneventful except Fro at the end when Konohamaru ran into some. Ow, the person groaned, watch where you're going you little brat. Said person was a guy who was dressed a black suit and a hood that made him look like a cat. He had a large bandaged pack on his back. Another thing about him that stuck out was the fact that his face was covered in war paint. With him was a blonde. She wore a battle kimono and had a large battle fan on her back. Her hair was done up in four tails. Maybe I should teach you to watch where you're going, the boy said lifting Konohamaru up by the neck. Kankuro, the blonde said, knock it off. What if he finds out? Relax, Tamari, Kankoro said, looking at her, he won't find out. Kankoro turned back to the kid to start when he suddenly felt a sudden flash of killing intent. He found the source to be a blonde standing across from him. I suggest you put the boy down, Naruto growled. Oh, yeah? Kankoro said, or what? That, Naruto said, pointing over Kankoro's shoulder. I'm not going to fall for that, Kankoro said smugly. Then he heard a gasp. He turned around to see a second blonde that looked exactly like the one in front of him. His had a golden sword to Temeri's neck. 
Kankoro did the smart thing and put the kid down. At that moment the blonde in front of him disappeared in a puff of smoke. A clone? Kankoro thought. The blonde put his sword up sealing it in the dragon tattoo on his arm. Now, Naruto said, before this goes any further, Sasuke get out of the tree that goes for the redhead who smells like sand and blood too. Sasuke jumped out of the tree. He was swiftly followed by a redhead in brown and black with a gourd on his back and the kanji for love over his eye. Kankoro, the boy growled, you area disgrace to our village. But Gara, Kankoro said, I it wasn't am my fault this guy. Shut up, Gara growled, or I'll kill you myself. Gara turned his attention to Team 7. You, he said, what is your name? Sasuke Uchiha, Sasuke said, he is unimportant. He was shut up by a blast of killing intent from the red head. You do not interest me, Gara snarled at the Uchiha who was close to wetting himself. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said. Kit, Kayubi said, I recognize this guy's chakra, he has the Ichibi held inside of him. Yes, Elion spoke, I can sense the demonic chakra coming from the boy. Hey buddy, Naruto called out, I can tell there's something different about you. What do you mean? Gara asked. Simple, Naruto said, you're like me. A cage that hold a monster. Gara and the other sand ninja's eyes widened. Which one do you hold? Gara asked. Number 9. Naruto said, plus an extra. Kankoro, Tamari, Gara called, we need to go. Baki sensei is waiting. They turned to leave. Hold on, Naruto called out, you know me and him, but I don't know you. My name is Gara Subaku, Gara said, these are my siblings Tamari and Kankoro. Siblings, Naruto said, didn't know that seeing as one of you is a redhead the other is a blonde and another is a makeup wearing, S&M freak. It's war paint, Kankoro growled, and I'm not into that. Yeah, Naruto said, I take it you guys are here for the Chunin exams. We are, Gara said. I look forward to fighting you Uzumaki. As do I Gara, Naruto said crossing his arms. The three sand nin then walked away. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he watched his opponent and fellow Jinchuriki leave. Come on Sakura, Naruto said, let's get out of here. Later on, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke arrived at the Tower Academy. It was here that the first part of the Chunin exams would be held. Never thought we would be here again, Sakura said. Me neither, Naruto said, the last time I was here we were all just a bunch of students. I pity the people who have to sit through Uruka's lectures. At the same time, Achu, you okay Uruka, asked Kakashi as he heard the scarred Chunin sneeze. I'm not sure, Uruka said, but I think that Naruto just said something about me, I'll find out about that later. With Naruto and the group, Team 7 walked through the halls of their old stomping grounds, after going up the stairs they found themselves in a hall where there were a bunch of other genin teams. All of them were joined around the same room. Let us in already, yelled a voice that was familiar to Naruto. The blonde and his team walked forward until they saw who it was. Naruto was surprised to see that I was the bun-haired girl from a few days earlier. He also saw the Hayuga boy and the green-suited kid who tried to get in the middle of his and Kiba's fight. Sorry little girl, one of guards at the door said but we're doing you a favor by not letting you in. You won't last a second in this exam. Naruto had a feeling that this wasn't as it seemed. When he was sure no one was looking he activated his kitsune eye. He saw that this was in fact a trick. They were on the second floor not the third. Naruto had to resist the urge to grin like a madman. This was a good way to get rid of some of the competition. All they had to do was. Hey drop the genjutsu. We're on the second floor not the third. Son of a Naruto walked up behind Sasuke and then bashed him over the head. You moron, Naruto growled, this was made to get rid of some of the competition, now we got even more of them to deal with thanks to your monumental incompetence. Wow I didn't even know I knew that word. As they left a Hyuga started to approach them, but was stopped by Lee. Neji, he said, I don't think that challenging them would be a good idea, especially the blonde haired one. Why's that? Neji asked. He was the dead last this year and the year before that. I don't think that is the case anymore, Lee said. I witnessed a fight between him and the Inazuka heir. I stopped them from fighting by halting one of their punches. And, Neji asked as the bun haired girl approached them, 
If he had put more strength in his fist, Lee said, he would have broken my arm. Neji stopped as he heard that Lee had almost lost his arm due to the so called dead last. Neji shook it from his head. It was Naruto's fate to be the dead last. No matter how hard he trained, he could not defy his fate. Man, this guy is a prick. Team 7 made their way to the real exam room. As they approached, they were stopped by Kakashi. Glad you two could come, Kakashi said. I see you got past that little first part. Yeah, Naruto said. Unfortunately, King Imbecile over here blabbed about it and caused a whole bunch of other people to continue along with us. Ouch, Kakashi said. Anyway, I want you free to go in there and knock these guys all the way back to the academy. Or, in the case of the people from the other villages, knock them back to their village. The three then entered. They were surprised that the room was filled with so many people. They only had a moment of silence, though. Sasuke kun. Sasuke saw Ino Yamanaka, a platinum blonde with sky blue eyes, heading for him. The boy ducked just in time for Ino to miss him. She was heading straight for Naruto who quickly did a substitution with Sasuke and the Uchiha heir was tackled by his fangirl. Oh Sasuke kun, the fangirl said, I missed you so much. You don't know how much of a pain it has been being on team the FA. Uh, big boned doofus and that lazy punk. Ino turned to see Sakura. She didn't recognize her at first, but then she did after seeing her large forehead. Hey there forehead, Ino said, I don't know what you think you're doing dyeing your hair, but it won't help you win against me. To everyone's surprise Sakura just smiled sweetly at Ino. Hey Ino, she said, you mind if I talk to you later? Sakura isn't going to fight Ino, Shoji asked. The end must be near. Troublesome, said Shikamaru. They were the two Ino was referring to earlier. Shoji was a big boned boy with brown hair and swirls on his cheeks. Shikimaru was a skinny boy with black hair done up to look like a pineapple. So everyone's here, came the brash voice of Kiba in Azuka. It's logical that everyone would be here, Kiba, Shino said to his teammate. Hello, Naruto, Hanada said to her crush. Hey, Hanada, Naruto said. Hey, you didn't stutter. I've been working on it, Hanado said. She was still a little shy, but she was trying to become, if only, just slightly bolder. Kiba growled to himself as he saw this. He had a huge crush on Hinata for the longest time. He wanted her, and he was not about to have some dead last punk take his girl away from him. He was about to approach them when a new voice spoke up. You rookies need to quiet down, you don't want to attract too much attention to yourselves. Everyone turned to see a silver haired boy with his hair drawn into a ponytail and a pair of glasses on his nose. He wore a white shirt with a purple vest. Who are you supposed to be? Naruto asked. My name is Kabuto, the boy said. You said not to draw attention, Naruto said. You've probably done this before. Yeah, Kabuto said. This is my seventh time doing this. Seven times? Naruto thought. No one takes the exam seven times. This guy's must be up to something. I agree, child, Elion spoke. I think he might be in league with someone. Humans don't normally smell this much of snakes. Snakes? asked the Kyubi. If it's who I think it is, don't be surprised if I try to take over. Why's that? Naruto thought. Long story, Kyubi said. I'll tell you later. Is there something you want? Naruto asked. Actually, yes, Kabuto said. I'm here to give you some pointers. I don't need help, Sasuke said. I think he means information, Naruto said, getting a nod from Kabuto. Yes, Kabuto said, you're smarter than you look. I've done some growing up, Naruto said, crossing his arms. Now, do you have any specific information on someone? Yes, Kabuto said, I have information on every person here. Then I'll take some information on Rock Lee and Gara Subaku, Naruto said with a serious gaze. I'll take some information on Naruto Uzumaki, Kiba said then he thought, I bet his record is completely embarrassing, if it is Hinata will come to me. You know their names, Kabuto said as he took out some black cards, that makes it easier. He focused Chakra into one of the cards and took it out. First is Rock Lee, he read, he's a senior genin. Under the tutelage of Might Guy. Has a condition that keeps him from molding Chakra correctly so he mostly uses Taijutsu. Though he doesn't look like much he has impressive strength and speed so don't underestimate him. Kabuto took out a second card. Next is Gara Subaku. 
He's from the village hidden in the sand in Wind Country. Is the youngest of the Kay's Cage's children. The second oldest being his brother Kankuro and the oldest being his sister Tamari. Not much information on here except that he went on a rank mission and came back from it without so much as a scratch. The genin who could hear were surprised. This kid was either very stealthy or very strong, they would have to wait and see. Finally Naruto Uzumaki, no way, what? Kiba asked. Apparently this is some new info, Kabuto said still in shock. Come on man. Spit it out, Kiba said getting impatient. Okay, Kabuto said, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze also known as the Silver Dragon. It says he's the dead last of the class, but showed skills far beyond that. First mission was an A ranked where a traitor tried to steal the scroll of sealing. On AC ranked turned a ranked mission he went toe to toe with Zabuza Momochi the demon of the bloody mist. At a later date he as well as a team of Junin and a few missing nin charged into and slaughtered a small army of mercenaries. That day he was covered in silver chakra that formed a dragon's tail and a wings. Later convinced Zabuza Momochi and a few other missing nin to join the leaf. No other information other than that. Everyone was staring at Naruto in shock. Some of them were disbelieving since there was no way a genin could do that. Kiba looked about ready to wet himself from what he heard about the slaughter. Sasuke glared at Naruto for his power. Sakura smiled knowingly. The rest of the Konoha 12 was nervous. A team of Iwa Nin were glaring at the boy. Naruto's father had done some major damage in the past to their country. As I write they were planning their revenge. Buddy, Naruto said, can I see those cards? Kabuto handed them to him. Naruto's hand then shined with silver chakra that caught the cards on fire. What the hell? Kabuto yelled. You knew too much, Naruto said, only the Hokage knew about the mission with Mizuki and Second Genin aren't allowed to have such information such as mission history and the fact that I used that silver chakra was confidential. You're lucky I don't report you. Kabuto gulped. He had just lost all his information and this guy was figuring him out. At that moment there was a large plume of smoke and a figure appeared in the front of the room. He was tall muscular and had a bandana over his head. All right you maggots. The man yelled. My name is Ibiki and I'm the proctor for this exam. Everyone sat down and got ready for the exam. As they did Ibiki spoke to them telling them the rules behind the exam. Okay, Ibiki said, here are the rules for this part of the exam. You are given at least 9 questions on your test. You have 1 hour to try and answer all the questions. If you are caught cheating in that time you and your team will immediately be disqualified. At then end of the hour you will be given a 10th question. There are special rules for it. But those will be told at the end of the hour. Everyone looked nervous at that. Sakura and Sasuke slipped angered glares at Naruto. Everyone understand? Good. Now the hour begins, Ibiki said as the clock started to tick. Everyone set to work. Meanwhile, the entire Janin sat in a lounge while their students took the exam. So Kakashi, Anko asked, What's your team like? Where to begin? The silver haired Janin thought, Well, Naruto's grown up some. He's matured and he's gained some impressive skills. Sakura has started to grow up too. She's not the raving fangirl that she used to be and she's started to take her training seriously. Sasuke, I'm not really too thrilled about. In fact I'm starting to worry about his mental state. Why's that? Kurenai asked. Naruto nearly died on our C rank turned a rank mission trying to save Sakura, Kakashi explained. Sasuke just spat on his grave. After that Naruto got some swords and Sasuke demanded that he hand them over to him. That boy's arrogance is going to get him killed. I'm with you on that, Asuma said, dad told me that some familiar faces are back. Wonder what he meant by that. Guess, said a familiar voice. Everyone turned to see Kashina sitting on the window sill. Kashina? Kurenai gasped. Hey there, she said smiling, glad to see you got rid of that I Kakashi. Yeah, Kakashi said. That thing was a bit of a pain at times though. So what's going on with the first exam? Kashina asked. Well, Kakashi explained, the examiner is Morino Ibiki giving the written portion of the exam. Ibiki? Asuma asked, oh man this is going to good. Why's that? Kurenai asked. Ibiki is the head of the torture and interrogation department, Anko said, he's known as the mind sadist among the Janin. Mind sadist? Kashina asked. He's called that because he doesn't torture your body, 
Anko Siad with a grin. He tortures you with mental warfare. Back in the exam room. Everyone was taking the test as well as they could. Some teams had already been disqualified for cheating. Some of the Konoha 12 were actually managing to cheat without getting caught. Sasuke was using his Sharingan to copy the pencil movements of a student in front of him. Kiba had a Kamru look over the answers of another student and relay the answers to him. Hanada and Neji both used their Bayakugan to see the answers of other students. 1010 used some nearly invisible wires to move mirrors on the roof to give both her and her teammate Lee answers. Sakura already knew them as did Tamari. Ino switched minds with Sakura and memorized the answers before writing them down. Shikimaru knew the answers and used his shadow possession jutsu to give Choji the answers. Gara formed a third eye and copied the answers from someone else. Shino had a bug scout the area and gather information. Naruto had Kayubi and Elion give him answers. At some point at the half hour mark Kankoro asked to go to the bathroom. In the bathroom. Okay, he said to the Chunin in the bathroom with him, tell me the answers starting from number one. The ninja's face cracked to reveal a wooden face. After Kankoro came back and about 25 minutes later Ibiki stood up and addressed them. All right kitties, he said, the hour is almost up, time for the tenth question. Everyone stood on edge as they got ready for the final question. Before I give you the question though, Ibiki said, I should tell you there are a few things regarding it. First of all you don't have to answer this question. However if you don't then you and your Tem are out of here. Also you have a chance to back out. Those of you who don't want to continue can leave now. However if you do your team. A few people left the room. Not everyone though. The Konoha 12 being one of the groups staying. To those of you who had the guts to remain, Ibiki said before smiling, you pass. What? Came the reply of some nin who apparently wasn't all that bright. The point behind this test was to see how well you could gather information discreetly, Ibiki said, those of you who managed to do so without being caught stayed. Those who were got disqualified were caught. The other reason was to see how well you did under pressure. A real ninja never gives up his own team to benefit himself. That's something you have to learn. It's also something that I had to learn. Ibiki removed his bandana. Everyone retched at the sight of the multiple scars and puncture wounds that covered his head. Whoa, Naruto thought, whoever tortured him was a real sadist. I have to agree with you on that one kid, Kayubi said. Ditto, Elion spoke. Now, Ibiki said putting his headband back on, those of you who passed can wait here until the proctor for the next exam comes in. At that moment the window was busted open and a black thing flew in. It was then sent out in four corners revealing a banner that read. Introducing. The sexy and single Anko Midarashi. A figure in the smoke became clearer and Naruto recognized her. All right maggots. Anko yelled. The time for kid stuff is over. I am. The sexy and single Anko Midarashi. Naruto interrupted. You don't have to introduce yourself lady I already know you and anyone who doesn't can just read the banner. Anko face faulted and left an imprint of her face on the floor. Everyone couldn't help but snicker. Even Ibiki had the chuckle at that. Anko regained her composure and sauntered over to him and said in a flirty voice, What's wrong? Upset that you woke up alone yesterday? Everyone's eyes widened as they looked at Naruto in shock. A few girls looked jealous and the guys all got nosebleeds. Hanada was seething at the purple haired woman and was sending a secret glare at her. Naruto didn't know what to say for a moment. Kid, I got a comeback for you. Kayubi said then he whispered it. No, Naruto said looking her in the eye, I'm upset because you never called me back, or stayed for another round. It was Anko's turn to blush. Everyone looked at the blonde like he was nuts. Anko then noticed how many there were. Ibiki you're losing your touch, she said, there are so many left this time. We have a special group this time around Anko, Ibiki said. All right then, Anko said. To those of you who passed follow me to the next exam. Everyone got up and left. All the while Hinata was sending glares at the back of Anko's head for trying to steal her Naruto. If only she knew that she was just teasing. After everyone left Ibiki started taking up the test papers. When he reached Naruto's he was surprised to see a drawing on it. The drawing was of a chibi version of Naruto doing a peace sign. He chuckled slightly. Then he read a note that was close to the bottom. Dear Ibiki aka Proctor aka Scarface, Ibiki growls. 
In the future you might want to try leaking a bit of killing intent on the final question. That'll really make everyone want to soil their pants. Also a genin by the name of Kabuto had some info that was confidential. Do me a favor and look into it. Signed, Naruto aka Maggot aka Kayubi Brat. P.S. Test this you sucker. At that moment a small seal at the bottom of the page came undone and large cream pie shot out and nailed Ibiki in the face. The man growled as he wiped the pie off his face. Brat, Ibiki muttered out loud, still he does raise a point. With that Ibiki got up and then headed off to do a little research on this Kabuto guy. Meanwhile, the Genin teams now stood in front of a large forest. Said forest was cut off from them by a large fence with signs that said, Keep out, and, warning, or, don't go in here you moron. I don't think we're supposed to go in there, Naruto said trying to lighten the mood with a dumb joke. Gee you think? Sakura asked chuckling slightly. This, Anko said getting the rookie's attention, is training ground 44, or as the Janin like to call it the forest of death. Looks like fun, Naruto said with a smirk making everyone look at him like he's crazy. Kid, Anko said. This place is filled with animals and monsters that would make even a hardened Jonin run crying like a baby back to his mama. Like I said sounds like fun, Naruto repeated. Everyone except for his team backed away from him since he certainly was crazy. Anko smirked. She threw a kanai at the blonde and vanished. Naruto moved to the side and the knife cut his cheek. He was then put in a hold and turned his head to see Anko lick the blood from his cheek. Yummy, she thought as she savored the taste. You know, Anko said with smirk, tough guys like you are usually the first to get splattered all over the forest floor. I'd hate to see such a cutie get eaten by wild tigers. Naruto smirked and then there was a puff of smoke and a log replaced his spot. Before Anko could turn around she felt cold steel press tickle the back of her neck. She turned to see Naruto with his swords drawn and in an X formation behind her neck ready to decapitate her. Would you now? Naruto asked. Well to be honest I don't die very easy, how about this? If I manage to survive this, you have to go on a date with me. I lose an eye, become your personal punching bag for the next week. Anko grinned as she turned to him and said in a husky tone, you're on stud. Hanada had steam blowing out of her ears as she watched the interaction between the two. First Sakura starts acting friendly toward him and now the proctor is starting to come onto him. She had to make her move fast if she was going to get her Naruto-kun. Back with the other two Anko and Naruto both felt a small amount of killing intent. They both turned to see a KUSA nin with a freakishly long tongue that had Anko's kanai in it. You might want to lay off the killing intent, Naruto deadpanned, you'll give somebody the wrong idea. Sorry, the KUSA nin spoke, I just wanted to return the proctor's kanai. Thanks, Anko said taking her knife then she thought, there's something off about that one. Kayubi Elion, Naruto thought. Something's up with this guy. I can feel it too, kid, Kayubi said. He smells of snakes like that Kabuto kid. Watch out for this one. He may be far stronger than he appears. Okay, maggots, Anko said. Before we begin the exam, I need you to sign these. What are those for? Naruto asked. These are waivers that say the village isn't responsible for you, death, Anko said, making all the genin their sweat drop. After everyone signed the waivers, Anko started to explain the test. For this exam, Anko told the genin, you have to go inside the forest of death here and find a scroll to go with the one your team has. If your team has an earth scroll you need to get a heaven scroll and vice versa in a time span of 5 days. While you have the scrolls you can't open them. What happens if we do? A random genin asked, you don't want to know little boy, Anko answered, also if a member of your team is rendered incapacitated you and your team are disqualified. Get it? Good. Now get into the stand over there and get your scroll. As the teams entered the stand they noticed that they couldn't tell which team had the scroll they needed. They knew that this would make things hard on all of them. With that the teams went to a gate that they were assigned. As they did Anko's voice sounded over an intercom. Before the test begins I have one last piece of advice, Anko voice said, just don't die. With those last words the gates opened and the test began. Everyone ran into the forest to find the scroll they needed and to try and get the heck out of this forest as fast as humanly possible. With Team 7. So what are we going to do now? Sakura asked. Okay I have an idea, Naruto said, I'm going to go give back to nature while you two try and think of a plan. 
The two sweat dropped as Naruto walked off into the bushes. With Naruto, Naruto zipped up his pants and sighed in relief as he finished giving back to nature. Sweet relief, Naruto muttered. Then he sniffed the air. He felt something off. He smelled a human being. He jumped to the right just in time to avoid getting hit with a kunai. He turned to find a rain ninja with a yellow jumpsuit and a breathing device on his mouth. Hold still you dumb blonde, the ninja growled. Now hand over your scroll and we'll let you live. Naruto just smirked. He took a deep breath and focusing fire chakra into his jaw sent out a blast of flames. The rain ninja jumped out of the way to avoid being turned into a flambe. Sakura and Sasuke had been drawn to the blast and came across the side of the fight, as they did two other rain ninja in yellow jumpsuits came up. One had a band covering his eyes while the other had his ears covered, both of which had breathing devices. Sakura cracked her knuckles and charged at the one with his eyes covered. Shockingly he was able to dodge her he punch. Sakura followed that up with a quick kick that sent the rain ninja flying. She hits hard, he groaned. I'm not done yet, Sakura said as she went through hand signs, wind style, great breakthrough. A huge gust of wind blew through the forest and blew away the rain ninja making him smash into a tree. He ninja tried to get up, but was stopped and Sakura jumped over to him and, with a hand glowing with green chakra, bashed him until he was in a very deep crater. Sasuke was holding off the rain nin that had his ears covered. He was avoiding a few quick strikes from the ninja while countering by stabbing at him with a kunai. The rain ninja jumped back and landed a few feet away. Sasuke then went through hand signs and thought, fire style, phoenix flower just you. Sasuke breathed in and sent out a volley of fireballs at the enemy ninja. The rain ninja just dodged from side to side avoiding the blasts. Ha! Huh. The ninja yelled, his voice clear through his breathing device, you're going to have to do better than that to beat me little boy. You're probably right, Sasuke said as he appeared behind him making him gasp. The rain ninja was then struck in the back a few times, then Sasuke grabbed him and pushed him over in midair. The result was the ninja facing head down. Sasuke grabbed him and then locked the rain ninja's head in place with his feet. As they fell Sasuke called out, Hawk dive. They made contact with the ground with a loud crunch. Sasuke let go of the rain ninja and said ninja fell to the ground dead. Naruto had drawn dragon claw and was swinging his sword at the remaining ninja. The rain ninja dodged each strike with surprising agility and jumped back and growled at the blonde. Is that all you got little boy? The rain ninja taunted. You wish, Naruto said as he drew fox fang and charged. The rain ninja jumped up and backwards to avoid getting sliced by fox fang. Naruto then threw dragon claw. It spun like a saw and rain nin ducked underneath it. Then the ground behind the ninja broke away while he was still in mid limbo. The rain ninja's eyes widened as a second Naruto jumped out of the hole and caught Dragon Claw. The rain ninja didn't have enough time to process this as the sword was stabbed through his chest. Naruto then searched him and found a scroll on him. Darn it, Naruto swore under his breath, he has a heaven scroll too. He then went to get his teammates, what happened? Sakura asked. I got the guy, Naruto said, but he didn't have the scroll we needed. Darn it, Sasuke said but at least that's one less team to deal with, yeah, Naruto said. Naruto suddenly felt a flare of chakra. There was a sudden blast of wind. Sasuke and Sakura managed to get out of the way, but Naruto was sent flying through the trees. Darn, said a voice, well one out of three isn't bad. The two members of Team 7 turned to see the KUSA Nin that had given off the killing intent back before the exam started. I believe this is what you're looking for. The ninja said holding an earth scroll. It is, Sasuke said stepping forward. Well then, the KUSA nin said as she took the scroll, dot and ate it, if you want it come and get it, meanwhile. Naruto groaned in pain as he tired to move. Okay up we go, Naruto groaned as he rose up. Man that hurt, Naruto groaned. Naruto then felt a presence behind him. He spun around to see a massive snake. He managed to jump to the right to avoid the snapping jaws. He then noticed his swords which he hadn't sealed up were over to the side. He focused Elion's and Kyubi's chakra and the two swords flew at him. Skillfully he caught them. The blonde then jumped left to avoid the jaws again. Then he jumped up and brought the swords down on the snake's head piercing its brain. Man what was with that? Naruto thought out loud. Kit. 
The fox yelled, I know where I smelled that scent before. You have to get back to your friends now. You got it, fox. Naruto said to the fox as he made a dash for the last place he saw the two. Naruto raced through the forest following the chakra signatures of his friends. Actually, he wasn't chasing his friends' chakra signatures at all. He was going for the freakishly large amount of chakra that no genin should have. I mean, seriously, is this guy supposed to be so careless? Naruto charged through the woods until he found Sasuke and Sakura going against the Kusa Nin. It's that weird Kusa Nin from earlier, Naruto thought, wait, that chakra is way too much for a genin or chunin for that matter. Damn. Kayubi roared, Naruto, be careful when you fight this guy. It's going to take all the power you have just to survive. Naruto took out a kanai and that had a kanji symbol on it. Hey you! Naruto yelled. The Kusa Nin turned to see the blonde throw the kanai. The Kusa Nin caught it with a smirk. Did you really expect that to work? She asked with a smirk. Yes, Naruto said, yes I did. A second later the symbol on the kanai flashed. The light was so bright he Kusa Nin covered her eyes from the light. Naruto took advantage of the snake's momentary handicap. He blurred through hand signs before calling out, Fire style, fireball jutsu. A huge fireball shot from Naruto's mouth and enveloped the ninja. Naruto stood across from the blaze. Then he noticed Sakura and Sasuke on a branch just a little bit below them. He jumped down to his teammates. Are you guys okay? Naruto asked. We're okay, Naruto, Sakura said. That freak had some nasty killing intent. Sasuke groaned as he got up. I actually saw the moment of my own death when I looked into her eyes. Whoa, Naruto said. Note to self. Don't look in the weirdest eyes. Not bad boy, said a familiar voice. Everyone turned to see the flames had died and the Kusa Nin stood up without a scratch. Although her skin was burned and her left didn't have any skin revealing white skin underneath it and a yellow eye with a purple line under it. Who is this guy? Naruto whispered. Kit, the fox growled. I know this guy. His name is Orochimaru, one of the three Sanin. He's the reason you were separated from your parents. He, along with some guy in a spiral orange mask, killed my family and put me in a genjutsu. That's why I attacked. Naruto's eyes widened and then he narrowed them in anger. He snarled with red chakra flowing out of his body. His eyes turned red with slit pupils and his nails lengthened into claws. Don't bother hiding anymore naruto growled out i know who you are orochimaru of the sanin the kusa nin's eyes widened for a brief second then returned to normal and a dark smirk crossed his face for a quick second she then reached for her face and then peeled off her face revealing that she was in fact male clever boy orochimaru hissed let's see if you've earned your rank in the bingo book with that the snake man charged swinging a punch naruto ducked to the side but was caught in the stomach with a knee that sent him flying backwards and into a tree. The blonde then whipped out Dragon Claw. The snake Sanin avoided the first few swings, but was surprised when Naruto focused his chakra and sent out a blast of golden flames from the sword. The snake jumped avoiding the flames. One of the embers though nicked him and he felt the burning sensation in his leg. He then realized that if he had taken the full blast of that attack he would be barbecued. Static. The picture changes to that of a man sitting behind a large desk with a stack of papers in his hand. On the wall behind him are the words Fox News 5. We interrupt Dragon Kitsune Knight for this special news report, the man said shuffling through the papers that were in his hands, author of story Dragon Kitsune Knight, a retake on the story Kitsune Dragon Knight, has received complaints that the flames shot from Naruto's sword, Dragon Claw, are a rip-off of the Amaratsu flames of the Mangekyo Sharingan. When confronted Isom had this to said, Elion is a dragon of heaven meaning his flames are strong against demons and people with corrupted souls, and aside from a lot of people in the DC and Marvel universe there are very few people who are that corrupt. There was the sound of an audience laughing. Then the man then looks at the viewers and says, we now return you to your regularly scheduled program. Static. Everyone looks around as if confused. Uh, Naruto said. Did anyone else just feel we were covered up by a news guy for a few seconds? Yes, Orochimaru said looking around equally freaked out. Uh huh, Sakura said shaking her head in disbelief while Sasuke just stared blankly into space. Naruto then realized that the snake guy was distracted again. 
The blonde responded by going through hand signs and calling out, wind style, grade tornado. Orochimaru didn't react in time and was blasted into the side of a tree with a blast of smoke, splinters, and bark. Naruto then ran over to his friends. You guys okay? Naruto asked as he knelt down beside his teammates. Yeah, Sakura said, we're fine. I think we should get out of here before that white pedophile weirdo wakes up. It was then that said white pedophile weirdo burst from the ground and his neck extended and bit Sasuke on the neck. The man then sank his teeth into Sasuke's neck. The young Uchiha screamed in pain. What did you do to him? Sakura yelled as she heard her teammates' screams. Just a little present, Orochimaru said with a nasty smirk, soon you'll seek me out for power. Sakura growled then charged angrily at the snake Sani. The snake didn't move since he figured this girl was a fangirl and would be much of a threat. He was given a rude awakening when the girl's fist met his stomach and sent him flying through the trees. Unknowingly Sakura called on her earth chakra and delivered a punch that was close to being on par with Tsunade's strength. Damn, Orochimaru thought as he rubbed his jaw, I felt like I just got punched in the face by Tsunade. This is probably how Jiraiya felt when Tsunade hit him. Meanwhile in a casino a bland woman with a pig sneezed. I hope I'm not catching a cold, she said as she rubbed her nose. At the same time in a hot spring in Kumo a white-haired old man sneezed alerting the women in the hot spring of his presence. Eek! Pervert! One of them cried which was then followed by screams of agony as the man was beaten within an inch of his life. Back in Konoha in the forest of death Orochimaru rose up from the ground and let out a low snarl. He normally wasn't easily angered, but he had just been humiliated and hurt by two kids. Needless to say the man was a little pissed off. I'll kill you, he roared as he charged. Naruto growled as he jumped in front of Sakura. As he did he felt an instinct roll over him. The blonde's blue and slightly silver eyes took on their golden form before he roared, Dragon of Heaven. Breath your golden flames on my enemy. Burn Dragon Fury. As Naruto spoke that phrase Dragon Claw erupted into golden flames that shined with a holy radiance. When the flames cleared it showed a new sword in Naruto's grip. This new sword was a deep golden color. Coming off the blade you could see the what looked like light silver flames flickering in the blade. The hilt was made to resemble a white dragon's head with golden eyes with the blade looking like it was coming out of the dragon's mouth. Orochimaru froze as he felt he holy power rising off the blade. Naruto then focused Charka into the newly formed Dragon Fury and swung. The result was a large blast of gold flames erupting from the blade and being sent at the snake Sanin flying. After that Dragon Fury turned back into Dragon Claw. Naruto examined his sword then turned to Sakura and said, I think we should get out of here. We need to find some place where Sasuke can heal. Right, Sakura said as she picked up Sasuke and then ran off for some place that was relatively safe in this forest to rest up. Meanwhile Orochimaru rose up from the ground with a pained look on his face. The man then shook his head to clear the cobwebs. That boy certainly seems to live up to his reputation, he thought, if it weren't for the Kyubi I'd try and take him for my next body. Oh well. At least I got the Uchiha with my mark. I wonder if I could get my hands on that sword of his. Later. Naruto sat next to Sakura as the watched Sasuke sleep. The boy had been out cold ever since that snake Sanin bit him and the two were starting to get worried for their teammate. Sure the guy was a complete and total pain in the butt, but he was still their teammate. Like it or not. The two watched him for a while until they actually fell asleep. After a while they woke up again and were happy to see that their friend was still okay and that they weren't being attacked. At this time Naruto decided to ask about what happened with his sword in the fight with the snake Sanin. Hey you guys, Naruto thought, do you have any idea as to what happened to my swords? When we made your swords kid we made them sentient, Kayubi said, as a result both swords have a second form. A true form if you will. You unlocked my sword's true form in the fight with that corrupted soul, Elion said, the sword's true form will have a special power, but I'm not sure what it is. Meanwhile just at the edge of the clearing team 7 was in 3 gen and watched them. One of them had his head completely wrapped up in bandages showing only one eye. He wore a long sleeved purple shirt that went way over his hands. The second was tall with a yellow shirt and spiky black hair. The third, who was the only girl, had long black hair, 
a gray shirt, and camouflage pants. All three of them wore a headband that had the picture of a musical note. So that's them huh? The one with spiky hair, Zaku, said, they don't look so tough. Don't let that fool you, the bandaged one, Dosu, said, we still have to fight that silver dragon guy and that red head. Look at her, the girl, Kin, said to her teammate, she's probably a fangirl. I don't recall asking your opinion, Dosu said glaring at her with his one visible eye. Kin glared at the back of her teammate's head, since she was a girl she was looked down on by her teammates. At times she wished that her friend Tuyuya was with her. She was brought out of her thoughts when she noticed Naruto looking at them from their hiding spot. They didn't know it, but Naruto had sensed them due to the fact that he could smell them. In other words he had the sneaking feeling they were being watched and focused chakra into his nose. He quickly picked up their scent. It was hard since Zaku used a lot of hair gel. I mean how can a person get their hair to stick up like that without hair gel? The blonde then rose up and called out, stop hiding like cowards and come out. Sakura rose up as she heard that. That was when the team from sound came out of the shadows. So what do you guys want? Naruto asked as he took out Dragon Claw. Wake up Sasuke, Dosu said, we want to fight him. Sorry mummy man, Naruto said pointing his sword at him, if you want to fight him, you need to get through me and Sakura. Oh I'm scared, Zaku taunted, we have to fight a dumb blonde and a red-headed fangirl. Oh I'm shaking in my sandals. You will be hair boy, Naruto growled as he got into a sword stance. Zaku growled. He then charged at the blonde who in turn charged. The two were about to clash when Naruto swung Dragon Claw. Zaku ducked the shot and threw out a punch. Naruto caught it and then swung out a kick that hit Zaku in the chest. Sakura charged forward and started fighting with Dosu. The mummified boy threw out a right hook that Sakura was pretty quick to dodge. The girl then sent out a quick kick to Dosu's legs to try and knock him down. The mummified Genin jumped over the attack, but he was left vulnerable in mid-air and Sakura sent a quick haymaker to the boy's stomach sending him rolling. Sakura was then attacked by Kin. The black-haired Kunoichi swung a right hook which Sakura caught. Kin threw another punch which Sakura caught and then the two stood at a standoff. Glad to see that there's a Kunoichi that actually takes this job seriously. Kin said as she tried to gain the upper hand. Yeah, Sakura said, and I used to be a fangirl. Really? Kin asked surprised. When your crush spits on the supposed grave of someone who saves your life you tend to lose interest, Sakura stated before bringing her knee up and nailing Kin in the stomach making her double over. Sakura then focused her earth chakra into her hand and sent Kin flying with a wicked punch to the face with a resounding crack. Naruto and Zaku looked away to see Kin get sent flying into a tree. Dang, Zaku said, your friend sure knows how to throw a punch. While making his observation Zaku made one of the biggest mistakes a ninja can make. He took his eyes off his opponent. Naruto took advantage of this moment and ran forward swinging Dragon Claw. Zaku reacted too late and got a slash mark across the chest. The sound Genin screamed as the blade tore through his flesh. Though it looked bad it wasn't deep enough to cause damage. You little punk. Zaku growled as he lifted up his hands aiming his palms at Naruto. It was then that Naruto noticed that he had vents on his hands. Slicing sound wave. A huge blast of air shot out of Zaku's hands and at Naruto. The blonde was so shocked that he didn't have time to react and was blasted into the hollow tree that Sasuke was sleeping in. Got him, Zaku said with a smirk. Meanwhile Sakura was fighting Dosu again. The redhead was dodging the mummified man's punches. After a lot of failed attempts Dosu rolled up his sleeves revealing a large metal brace on his arm that had a lot of holes in it. It was at that moment that Naruto was blown into the tree. Naruto. She cried. Dosu took advantage and charged at her. Sakura blocked the incoming punch. Afterwards though she felt woozy. What was that? Sakura asked as she tried to regain her balance. My sound bracer, Dosu said with a smirk behind his bandages, my bracer allows me to intensify impacts turning them into a wave of sound. A wave I can manipulate with my chakra to attack certain parts of the ear that can affect a person's senses. Dosu was about to hit Sakura when he realized something, he couldn't move. It was then that Sakura noticed Shikimaru was standing there with his shadow extended and connected to Dosu's. Shadow possession jutsu complete, 
Shikimaru said with a smirk. At that moment Choji and Ino came out of the underbrush. What took you guys so long to come out and help? Sakur asked. You knew we were there? Ino asked surprised. Naruto could smell your perfume and Choji's chips, Sakura deadpanned. He could? Ino asked, I thought he was the dead last? He's improved Ino, Sakura said, or did you forget about what you heard about the incident in Wave? The fight would have continued, but Rock Lee showed up along with Ten Ten and Neji. These guys are popping up like roaches, Dosu said. Who cares how many of them there are? Zaku growled, let's just blow these guys halfway to Iwa. Zaku pointed his arms out and was about to blow them away when they all felt a large amount of killing intent. Everyone turned to see Sasuke rising up from his spot in the hollow tree. His body was covered in strange markings and he had an aura of purple chakra. You started a fight, Sasuke said, and didn't invite me. How rude. All right pal, Zaku said aiming his arm cannons, you want to join the party? Let's go. Zaku. Wait. Dosu yelled to his teammate, but it was too late. Slicing sound wave. Zaku sent a huge blast of air that kicked up a wag blast of dust and dirt when it hit. Blew him away, Zaku said with a smirk. Blew who away? Asked a voice behind him. Zaku spun around to see Sasuke who had a smirk on his face. Zaku was about to fire off another sound wave when Sasuke punched him in the face easily knocking him to the ground. Sasuke then flipped Zaku on his back. Sasuke placed his foot between Zaku's shoulder blades and pulled his arms back. You seem pretty proud of these arms, Sasuke said with a sadistic gleam in his eyes. What are you do ah? Zaku let out a piercing scream as his arm were pulled back. There was a loud sickening crunch as both of his limbs were pulled out of their sockets. The others stood horrified at what Sasuke had just down. The Uchiha though never lost his smirk as he did it. He then dropped Zaku's limp and pained body to the ground. So, Sasuke said, Who's next? Orochimaru sama, Dosu thought, gave him a curse mark. Why would he send us after him then? With that strength we would be as good as dead. Is that it? Does he only see us as cannon fodder? Sasuke was about to run at Dosu, but he was stopped when he felt a large amount of killing intent. The young Uchiha spun around to see Naruto, whose jacket and shirt were now ruined rising up from the ground where Zaku had blasted him. As he rose red chakra began to radiate from him. The blonde let out an animalistic growl. His nails lengthened into claws and his whisker marks became darker making them more visible from a distance. His hair even seemed to become more wild. The blonde then opened his eyes to show that the normally cobalt blue eyes that he had were now crimson with black vertical slits for pupils. So that is it, Lee said as he saw Naruto's features change. What do you mean Lee? Ten Ten asked. When I first met Naruto he was in a fight with an Inazuka, Lee explained. At that time his features were more animal-like. Much like the state he is in no. It explains why he was fighting the Inazuka for dominance. Lee started to get tears in his eyes and said, It is amazing. Naruto's flames of youth are so strong that he is able to form a youthful beast. It is a true inspiration. Everyone heard that and looked at Lee strangely though they did admit that it was impressive, despite that though the bloodlust from the chakra coupled with Naruto's killing intent was quite unnerving. Sasuke looked shocked, but that faded. So you're able to use something different than the chakra on the bridge, Sasuke said, it doesn't matter. With this power, I'm invincible. Naruto's response was to just frown and then disappear from sight. The next thing everyone knew Sasuke was doubled over and was then sent flying to a tree with a loud crunch. Sasuke fell to the ground unconscious. Naruto then shifted his gaze to Dosu. Either you hand over your scroll, Naruto growled, or I'll suck the marrow from your bones. Dosu gulped loudly and then took out a heaven scroll. He then picked up his fallen teammates and ran off into the forest. As soon as they were gone Naruto turned back to normal. As soon as he did he was approached by Lee who was crying. Naruto. He yelled, you are truly a youthful ninja. For your FG lames of youth to be so strong that your chakra is visible. I am so proud to call you my comrade. Uh, was Naruto's response. Don't worry he's always like that, Ten Ten said. Yeah, Naruto said, before this goes any further, do you guys have the scrolls you need or are we still in trouble? You are lucky Uzumaki, Neji said, fate gave me the scroll my team needed to pass. 
Oh no, Naruto said, not another emo. We have enough problems with Sasuke being like that. Everyone except Sasuke, who's still out cold, chuckled a bit. Neji didn't laugh because he didn't usually socialize with commoners. Okay since we all have the scrolls we need, Sakura said, I guess we should all head to the tower together. But which way is the tower? Ino asked. Naruto pointed over Ino's shoulder. The platinum blonde looked over her shoulder to see a giant neon sign that said, The tower is this way dummies. Everyone stared at the sign with dropped jaws in total silence until Ino broke the silence by saying, How in the hell did we miss that? I asked the same question, Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulders, My guess is whoever was supposed to take these down didn't do their job. Oh well. Before we leave though, there is one thing we must solve. And what exactly might that be? Choji asked. Which one of us is going to have to carry King Emo over here? Naruto asked. At that everyone face faulted. Omake. Reaction to Orochimaru Verizon 2. Team 7 were currently fighting the strange Kusa girl when Naruto realized something. Don't bother hiding anymore, Naruto growled, I know who you are. Really? The KUSA ninja asked with a raised eyebrow. Yes, Naruto said, you, are a crazed fangirl come to kidnap and rape Sasuke. The disguised Orochimaru paused as he heard that. Come on Sakura, Naruto said, we must defend Sasuke's innocence. Well what innocence he has left from being an emo anyway. What are you talking about? The disguised snake Sanin asked. Oh come on, Naruto said, don't pretend you don't know, tons of fangirls have broken into the Uchiha compound with the desire to take Sasuke and have his babies. It's no surprise that one has infiltrated the Chunin exams with that same purpose. Orochimaru blinked once, twice, three times before saying, are all the girls in the village completely and utterly insane? I should know, Sakura said with a look of embarrassment on her face, I used to be one of them. The Konoha 12 and the unconscious Sasuke arrived at tower. Once they walked inside they were greeted by the sight of a large room with banisters on each side, four large screens and a statue that depicted two hands forming a hand sign. So this is it, Sakura said, now what do we do? Naruto thought for a second, then he took out both scrolls and then opened them both. Naruto what are you doing? Sakura yelled. Smoke bean pouring out of the scrolls. The blonde hastily threw them to the ground and there was a huge plume of smoke. When it faded it revealed a tan man in a chunin vest with a scar across his nose. Aruka sensei Naruto yelled. Glad to see you guys made it this far, the scarred man with a slight grin. At that moment the other teams repeated the process and multiple plumes of smoke exploded into the room. When they faded they revealed Kuranai Yuhi, Asuma Sortobi, and Might Guy. Yash! Guy yelled, it is most youthful that you were able to pass the second part of the exam so quickly. The flames of your youth burn bright. Everyone winced at the volume of the outburst especially Kiba and Naruto who had really sharp hearing. Hey Big Green, Naruto said as he picked out his ear, could you keep it down? I have really sharp hearing. Guy looked at the blonde and said, but that would dampen my flames of youth. Naruto was about to walk away when he was struck with inspiration. Yes, Naruto said, but it dampens them further when you deafen your comrades. Guy gasped and yelled, you're a ham. You are right my youthful friend. The John and all looked at Naruto in shock. Asuma broke the silence and asked, how did you do that? Naruto grinned and whispered, he is obviously passionate about those flames of youth he keeps going on about. Use that against him. All the Jonin, except Guy because he left to go quietly rant about youth, and Uruka were all slack jawed and thought, I can't believe we never thought of that. After that, everyone left to go relax. How many do you think made it through? Shikimaru asked out of the blue. I don't know, Choji answered. From what I guess, we may end up having to fight in preliminary rounds, and there are too many left, Naruto said. Everyone looked at him, and Shikimaru said, this just got a lot more troublesome. For once everyone actually agreed with him. With that the teams headed for their rooms. As they left though Ino grabbed Sakura and pulled her to the side. Okay spill forehead, Ino said crossing her arms, why is it you aren't all over Sasuke, oh and I saw your roots how are you a redhead? Sakura grinned before answering, it stated before the exam on our first C rank mission. As it turns out the client, Tazuna lied about the mission rank. 
we were attacked by some really powerful ninja one of which was named Zabuza Momochi. At that Eno put on a thoughtful face, where have I heard that name? Oh he's that guy who usually walks around with a huge sword on his back, Sakura answered making the platinum blonde's eyes widen. Anyway, Sakura continued, when Zabuza attacked he tried to kill me using that huge sword of his. Naruto pushed me out of the way saving my neck. Unfortunately he took the full brunt of the sword and wound up with a huge gash on his chest. Ino gasped. Somehow though Naruto survived and healed, which is how he's changed in certain ways, Sakura continued. Anyway, when Naruto was dying Sasuke called him an idiot for throwing away his life for a piece of cannon fodder, or something like that. When Sakura said that a deep scowl spread across Ino's face. Why did we chase that emo son of a beep? Ino covered her mouth at that sound covered her word. The two looked around until they saw someone. Said kid happened to Konohamaru who was holding a button. Yes. The boy yelled. Udon's beeper works. Now I can finally mess with Aruka sensei whenever he does those boring lectures. At that moment said sensei appeared and lifted the young Serutobi up by his scarf. Sorry about that, he said to Ino and Sakura he tends to sneak out of class. The two vanished via Shushin leaving a surprised Ino and Sakura. Well that was off my radar, Ino said, ditto, her redheaded friend said. The next day, everyone was gathered in the main chamber in the tower. Naruto looked around and saw that the Tam from Suna had showed up along with Kabuto and his teammates. He saw the sound team glaring at him. Well Dosu was glaring at him, Kin was glaring at Sakura, and Zaku who had his arms in slings, was glaring at Sasuke. Congratulation to all those who made it, Ibiki said, the Hokage would normally be doing this, but since he is busy, and I lost the coin toss I'll be filling in for him. A few people snickered as they heard that. Now then, Ibiki said, since there are so many left we'll be having some preliminary rounds. Anyone who wants to back out may feel free to do so. Kabuto raised his hand and drew out. Naruto noticed a nearly undetectable twitch of Ibiki's hand. With Kabuto as he was leaving, Kabuto was smirking as he left the tower. Then he felt something hit him in the back of the neck and his world went black. Back inside, now if there are no more interruptions, the scarred man said, we'll begin the preliminary rounds. Someone bring out the really big screen. A large screen rolled out of the wall. The contestants will be picked at random, Ibiki explained. Those that aren't picked will go up to the banister. Understood? Good. The screen then started shuffling through multiple names. The first match was Sasuke against one of Kabuto's teammates. The match was decisively short. Sasuke ran in swinging and found that his opponent was able to drain his opponent could drain his chakra from contact. Sasuke came close to using the power of his curse mark, but managed to resist. Sasuke then beat his opponent with a taijutsu move that he copied from Rock Lee, much to said boy and his sensei's anger. Sasuke was taken away to have his curse mark sealed up. The next match featured Kin from the sound team fighting Shikimaru. The sound Kunoichi used Senbon with bells attached to disorient the young Nara. Fortunately Shikimaru was able to sneak his shadow possession jutsu over to her by discreetly sending it underneath the ninja wire she had connected to the bells on the Senbon. With her possessed Shikimaru took a shuriken out of his weapons pouch and threw it. Both of them ducked, but Kin, who was closest to the wall, hit her head and was knocked unconscious. Shikimaru was claimed the victor by knockout. The next match was Ten Ten versus Tamari. Ten Ten launched multiple weapons at Tamari, but they were all deflected by the Suna girl's wind attacks. Ten Ten decided to bust out on her strongest moves, the twin rising dragons. The girl took out two scrolls and unsealed a whole lot of weapons. She manipulated each with ninja wire and sent them flying at Tamari. The blonde simply opened her and used her wind scythe jutsu. All the weapons were deflected and Ten Ten was hit with a gust of wind that left a lot of gashes on her body. As the body of the Konoha Kunoichi fell Tamari was going to let her land on her fan, but saw that her just you had lodged a kanai in her back. Seeing as she didn't want to cripple her she just caught her and handed her to the medics. The next match was Kankoro against Kabuto's other teammate. Kabuto's teammate revealed that he was able to dislocate his joints to make himself more flexible. He threatened Kankoro that if he didn't forfeit he would snap his neck. Kankoro obviously refused. Kankoro's opponent then snapped his neck. 
or at least everyone thought he did until he was grabbed by multiple wooden arms. The pack on Kankoro's back then unraveled to reveal the real Kankoro who was controlling the puppet that Kabuto's teammate had grabbed. Kankoro then turned the tables and made the same threat. The boy refused and then had his neck snapped. The recently made corpse was then taken away. The next match was Sakura versus Ino. This one was interesting. As they made their way down to the arena, the two looked at each other seriously. I understand why you gave up Sasuke, Ino said, but just because we don't go after him anymore doesn't mean that I'm going to go easy on you forehead. Sakura smirked and said, I wouldn't have it any other way, pig. The two girls then launched themselves at each other. Ino let loose a sloppy punch that Sakura was quick to dodge before she unleashed a vicious right hook. Ino was sent reeling with the blow. The platinum blonde then doubled over due to Sakura's knee getting slammed into her gut. The redhead then lifted Ino off the ground and then threw her like a rag doll. Is that all you got, little piggy? Sakura taunted. You wish, Ino said as she went through hand signs. Mind transfer jutsu. Ino's body fell limp on the ground and Sakura's eyes widened and she clutched her head. In Sakura's mind, Ino grinned as she stood in Sakura's mind. Easy as pie, Ino said. All I have to do is get Sakura to forfeit and I'm good to go. Ino looked around and saw what looked like a control panel. She grinned and approached it, but as she reached out for it a strong grip found itself around her wrist. She looked shocked to see Sakura standing over to her side with her wrist in an iron grip. Get out of my head, Sakura growled. Then a large pure white version of Sakura with the word inner on her forehead appeared and yelled, Yeah, beat it piggy. The regular Sakura then unleashed a vicious uppercut that knocked the platinum blonde straight out of her mind. In the real world, Ino shot up from the ground while Sakura stopped clutching her head. The redhead then glared at her rival and charged. Ino tried to stop her, but wound up getting a haymaker to the face and a few broken teeth. The platinum blonde sank to the ground out cold. Glad to see your student has moved on, Kuranai said to Kakashi as the proctor proclaimed Sakura the winner. The silver-haired Jonan nodded and said, Yeah, I'm glad too. She's much less of a headache since she isn't screaming about Sasuke every 20 minutes. Sakura, who had just joined the two, growled, I had that sensei. The board shuffled through names until it landed on Kiba Inazuka and Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Naruto grinned and jumped down to the arena. All right let's go kick some ass. Kiba yelled, but stopped when Akamaru wouldn't budge. What are you waiting for Akamaru? The dog user asked. Akamaru barked an answer. What do you mean you don't want to fight? Naruto was growing impatient and yelled, Hey dog breath, are you coming down or not? Kiba turned to Naruto and yelled, Give me a minute. After a few minutes of arguing Kiba came down alone. Akamaru was currently up in the stands in Kuranai's arms. I guess your master was smart, Naruto said with a smirk. Don't get too cocky, Kiba said, I'm going to beat you and reclaim my title as Alpha. Then I plan on making Hinata mine. Naruto scoffed and said, Yeah right dog boy, I highly doubt she's even into you. Kiba snarled, So what she'll be mine even if she doesn't want to. As soon as he said that there was a great deal of killing intent from every woman in the arena. Even Ten Ten and Ino, who were in the medical bay, were unleashing a little killing intent along with the nurses. Kiba, Naruto said, I think it's time someone shut your mouth up. The blonde then vanished in a sudden blur and reappeared in front of Kiba nailing the dog use in the face. Kiba was sent rolling and landed on his back. Naruto appeared in front of him and stomped down on his stomach. Kiba yelled out in pain. The blonde then grabbed Kiba's leg and then threw him into the arena wall. Kiba groaned in pain and fell to his knees. Kiba, Naruto growled. I suggest you drop the whole belief that women are merely objects. If you don't you are going to wind up getting hurt, and by that I mean you're going to get castrated. Kiba spat up some blood and said, who cares, all women are pretty much good for his labor and for a man's pleasure. Naruto shook his head and said, idiot. The blonde then took a deep breath and let out a loud roar. The sonic waves sent Kiba flying like a rag doll into the wall. Naruto was proclaimed the victor since Kiba couldn't move. I'll get you dead last, Kiba spat. Naruto just grinned at him and said, I'd worry less about me and more about you. Kiba was about to question him when the ground started shaking. 
Then out of the doors to the entrance of the tower burst Sume Inazuka and Hana Inazuka both of which looked really mad. The two then marched up, grabbed Kiba and dragged him away screaming. I almost feel sorry for the guy, Naruto said. The rest of the matches went without much incident, well not really. The first match was uneventful with Shino fighting Zaku. Zaku revealed he could use one and fired off one of his cannons. Shino used his Kikai Hive to surround the two with bugs. Zaku then revealed he could use both arms. Unfortunately for him Shino planned ahead and plugged up both cannon causing both of his arms to explode. Gross. The next match was between Hinata Hayuga and Neji Hayuga. The two used their Jiyuken style to fight each other. And Neji almost killed Hinata by striking her heart. Luckily the boy was frozen from Naruto's killing intent. Hinata was rushed off to the medics. Naruto glared at the smug looking Hayuga and made a mental note to beat him into a coma. The next match was between Rock Lee and Gara. Lee had trouble getting through Gara's sand until he took off high weights. He punched Gara around and used the primary lotus to finish him off, but Gara replaced himself with a sand clone. Lee then started opening some of the chakra gates in his body and started fighting again. After another round of beatings, Lee used the hidden lotus to try and knock Gara out, but the Suna boy survived. Then, using his sand, he crushed Lee's arm and leg. He would have done more but Guy interfered. The final match was between Choji and Dosu. Choji tried to take him out with his human boulder technique, but missed and crashed into a wall. Dosu then used his melody arm to knock him out with a sonic blast. After that all the finalists were in the arena where they were given the final matchups. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze vs Neji Hayuga Sasuke Uchiha vs Subaku no Gara. Shino Aburame vs Kankoro Shikimaru Nara vs Tamari. Dosu Kinuda vs Sakura Haruno. All right, maggots, Ibiki said, you have one month to prepare for the finals. Learn some new stuff and make your villages proud. To those who didn't make it, try again next time. With that, everybody left. Naruto headed home with Sakura so they could start training for the finals. As he left, Naruto smirked as he looked forward to the months to come. Meanwhile at INT headquarters, tell me already Gaki, Anko said as she twirled her kanai. In the chair in front of her under a single light was a beaten and bloody Kabuto Yakushi. I'm not telling you anything you psycho, Kabuto said defiantly. Anko chuckled and said, oh you will, I have all night. Kabuto's screams echoed throughout the tower. Meanwhile at the Anukua complex. What the hell was that I heard earlier? Sume asked her son. I believe it was women are only good for labor and a man's pleasure. Kiba just stared at his mother and said, Yeah, I mean what else are they good for? He was met by a strong slap to the face from Sume. I'm very disappointed in you Kiba, Sume said as she shook her head, I knew I shouldn't have let your uncle train you. It was no small fact that Kiba's uncle Kuro Inazuka was a sexist. It was that fact that made him keep his distance from some women. Since you think that women are weak, Sume said with a smirk, let's see how you manage being one. Kiba raised an eyebrow as his sister approached him with a syringe in one hand. This, Hannah said motioning to the needle, is something special mom made a few years back. This is a special formula that will turn any male into a female. The effects will only last about a month and a half, but you'll have to experience all the things women deal with, including the time of the month. Kiba's eyes widened. He tried to run. But his mother grabbed him in a bear hug and held him still while Hannah injected the serum into his neck. Kiba fell to the ground writhing and his figure started to change. Soon in his place stood a younger version of Sume. Welcome to womanhood Kiba-chan, Hannah said with a smirk Nerud and Sakura walked through the front door of the Namikaze complex and were surprised to find no one was there. Hello? Naruto called. Mom? Dad? Anybody? Sakura went into the kitchen to see if she could find anything that would help them learn about the whereabouts of Naruto's parents. It was at that moment she found a note taped to the refrigerator. Hey Naruto I found something, the former pink haired girl called out. Naruto walked into the kitchen to see the note Sakura had. It read. Dear Naruto and Sakura, sorry if we aren't home right now, but we just found out your so called godfather is in the village and we decided it would be nice if we paid him a visit. In case we don't get home before dinner there is some chicken in the icebox and leftovers in the fridge. Love, Mom, Kashina and Dad, Minato. 
Naruto looked at Sakura as they finished reading the note and said, What do you think they need to talk to my godfather about? Sakura shrugged and answered, I don't know, but I have a feeling your godfather is going to be in a lot of pain. Meanwhile at the hot springs, an old man with long white hair and a helmet thing with the kanji for oil on it was currently peeping through a small hole in the girl's side of the hot spring. Yes girl, the man giggled perversely, come on, come on, show Jiraiya what you go. The man was so caught up in his peeping that he never noticed two figures coming up behind him. That is until the was grabbed by the hair and ripped from the spot and thrown away from the wall. Jiraiya growled as his research, peeking, had been interrupted by two unknown assailants. You! The man yelled as he rose up, how dare you stop the great, Jiraiya, Sama. The man's words died on his lips as he saw a very angry Minato and an even more pissed off Kashina. Yipe! Minato cracked his knuckles and said, pervy sage, you have a lot to answer for. Jiraiya gulped loudly and said, what, what do you mean? Kashina marched up to the man and punched him in the stomach making him double over in pain. You know very well what, she yelled, why did you leave Naruto here all alone? Jiraiya groaned and said, I had to maintain my spy network, I could just. He was cut off when he was kicked in the face by Minato. You could have taken him with you, the blonde roared in anger, instead you basically just left him for the wolves. Jiraiya started to shake as he knew that tone. It was the same tone Minato spoke in when he caught Jiraiya peeping on him and Kashina on one of their dates. You wouldn't hurt an innocent old man? Jiraiya asked afraid, would you? Minato cracked his knuckles and said, an innocent old man, no, of course not. Now a miserable old pervert who spends most of his time peeping in the hot springs, abandoned our boy, writes a seriously perverted book, and peeped on our honeymoon and put it in said book, that is someone we would hurt. Kashina nodded before something her husband said clicked. He peeped on our honeymoon. Kashina then started radiating killing intent and grabbed Jiraiya by the throat. For the next 10 minutes you could hear Jiraiya's girly screams of pain, and the sound of breaking bones. By the time the two parents were done Jiraiya was bleeding bruised and on the ground in incredible agony. Minato looked at Kashina and said, was it really necessary to use his crotch for stomping practice? Kashina looked at her husband and said, would you have preferred that I used you for stomping practice? Minato paled and said, No thanks. Now then. Minato then grabbed Jiraiya by the neck and then threw him over the wall of the women's side of the hot spring. A few seconds later. Eep. Pervert. The sound of a one sided fight and even more breaking bones sounded off through the air. Minato and Kashina both smirked at each other. Minato put an arm around his wife's waist and said, I love it when you get all evil with that guy. Kashina giggled and snuggled into her husband's arms as they left grinning wider as the sound of Jiraiya's girly screams of pain filled the air. As the two arrived home they were approached by Naruto who asked, did you two have anything to do with the really loud girly shrieks that we both heard earlier? The smiles on their faces told them both the whole story. As the four people sat down for dinner Naruto asked, so I have a whole month to train for the finals. What are we going to do until then? Well, Kashina said, since the both of you will be training for the finals I'll train Sakura and Minato here will train you Sochi. Naruto smiled and said, sweet, when do we start? Minato swallowed he food in his mouth and said, tomorrow. Naruto looked at the man and said, why wait until tomorrow? Minato looked at his son and said, because that's how long it's going to take your so-called godfather to heal. Kashina looked at her husband with a raised eyebrow and asked, you want that old lecher to train Naruto? Minato answered, no but if he does come by I'll hold him still so Naruto here can get a few shots in. Naruto nodded and finished his meal and asked, hey uh, do you mind I have head to the hospital? There's someone I want to see. Minato nodded and said, just be safe okay, the last thing we need is another incident. Naruto smiled thankfully as he got up and left the house. It looks like he finally noticed the Hyuga girl, Kashina said. It's about time, Sakura said with a smile. At the hospital Naruto approached the front of the hospital he heard the annoying sound of girls swooning. He rolled his silver lined eyes. He finally realized why Sasuke never gave fangirls the time of day. They were really annoying. And they took the slightest acknowledgement as a declaration of love. It really wore on your nerves after a couple of weeks. Naruto walked up to the front desk and said, excuse me, 
Where is Hinata Hayuga's room? The receptionist played with her computer for a second and said, She's on the third floor, room 38. Naruto nodded his thanks and went to the elevator. He waited for a few seconds before the elevator stopped at the second floor. As Naruto made his way to the room, he noticed something in the room. He opened the door to see Hinata lying asleep in the bed. Next to her was her father, Hiyashi Hayuga. What shocked Naruto was that the man was visibly upset. Naruto had only seen the man in the council chambers and he seemed stoic so the angry scowl on his face was something that looked very much out of place. Lord Hayuga? Naruto asked as he entered the room. The Hayuga patriarch rose up and sighed heavily. Hello Naruto, he said a mix of anger and sorrow in his voice. Is something wrong? The blonde asked. Clearly yes, the man said. The Hayuga council wants to brand Hinata with the caged bird seal because she lost to Neji. On top of that they want to marry her off to some daimyo's son in some other country. The problem is the son is cruel and has a habit of forcing people into doing things they don't want to, especially women. Naruto let out a low snarl. He clenched his fists and his silver-lined eyes flashed red for a brief second. The father and blonde were brought out of their respectfully sorrowful and angry thoughts when the heart monitor started to rapidly beep. The nurse who was watching Hinata ran into the room when she heard the beeping. She's going into cardiac arrest, she yelled. Much to Naruto and Hiyashi's dismay the nurse was actually just in training. She knew what happened in cardiac arrest, but she had never actually had to deal with it. She said something about finding a doctor and ran out of the room. Leaving a fearful Hiyashi and a fear-stricken Naruto. Neither of them had any medical training. What were they going to do? Hatchling, the dragon said in his head, I know a way you can save your mate. Naruto thought, how? And she isn't my mate, Naruto felt the dragon roll his eyes and said, whatever just do as I tell you. Naruto ran up to Hinata's side. His eyes flashed gold as he focused Elyon's chakra and performed a single hand sign. Dragon style. Dragon heart. Naruto held out his hand as the silver chakra formed a beating human heart. Naruto then placed it on Hinata's chest and pushed it inside. Hintada shook for a moment in the hospital bed before she finally stopped. Her heartbeat returned to normal and she stated to breath easy. Both Naruto and Hiyashi breathed a sigh of relief. While they relaxed Naruto was suddenly hit by inspiration. Hiyashi Dono, Naruto said, I think I know a way that I can save your daughter. The elder Hayuga immediately picked up the boy by the front of his jacket and yelled, Tell me now. People who lived in Konoha long enough wouldn't have believed that the yell had come from the normally calm and stoic Hiyashi Hayuga. Naruto got himself out of the man's grip and said, I'm fighting Neji in the finals. Why don't we make a bet with them over who wins? If I win they have to drop what they want to do. If I lose they can marry her off. Hiyashi looked at the blonde with furious eyes that only a father could have and said, You had better win boy, otherwise your last minutes on this earth are going to be very painful. Naruto nodded with a look of fear evident on his face. Now then, Hiyashi said, I'm going to have a word with the head of the hospital about who he hires around here. Naruto knew immediately not to get in the elder man's way. So as soon as he left the room Naruto did so, but went in the opposite direction. As they left neither of them noticed a slight silver glow come across Hinata's sleeping form. Later at the Namikaze complex, Naruto panted as he crashed through the front door of his house. His father looked at his son like he was crazy and said, what happened to you? Naruto breathed loudly and said, I don't think the civilian council is done trying to get power. The older blonde let out a loud groan of annoyance and asked, what are those little cockroaches up to now? Naruto took a calming breath and said, a bunch of civilian girls cornered me after I left the hospital. They said that they were sent as, apologies, from certain council members. Apparently they want to try and get the family genes so they can try and become powerful again. Minato slapped his forehead and said, those stupid vultures just don't seem to want to give up. Naruto hung his head in annoyance. Naruto then looked up at his father and said, where's mom? The older blonde shrugged and said, she took Sakura out for training. You know I have to ask, what is Sasuke going to do for training? Kakashi can't teach him anything anymore since he lost his Sharingan and the fact that he has no interest in giving that brat any more power than he already has. Naruto simply shrugged and said, I don't think it's something that we have to worry about pops. If we're lucky Gara will splatter him all over the walls. 
Minato looked at his son and said, I'm not sure if I should join you in thinking that, or get you a therapist for some hidden hostility. Naruto chuckled and said, so are we going to start training or not? Meanwhile at the mostly empty Uchiha complex, Sasuke growled as he slammed the door shut behind him, he had gone to Kasha for training, and the man had turned him down, ever since the wave mission Kakashi had turned against him, how was he supposed to be able to kill Itachi if he couldn't get someone to train him? As Sasuke cooled down from his mental ran he noticed something on the table, it was large scroll. The Uchiha made his way over to the scroll, he opened it and out popped an assortment of scrolls. The Uchiha smirked as he saw multiple jutsu scrolls among them. Inside was a note that said, prove your strength to me, then we'll talk about training. Underneath the words was the picture of a snake. Sasuke smirked as he picked up the first scroll. Meanwhile at the Nara complex, do I have to? The young Nara asked in a complaining voice. Yes you do. The voice of his mother Yoshino Nara said, you will start training for the finals right now. The Nara groaned and said, what a drag, he was then picked up by his mother and dragged off. Meanwhile in some apartment, shouldn't you be coming up with some strategy? Kankoro asked Tamari. The wind mistress huffed and said, I won't need one to beat that lazy punk. Gara's eyes simply twitched in annoyance as he heard his siblings argue. In some other apartment, Dosu glared out of the window deep in thought. I have a chance to prove myself and I have to go against some pink-haired little witch, he mentally growled, I'll prove myself Orochimaru, I'll prove I'm more than just a pawn. Meanwhile at some random training ground, Sakura panted as she her knees buckled beneath her, she looked up at Kashina who had a smug look on her face. Come on Sakura-chan, the redhead said, we haven't even finished with the warm-up yet. Sakura groaned and panted, you're forget sensei, I'm not an Uzumaki, so I'm, not, a stamina freak, like everyone else in your clan. Kashina gave a sickly sweet smile and said, that's no excuse for it. The pink haired girl looked at her teacher and said, this is punishment for being mean to Naruto for all those years isn't it? Kashina smirked and said, maybe. Cut, okay sorry for this one being short people. Okay Hinata is going to go through changes, Naruto and the others are about to start training, and Sakura is being punished for her treatment of Naruto. Okay Naruto will be learning new skills as will Sakura and I'm basically not going into details about their training. However there will be a cool entrance like in the original. Okay next time the finals begin. Omake. Naruto meet Jiraiya. Naruto sighed in relief. He had just lost those stalker fangirls from before and was breathing easy when he heard perverted giggling. He looked around and saw a white haired man over by the hot springs. Naruto glared at the man and yelled, Hey old man! Stop looking in the hot springs! Immediately killing intent flooded the air as a lot of pissed off women burst from the springs and then beat the tar out of the old man. When they were done they returned to the springs and locked the door. Naruto walked over to the downed old man and poked him with a stick. He poked half a dozen times before the man jumped up and yelled, Stop doing that you brat! And why did you have to go and ruin my research? Naruto glared at him and said, Hey, I'm not the old pervert peeping in the hot springs. The man glared at Naruto and said, I am no mere pervert boy, I am a super pervert. Killing intent. Naruto stepped back as the angry women beat the tar out of the old man again. The old man lay still then jumped up like nothing had happened. Naruto looked at the old man and questioned, what kind of research are you doing anyway? The old man grinned and said, I am a novelist. I am known as a great author from country to country. I am the writer of the great book ICHAICAH Paradise. An incredible amount of killing intent flooded the area. The women were so furious they broke down the wall. In the sussed storm Naruto decided to make the old man really hurt. He quickly transformed into a little kid who was holding a copy of the perverted novel. He pretended to look through some pages and threw it down on the ground. What kind of book is this? He asked as he asked in a childlike voice. Unfortunately for Jiraiya the women noticed and, even though some of the women were shinobi, they fell for the trick. At the front of the group was Kuranai who yelled, you, how dare you try to corrupt a young boy with this trash. The worst beating of the old man's life came next. E.H. was then put in a genshisu that made his see his worst fear of all time. What made it worse was that the top members of the APA or anti-pervert association had its top members there which consisted of Enko Midarashi. 
Hana Inazuka, Yuga Uzakai, and Sume Inazuka. The old man was submitted to the hospital with snake bites on a personal area, claw and bite marks, sword wounds, and was chanting, It's just a genjutsu, over and over again. The month for training went by very quickly. Needless to say, the pair were pretty glad when the end of the month came. The training that they had been through was insane. Kashina had basically driven Sakura into the ground while they trained. The young Kunoichi had to run multiple laps, do a great deal of push ups and other physical exercises just for a warm up. After that, the pair got down to stamina and taijutsu training. While training, Sakura learned a great deal of water jutsu, which went along well with the water affinity she woke up during the time of training. Sakura had also taken to wearing weights while training to help her. She was progressing quickly but she was only able to reach about 20 or so pounds on each leg. Naruto's training hadn't been much better, his father, who had taken the place of his godfather in his training, had him learning jutsu left and right. Naruto was able to learn some for all of the main elements, but he wasn't able to learn any for light and dark jutsu. Elion and Kayubi said that they would teach him a few of those when he became chunin. Naruto started learning the Rasengan as well. Needless to say Naruto was surprised that the powerful technique that his father had invented was incomplete. The Namikaze heir took it on himself to complete his father's work. When Naruto asked about the Hiroshin he was told he would have to wait until after he became a Jonin to learn it. While training he also learned a few jutsu from Elion called Dragon Release and Fox Release from Kayubi. He only learned two from each of them, but they were special. Currently at the arena, Naruto and Sakura stood with their fellow combatants. While the others didn't really change their looks Naruto and Sakura did. Naruto now wore a pair of black cargo pants with black sandals and a white shirt. Overt the shirt he had a trench coat that was pure white to got with his shirt. On the back it had written in gold dragon of Konoha, while in red was written, Fire Fox. The sleeves were ripped off allowing the blonde free movement of his arms and had bandages wrapped around his forearms to hide his tattoos and finished off the look with some black gloves that had the kanji for impact in blue on the top near the knuckles. Sakura now wore a red shirt with a some black biker shorts, she had on a pair of black sandals and bandages wrapped around her forearms and shins. The shirt had Hawk's Fury written in black on the back of the shirt and a pair of fingerless gloves on her hands that had metal studs for added effect. Around them were Neji, Dosu, Gara, Shikimaru, Tamari, Shino, and Kankuro. Sasuke was nowhere to be seen and neither was Kakashi. Spectators came from all over the village to watch the fight, most of which were there to see the Namikaze fight while others, more specifically Naruto haters, since he still had some, came to see the Uchiha fight. In the cage box the case cage joined Minato. Over the month Kabuto finally broke and spilled every last detail of the mission to the interrogators thanks to the efforts of both Anko and Ibiki. Sound and Sand were going to attack Konoha. The attack would be signaled by a genjutsu falling over the arena. Sasuke is probably betting that his status as an Uchiha will allow him to show up late and still fight, Naruto thought, I really doubt that that is going to fly. Okay kiddies, a man chewing on a senbon said as he made his presence known, my name is Genma. Now then will Naruto Namikaze and Neji Hayuga stay down here while everyone else goes up for their match? The other contestants left while Naruto and Neji stayed down in the arena. Okay the first match of the Chunin exam finals. Naruto Namikaze vs Neji Hayuga, begin. Silence. The pair stared down at each other. You should give up now boy, Neji said glaring down at Naruto. Fate has decreed that I shall be the victor. You may have gotten stronger but you were and always will be a failure. When Neji didn't hear a reply he took it as understanding G. He saw red, however, when he looked at Naruto to see him asleep while standing up. Neji glared at the boy and roared, wake up. Naruto snapped awake and said, who? What? When? Oh sorry about that. What were you saying? Neji rolled his eyes and said, I was just saying that. Wham. Neji's speech was broken off when Naruto slammed his fist into the white eyed boy's jaw. There was a slight crunch signifying that the blow had cracked a tooth or two. Neji stumbled back before having a knee slammed into his stomach and was then kicked in the head, making the boy roll across the ground. Neji rose up from the ground and looked at Naruto, who was just standing there with a bored expression on his face. Dude, I don't want to hear any of your fate controls everything speech, Naruto said, 
What are you trying to do bore everyone in the stadium to death? Just skip the annoying monologue and get to fighting already. Neji spat out some blood from his mouth before getting a Jayukan stance. Naruto got into a stance of his own to be specific the hummingbird style stance. The pair launched at each other. Neji aimed a strike at Naruto's shoulder. The blonde avoided the attack and slammed a strike into Neji's forearm. The young Hyuga cried out in pain before crying out even louder when Naruto stomped down on his foot. Neji was then doubled over, yet again, by a punch to the stomach. Naruto drew back one arm and unleashed a brutal right hook that knocked Neji off his feet and sent him rolling again. How can this be happening? Neji thought in pain as he rose up from the ground. Fate has declared me the winner in this fight. Why is this failure beating me? Neji growled his anger as his Byakugan flashed and the veins around his eyes pulsed. The boy glared at Naruto before charging. Naruto himself charged and ducked backwards to avoid a strike to the chest. Neji then sent a few more strikes that Naruto dodged. A few, however, managed to connect. Naruto gasped out as the strikes cut off his chakra before a sudden kick nailed him in the chest knocking him away. Naruto grinned and said, I have to say Neji you're better than I thought you were. Neji smirked and said, I told you before Fade declared me the winner when we were pitted against each other. Naruto shook his head and said, Fade doesn't control everything Neji. If Fate ruled the world I would be a carcass right now. Neji stared at Naruto before returning to his original stance. I don't care your reasons to defy fate, Neji said, you're within my divination. Naruto knew that term because his father had told him about some of the moves that the Hyuga used since he had plenty of fights with them before. Neji charged at Naruto with the intent of sealing off all of his chakra points. Naruto prepared himself. Got to time it just right. Naruto thought. Neji unleashed his attack. Now, Naruto caught both of Neji's hands. Everyone, especially the Hyuga clan members stared on in shock. Naruto smirked at the shocked look on the Hyuga prodigy's face. That shock turned to pain as Naruto started to apply pressure to the boy's arms. Neji fell to his knees a pained grimace on his face. I told you that I was going to make you pay for what you did to Hinata-chan, Naruto snarled, and I always keep my word. Naruto then twisted Neji's left arm to the point of breaking before unleashed a vicious roundhouse kick. Neji rolled to the side before catching himself. Naruto charged at the long-haired boy drawing back his left fist as the kanji symbol on his glove glowed a slight blue. Impact. The fist slammed into Neji's chest. The Hyuga prodigy immediately screamed in agony as the fist made contact with his chest. There was a freakishly loud crack signifying that bones had been broken in the impact. Neji stumbled back clutching his chest in agony before he fell over blacking out from the pain. Genma went over to the fallen prodigy. After checking to make sure that the boy would live he announced, winner of the first match, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The crowd roared in approval. Naruto grinned as the sounds of the people's praise reached his ears. Naruto walked up to the fighter's box where he was greeted by Sakura. Nice one Naruto, she said as she high-fived the boy. Troublesome Naruto, Shikimaru said, but way to kick that guy all around the arena. Naruto grinned and gave the boy a thumbs up. In the stands two chunin looked at each other. I have to admit that was impressive, Katetsu said, he managed to beat Neji in taijutsu which is something in itself. Azumo nodded before adding, on top of that he showed maturity by not letting his emotions get the better of him, and some sense by not revealing all of his skills at once. Back in the ring Genma announced, will Subaku no Gara and Sasuke Uchiha please come down to the arena? Gara appeared in a swirl of sand. After a few minutes Sasuke didn't show. Gara growled with his sleepy eyes narrowing as a sign of impatience. He sand in his gourd was whirling around itching to get out. After a few more minutes Genma called out, Sasuke Uchiha if you are not here in three minutes you will be disqualified. After three minutes Genma said, due to his inability to show himself Sasuke Uchiha is hereby. At that moment a huge swirl of leaves appeared in the arena. When it cleared it showed Sasuke and Kakashi, who had his nose in his book. Are we late? Kakashi asked though if one looked hard enough you could see that he was annoyed himself. Yeah, Genma answered, I was about to disqualify your student here. Now then if there are no more interruptions. Let the second match between Subaku no Gara and Sasuke Uchiha begin. 
Kakashi and Genma immediately got out of the way. Gara formed a clone out of the sand in his gourd. Sasuke smirked before vanishing from sight and the clone burst in a shower of sand. Gara's eyes widened in shock before his eyes hardened. He was just as fast as the boy he fought during the preliminaries. Up in the stands the crutch using Lee and Guy looked down at the arena in anger as they immediately recognized the style as Lee's. Lee was furious because he had worked for years on that style, and Sasuke had stolen it. Guy was angry for similar reasons. For a while it continued like Lee's fight during the preliminaries. Sasuke would attack, Gara's sand would defend, and Sasuke would attack again, this time getting through. At last Gara formed a large ball of sand around him. Sasuke tried to attack the dome, and only succeeded in hurting his knuckles. Sasuke grinned at his chance to show off and jumped backwards before he went through three hand signs. In the guy glared at Kakashi. When he did he noticed Kakashi had an angry look on his face himself. I should have known he was watching, Kakashi growled. What do you mean my eternal rival? Guy asked. Kakashi hung his head and said, while I was off training with my Chidori without my Sharingan eye. Sasuke must have copied it while I wasn't paying 8 nanograms attention, stupid. Slowly a ball of lightning formed in Sasuke's hand. The Uchiha survivor charged at the dome of chakra. The drew back his arm and unleashed the assassination technique. The attack pierced the dome, but just as it did tendrils of sand wrapped around the boy's arm and twisted. Sasuke screamed in pain as his arm was broken. The boy was then thrown away by the sand ninja. Sasuke Uchiha is unable to continue, Genma said reappearing in the arena, the winner is Subaku no Gara. Some people jeered at the match. This wasn't because of the Suna boy, it was because that a lot of people had bet on the Uchiha winning the match and had just lost a whole lot of money. Gara glared down at his fallen opponent. Normally, Gara would slaughter his opponents. This time, though, was different. He knew from his senses that the Uzumaki boy in the arena was much stronger. His mother wouldn't have to suffer the horrible taste of such unworthy blood. In the stands, Katetsu and Azumo shook their heads. Strong, yes but arrogant and stupid, Kotetsu said. I'm with you on that one, Azumo said, using an assassination technique in a match, and using when the target is clearly hidden. This guy must really think he's king of the world. Kotetsu shook his head and said, I don't think this kid is going to make Chunin any time soon unless he gets rid of the huge stick he has shoved up his butt. Moving on, Genma said, will Shino Aburame and Kankoro Subaku come down? Kankoro noticed a hidden signal from his sensei. Proctor I withdraw, the puppet user said. People jeered at the sound of the boy refusing to fight. Why did you come here if you aren't going to fight you stupid clown? Somebody yelled. Kankoro fumed at being called a clown. He kept himself mostly cool however and settled for some steam coming out of his ears. Okay since that was a complete and total letdown, GENM said as the crowd calmed down. The next match between SD Hikamaru Nara and Tamari Subaku may begin. Will the contestants get their butts down here now? Tamari floated down on her fan. Shikimaru was considering forfeiting before he was suddenly picked up by Naruto before throwing the lazy ninja over the railing and down into the arena. I hate that boy, Shalimar growled. When Shikimaru looked up, he found he had a view up of Tamari's skirt. When Tamari realized this she blushed bright red before leveling a glare at the man that would have made the Nara matriarch, Yoshino Nara, cower in fear. Pervert! She yelled. The young Nara was then sent flying by a vicious shot to the head by the iron fan that his opponent was wielding. Um, Tamari Subaku wins, Genma Siad after a few minutes of silence. People muttered to each other at the obviously one-sided fight. Now that that embarrassingly short match is over, Nima said. Let the next match between Sakura Haruno and Dosu Kinuda begin. Both competitors come down now. Dosu cracked his knuckles under his sleeves while Sakura got into a stance. Ready. Begin. The pair charged at each other. Dosu tried punching the redhead in the stomach, but Sakura actual L performed the limbo to avoid the strike and shot a leg up nailing her opponent in the chin. Dosu was sent upward before landing and rubbing his jaw. Is that all you can do punk? Sakura taunted. Dosu snarled before he slammed both of his arms together sending a powerful sound wave outward. The blast struck Sakura making her wince. In her disoriented state Dosu charged again. 
Sakura then came out of her disoriented state and slammed a powerful strike into the hunchback's stomach. The boy doubled over before he was the victim of a knee to the chin and then was slammed into the ground cracking the ground. Dosu tried to get up, but was then lifted off the ground and was thrown headfirst into the wall. A brief glow of green chakra came across her arms that was so brief only some of the jhana noticed it. Sakura then charged at the boy, who was now supporting himself on the wall from his disoriented state. Fury of the Banshee Sakura unleashed a fury of earth chakra powered punches that made loud cracks on impact. Dosu found himself being pushed deeper and deeper into the wall with more and more of his bones being broken. Finally the wall couldn't take any more of the beating and gave way. Dosu lay amongst the rubble his one visible eye wide and blank. Multiple bruises covered his face and a few blots of blood was on his clothes. Winner. Sakura Haruno. The crowd cheered finally getting another good fight. A few people cursed seeing as they were betting on the girl losing since she was known to be a fangirl in the past. Sakura grinned before she pulled out a pair of chakra enhanced earplugs out of her ears that had protected her from Dosu's sound attack. As she entered the booth she was greeted by Naruto. Sakura remind me not to get on your bad side anymore, Naruto said, by the way awesome job out there. Sakura smiled and said, thanks Naruto. In the side Gara was glaring at Naruto. He felt the power that kid actually had. He was looking forward to match. In the medical wing Sasuke watched in anger as he saw his formerly weak female teammate decimate her opponent. He became even angrier when he saw the replay of Naruto's match and the vicious beating he had given Neji. He was infuriated when his impressive, yet embarrassingly short match was shown. All right everybody, Genma announced, we'll be taking a 10 minute break before we continue. With that the contestants went to the food court to get something to eat. While the two members of Team 7 and the final member of Team 8 sat waiting for their food they were approached by the rest of a team's and smaller version of Sume. Naruto narrowed his eyes and asked, Kiba? The woman huffed. So this is the punishment you had to be put through, Naruto said with a grin. The woman huffed until she was slapped over the back of the head by Hana who appeared out of nowhere. So, Shino said managing to keep a straight face under his coat said, How many times has a pervert tried to hit on you? The female Kiba huffed and turned away when Hannah said, About 453 times, all of them by civilians. The female Kiba hung her head, Now then, Hannah said, Come on Kiba-chan, we have some stuff to take care of. With that the two left. The rest of the team stayed and started to talk about stuff. Hanada enjoyed her talking with Naruto. To his surprise she didn't blush or stutter as often around him as he did. Naruto also noticed that her normally white eyes had a bit of a silver tint to them. After the 10 minutes W were just about up the group headed back. As they did Naruto stopped Gara. Hey Sandman, Naruto said, I got a proposition for you. Gara turned to the boy and asked what could you possible have to offer me? Naruto grinned and answered, a powerful opponent who can help you prove your existence. Gara froze at that moment and asked, Who? Naruto grinned and said, During the finals most likely in our match a man named Orochimaru will try to attack the village. In case you don't know he is an S-rank criminal and one of the Sanin. Surely an S-rank ninja would be able to help you prove how powerful you are Gara. Gara grinned like a madman and said, Yes that powerful blood would prove my existence. Naruto grinned and said, Just hold off until a Jinjutsu falls around the crowd then strike. Gara normally wouldn't take too kindly to following orders, but if it meant fighting a powerful adversary then he didn't really care. After the conversation the pair went to the fighter's box. Okay people, Genma announced, the next match of the Chunin exams will now begin. Will Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze and Subaku no Gara come down to the arena now? The pair went down to the arena. Are you ready to die Namikaze? Gara asked trying to keep up appearances. Naruto cracked his knuckles before saying, I'm not going to die now, but you are going to knocked around like a rag doll you oversized sandbag. Gara glared at the silver highlighted blonde for the insult. Ready. Begin. Just as the match between the two was about to start white feathers started to rain down on the arena. Sibylans fell asleep while ninja veterans and other shinobi managed to fight off the effects. Gara grinned insanely as he knew the TM to prove himself had come at last. As the Genjutsu fell all the Konoha shinobi broke through it and brandished their weapons. Immediately sand and sound shinobi descended on the crowd. 
You might as well give up, a sand shunin said to a civilian. You should give up punk, the civilian said before he was covered in smoke revealing himself to be an anbu. Plenty of other civilians did the same revealing multiple anbu. Back in the cages booth 4 sound Jonan had risen up and set up a huge box around the top of the arena trapping the disguised Minato and Orochimaru inside of it. You may have prepared for my invasion old man, Orochimaru said, but on this day you will die. The disguised cage chuckled and said, who said I was going to die? Also, who said I was the old geezer? The man tore off the his robes revealing Minato Namikaze. Orochimaru's yellow eyes widened in shock then in fear, this wasn't the old man he was expecting to fight. You should know as a shinobi not to think you have the advantage over someone, Minato said with a smirk, also, make sure your so-called ace in the hole doesn't come back to bite you on the butt. There was a sudden crash and the ceiling started to crack. Orochimaru spun around to see four Anbu stationed where the four sound janin were to throw up the barrier. Each one focused chakra into their hands before slamming them into the ceiling breaking it and causing the janin to lose their focus. As soon as the barrier fell Gara burst through the ceiling with a psychotic grin on his face. Orochimaru, he growled, you will be the one to prove my existence. The one-tailed Jinchuriki sent a large wave of sand at the snake Sanin who just barely managed to dodge. He was then reminded of the fact that he was surrounded by a bunch of Anbu and a thought dead cage when he was struck in the back with a wind bullet and had to dodge a great deal of weapons thrown at him. Gara, infuriated, brought up walls of sand made up from the concrete around him and blocked them all off before knocking them backwards. The red-haired Jinchuriki roared, this is my fight, stay out of it. The Suna Jinchuriki then proceeded to turn on Orochimaru and sent waves of sand at the snake Sanin. The Anbu were about interfere again when Minato stopped them and said, I wouldn't interrupt again if I were you. He's been driven mad by the fight. If we interfere now he'll kill us as well as that snake. The Anbu looked a little upset about not being able to take down the traitor, but stood down as they didn't want to die. They were however hoping that the Sanin would be torn apart in a slow, agonizing fashion. They w were Ethan taken from their thoughts when the strange sound Jonin came up from under the, the partially wrecked roof. The Anbu immediately went around them. Meanwhile, Naruto had both his swords out and were slicing through sound and sand ninja left and right. Nearby Shikimaru and Shino were using shadows and bugs respectively to dispatch their enemies. Sakura was going all street brawler on everyone's butts. Each punch came with a broken jaw, shattered teeth, and a lot of broken bones. Around them Guy was cracking multiple bones with his deadly fists. Kakashi was using ninjutsu as much as he could. Anko was feeding her targets to her snakes. Kurenai was trapping as many as she could in deadly illusions, and Asuma was slicing through target after target using his trench knives. As this was going on civilians were being shipped off to a safe area deep within the Hokage mountain. One of the people being shipped off was Sasuke Uchiha. As he was carried off by medics the last Uchiha stared angrily and jealously at Sakura and Naruto showing off their powers. On the other side of the village Kashina and a team of Anbu stood above the dead bodies of a bunch of sound ninja that were part of a large summoning circle. After that they decided to head back into the village and start tearing up invaders. Looks like that was the last of them, Naruto said as he surveyed the burned and broken battlefield. Yeah, Sakura said, now let's see if we can watch that oversized legless gecko get squashed. The group headed off for the top of the arena when a sudden gust of wind tore the ground in front of them. Tamari landed in front of them with her battle fan at the ready. Kankoro landed right next to her with his puppet out. What are you two doing? Naruto asked, that snake freak killed your old man and you're still fighting for him. Tamari scoffed and said, I never felt any love for the guy. He was a jerk who turned our little brother into a monster. On top of that he practically ignored his other two kids and probably would have tried selling me to a brothel if I lost my worth on the battlefield. Sakura cracked her knuckles and said, reasons aside we can't let you get in the way. Tamari smirked and mocked, you may have taken down that mummy freak, but I'm on a different level. Sakura got into a stance and said, we'll see. Shino faced Kankoro and said, go. I never got to compete in my match against this one. Naruto nodded and said, go. Naruto and Shikimaru nodded at their friends and jumped off to join the Yandaimi and watch the slaughter that would be Orochimaru's death. On top of the stadium, 
Orochimaru's luck seemed to be running out faster and faster by the seconds. He had tried using a fire jutsu to hurt the sand jinchuriki, but that only served to make things worse as he just reformed himself with his sand and he was starting to look like a miniature shukaku from the left side only. The snake Sanin tried using a seal called the three pronged seal to try and lock away the one tailed demon's chakra, but he made the mistake of trying for the seal on the stomach. This proved to be a mistake as the seal wasn't there and it only managed to piss off the desert monster even further. Orochimaru was now almost out of tricks as he didn't have the time to pull the impure world resurrection like he planned to do as the sand monster would either crush him or the coffins with the bodies in them to keep him from summoning them. There has got to be some way out of this, Orochimaru thought. As he was thinking this he had to dodge another volley of sand projectiles. Naruto, Shikimaru, and the Jonin landed next to Minato. Naruto took out small bucket of popcorn and a camera to help them remember this moment forever. Down in the arena, wind style, wind scythe, Sakura ran to the side to avoid the blades of razor sharp wind. Sakura went through hand signs and said, water style, hot water bullet. Sakura launched a ball of water from her mouth. Tamari dodged to the left to avoid the water ball that smashed into wall forming a crater. As she was regaining her balance she was caught in the jaw by a vicious right hook from the red head. Tamari jumped back and shook herself to shake the cobwebs from her head, as she did she jumped back to avoid a punch that formed a small crater where she once stood. This kid is no fangirl now, Tamari thought, as this was going on Shino and Kankoro were fighting it out amongst themselves. Kankoro was keeping his distance using his puppet. This proved to be a little problem for Shino since he normally need to keep close to his opponent to keep his bugs from being needlessly slaughtered. On top of that he couldn't get too close to his puppets because the puppets either had blades on its arms and could shoot poison from its mouth. After a few minutes of fighting Sakura grew annoyed with the blonde woman in front of her. Sakura ran in dodging to the right and unleashed a powerful haymaker that knocked the girl off her feet. Tamari braced herself however and then opened up her battle fan. Wind style. Great breakthrough. The fan launched a huge gust of wind outward. Sakura couldn't dodge in time and braced herself with earth chakra. Sakura stood her ground until the jutsu ended. Sakura growled before she felt something wash over her. Sakura focused chakra into her arm. The result was a small twister forming around her forearm and hand. Sakura pulled back her arm. Tamari noticed this and drew back her fan. Wind style. Great breakthrough. The huge gust of wind met the twister that was wrapped around Sakura's arm. The result was Temari's wind jutsu was cancelled out while the tornado went forward and struck Tamari in the front. The blonde pigtailed woman was clenched backwards hard and then crashing into the opposite wall with a crater forming in the wall. Meanwhile Shino was faring well against Kankoro. Kankoro launched poison needles from his puppet. Shino dodged the projectiles and sent out a few bugs. The next thing Kankoro knew he couldn't control his puppet, he quickly realized the chakra strings he used to control said puppet had been eaten. He quickly reformed them and had his puppet launch a ball that exploded in poison smoke. Kankoro smirked as he saw Shino fall to one knee. It was at that moment he felt his strength waver. He fell down to one knee and gasped in shock. He looked down to see a few of Shino's bugs crawling off him. How? The puppet user asked, you didn't even get close to me. Shino looked at his opponent and said, The female of the Kikai species is a very interesting specimen. She's able to emit a scent that attracts the warrior Kikai, which are the ones to drink chakra. Kankor felt realization dawn on him just as he started to lose consciousness. Sakura saw her friend double over and quickly ran over to the boy and performed a minor medical jutsu that Kashina had taught him over the month of training. Back with Orochimaru versus Gara, Gara was growing steadily more annoyed. This was not the fight that he had been promised. So far the snake Sanin had only dodged and had barely done anything to try and beat him. If anything he was just running away like a coward. I grow tired of this farce, Gara roared, time to die Orochimaru. The sand Jinchuriki shot out a deformed hand and grabbed Orochimaru's arm. There was a sickening crack that signified that the man's arm was destroyed. Gara sent out his sand. Since this so-called great warrior had wasted his time he was going to make him suffer. Sand wrapped around Orochimaru's arm and leg before growling, sand burial. The sand crushed Orochimaru's arm and leg. 
The worst part for Orochimaru was that since the sand was enhanced by the Shukaku's chakra the wound wouldn't regenerate. On top of that he hadn't gained a new body so he could try doing that. Sand Puncture Gara formed large spikes with his sand before sending them out and then pinning Orochimaru to the ground and making him scream out in agony. Finally Gara's sand went outward and started grinding up the materials of the tile and the cement in the roof before it went flying upwards. Sand Waterfall Burial The great fall of sand then crushed Orochimaru's body into the roof before sending it downward and crashing into the ground below the arena. Gara then flooded the ground below and covered the whole thing before focusing the sand as hard as EH could. Great Sand Burial The resulting implosion of pressurized earth. Cracks formed in the ground as the massive amounts of sand crushed the Konoha trader into the ground. All that was left of Orochimaru in the sand was a large pile of red mess and gore. As this happened Anko suddenly cried out in pain as he clutched her neck. The Kuranai crouched down next to her friend and moved her hand. The Kur's seal on her neck burned before it turned red and faded away. As the pain ceased Anko fell to her knees as she felt a darkness in her soul and a great weight on her heart leave she had to fight back tears of happiness. It's gone. My curse is gone. As this was happening Sasuke clutched his neck as he felt his curse seal burn. The mark burned before it slowly faded away. Instead of joy at having the seal removed the Uchiha felt his rage burning inside of him. The mark is gone. Someone stole my power. I needed that power. Back with the others Gara roared as he faced the others around him. He finally glared at Naruto. You. You promised me a powerful adversary, Naruto chuckled and said, I really thought he would put up more of a fight. I didn't expect him to be a complete and total coward. My bad. Gara snarled and said, Well then, let's hope you are more of a fighter. Just as Gara was about to charge Naruto quickly went through an unrecognizable set of hand sign. Dragon release. Dragon fire stream. Naruto fire a large blast of pure white flames from his maw. The white hot flames covered Gara. The good thing was that the flames were enhanced by Elion's chakra and burned Gara's sand into glass. Hit it pops. Minato then charged forward with his hand outstretched and shoved his hands forward with all five of his figners covered in chakra. Five pronged seal. Minato slammed his hand into Gara's chest right over the heart. Gara stumbled before the chakra enhanced sand slowly fell off him and then fell off to the side out cold and with the Shukaku's chakra suppressed he fell asleep for the first time in years. Naruto smirked as he looked down at the bloody remains of Orochimaru. Are you sure Kabuto won't break out and try to avenge his master? Naruto asked. No, Ibiki, who just joined them, said with a smirk, he didn't survive the last day of torture. His heart gave out right after he broke. At that moment Kashina landed next to them with a bag of popcorn. Okay let's see the, she stopped when she was Gara out cold. The woman pouted and whined, oh man, I missed it. Naruto said, don't worry mom. I recorded the whole fight. Now we can watch it over and over and over again. Now then I suggest we get the people here looked at in case people got hurt badly. With that everyone set off to do their job. It had been a few weeks since the invasion and the slaughter of one Orochimaru. Since then word had gotten out that the Yandaimi was alive and well. Surprisingly Iwa didn't want Santo attack them. Apparently they had learned from the war not to piss this guy off. If they did it would be the third great shinobi war all over again. When things started to die down Minato ordered Jiraiya to find Suande. To make things interesting he told the old toad sage that his books would be banned forever and that protection seals would be put up around the hot springs should he fail the mission. As of yet the old pervert is still searching for his former teammate. While this was going on Minato had managed to give out two promotions both of which to Sakura Haruno and Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The Raz and Y being they both showed incredible skill and tactics. Speaking of which the law sit against the Haruno head was going relatively well. She had lost most of the stuff that was Sakura's and had been cleaned out and was taken to the Namikaze household. Rose Haruno, upon hearing about the sealed abilities, demanded that she be returned over to the Haruno clan. That immediately got her drop kicked out the door. At the moment Minato was sitting in his office filing some paperwork that had to do with some minor repairs from the invasion forces. Another good thing about his civilian council being disbanded was the fact that there was a lot less paperwork. Now he didn't have to use shadow clones like before. 
Just as he stamped the approved seal on the last sheet a chunin burst through the door. Yandaimi Sama, the man yelled, there are some people here to see you, sir. Minato looked confused before the door opened revealing four rather beautiful women. The first was the oldest. She had dark green eyes with long blonde hair done up in a long ponytail. She wore a black anbu shirt and long pants with bandages around the ankles and shins with sandals. On her belt was a large broadsword that was made of silver metal and had an image of a flower etched into the blade. The other three were about thirteen. The first had black hair and blue eyes. She had on a red shirt with long black pants and sandals. She had on some shin guards under her pant legs. She also had pads on her elbows and a pair of gloves that had knuckle dusters on them with small spikes as well. The second was a red head with dark green eyes. She had on a green shirt with the image of a blue snake slithering over the shoulder down to her stomach. She also had some black pants and boots. On her back was a bow and quiver of arrows. She also had a few thrown knives on her belt that had a rose for a buckle. The third was a blonde with blue eyes. Her hair was down up in two pigtails. She had on a pink shirt and long pants with sandals. On her right arm was the blue picture of a crescent moon. On her hips were a pair of scimitars. Are you the leader of this village? The oldest woman looked at the woman and answered, I am. Who are you? The woman looked at Minato strangely before she said, My name is Isis, current leader of Hanagakir. Minato's eyes widened to an incredible size when he heard that. The village hidden in the flowers was pretty well renowned. The village was known as an Amazon village made up entirely out of women. Most men have gone in search of the village because it is said to have the most beautiful women. Most of them old men seeking a harem. They, along with their convoys, were never seen again. Others sought it for their land which was rich in an ore that was good for focusing chakra. He heard that an Iwajanan had gone there and tried to get an alliance. Apparently he did something to piss them off because he was found a few days later tired to a tree after being castrated with a superheated and rusty kanai. What is it the leader of the Amazons want with us? Minato asked. I thought your people had cut yourselves completely off from the world of men. Isis nodded and said, We did. However, there have been some unexpected incidents lately. The village called Iwa has been attacking us a lot lately. Since you were known as a great fighter against them in your third shinobi war your village would be prime for an alliance. Minato nodded in understanding. He also felt a little bit of annoyance that Iwa was still trying to do something stupid like messing with a bunch of women who were able to castrate one of their best fighters. I'm sure I can write up an alliance, Minato said. Now would you mind telling me what those three girls are doing here? Isis said, they are some of my strongest genin going on chunin. I believe that getting out of the village would be a good thing for them. Do you by any chance have someone that can show them around the village? Preferably someone who won't try anything indecent. Minato thought for a second and said, I believe I know someone just like that. A few minutes later in the Namikaze household, Minato and the Amazons entered the household to hear the sounds of explosions and seeing Kashina walking around like nothing was happening. Naruto and Sakura are sparring again aren't they? Minato asked with a bored expression getting a nod from his wife. Minato shook his head and said, we really need to get those two some different hobbies. Isis walked next to Minato and asked, one of those two are going to be the ones to show my girls around the village? Minato nodded. The group then made their way to the training area. They were greeted by the sight of Naruto dodging Earth Chakra powered fists from Sakura. Naruto dodged a few more punches before throwing out a kick that made the former pink haired girl dodge to the side. Naruto came out and his nails lengthened to claws and he took a swing at the girl with his claws. Sakura caught the claws in one hand before twisting and throwing the girl over his shoulder. Sakura drove her legs into the ground to stop herself from going too far. The redhead looked up and was about TTO charge again when she noticed the others there. Naruto, the girl said, we have company. Naruto looked behind him to see the girls. Dad, Naruto said, are you and mom really that desperate for grandkids? The girls looked a little upset at that remark. Minato flushed and yelled, they aren't here for that you dummy. The blonde cage cleared his throat and said, they are representatives from the village hidden in the flowers. I need you to escort them around the village. Show them some of the sights. Naruto looked at the girls and started to get a little nervous. Naruto then asked, Wouldn't it be a better idea to let Sakura take thee on the tour? Minato smirked at his son and said, What's wrong, Naruto? You aren't afraid of them, are you? 
I thought you already had that talk with your mom. Naruto blushed and yelled. I didn't mean that stupid. I mean that it might not be a good idea for a guy to escort a few Amazons around the village. Besides, how do I know they won't pull me into an ally and castrate me if I make one wrong remark? The girl with the bow and arrows stepped up and said, What's wrong boy? Are you afraid that we can hurt you? Naruto turned to the girl and growled, No, I'm just a little nervous since you were pretty famous for being man-haters and since I am in fact male I fear for my life. The girl smirked and said, You should be a little man. Naruto scowled his eyes flashing gold for a second as he got in closer to the girl and she add, You know the arrogant are always sthe first to die. You want to learn that lesson firsthand? The redhead was going to make another remark when Isis said, Artemis. We are here for the benefit of our home and we are not going to ruin it by fighting with the leader's spawn. Artemis scowled before she turned away and huffed. Now Naruto get on with the tour, the elder Namikaze said, the sooner you start the sooner you don't have to worry about having a certain part of your anatomy shredded. Naruto sighed and said, come on. The sooner we start the sooner you can get away from me. The girls nodded and went with the silver highlighted blonde. When they were out of the compound Artemis asked, so where are we going first? Naruto shrugged and said, I guess the training grounds since we'll most likely run into a few of the others there. Hopefully we'll be able to avoid a few, unethical people. The girls looked at each other with confusion at Naruto's tone. As they were halfway there Naruto noticed a few of the guys there were giving them a few unsavory looks. It was obviously making them upset because they reached for their weapons. Just relax, Naruto said, if a girl here usually has a headband with a symbol on it they know not to mess with them. If they do though you are good to clobber them into the ground in as painful a manner as you want. The girls smirked evilly when they heard that making HT perverted male civilians pale and turn their eyes away. It was then that the civilians with girlfriends and wives got smacked over the head by said partners. As soon as they arrived at the training grounds they saw that nobody was there. Seriously I was expect someone to. They were cut off by a shout of, youth. Naruto sighed and said, why is it I can never run into the same people? Naruto walked toward the sound with the girls and found the remains of team guy training. Ten Ten was practicing with all of her different weapons while Neji was practicing his Jiyuken though he looked like he was having a really rough time since Naruto had practically broken his arms a few weeks before. Surprisingly Lee was there performing push-ups with his one good arm. Naruto. Guy yelled when he saw Naruto, how are you on this bright and youthful day? And who are these young flowers of beauty? Naruto answered, to the first question I'm fine. To the second question the redhead is Artemis. I don't know who the other two are however since they have yet to give their names. The blonde with the swords said, my name is Aphrodite. The other one is Aresia. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the names, but decided not to question the idea. He was brought out of his thoughts when he saw Ten Ten ogling Aphrodite's scimitars. Can I help you? The blonde woman asked. Ten Ten regained her composure and said, sorry, it's just that I want to be a weapons mistress when I'm older and I tend to go a little crazy when I see a cool weapon. Aphrodite grinned a little and said, you have good taste then. The metals from our land are capable of taking on any kind of chakra. It makes it useful and powerful weapons to whoever wields them just so long as they have the right weapon. Ten Ten was drooling as she heard that. While this was going on Aresia was currently looking at Lee strangely. She nudged Neji and said, does that boy know he is very badly injured or is he mentally ill? Neji shrugged his shoulders and said, Lee has always been this way. No matter how down he was he has always managed to come out with a drive to prove he is powerful. He may not be the best in the village but he is a very adept fighter. Now if only we didn't have to worry about him and Guy sensei going all weird us. Arisia was looking at Lee in shock. She hadn't heard about anyone having a drive like that. In other words it was very interesting here. It was at that moment that Naruto's stomach made itself known. Sorry, Naruto said. I guess I didn't have enough for breakfast. Artemis huffed and said, typical. Unlike you men we don't have to rely on food as much. At that moment her stomach made itself known followed by the rest of her team. The girls looked a little flushed. I think I know a good place we can go eat, Naruto said, later Guy sensei Get better soon Lee. Lee looked up from his one-armed push-ups and yelled, I will try Naruto. A few minutes later the four arrived at the Ichiruka ramen stand. Hey Ayame-chan. Naruto yelled as he entered the stand, 
four bowls of today's special. We got a lot of mouths to feed. The brown haired ramen chef came out fro behind the counter and said, You got it, Naruto kun. Dad, four specials extra large. While they were waiting, Naruto's curiosity got the better of him. I have to ask, Naruto said, Where did you get your names from? They are a little odd. Arisia looked at Naruto and answered, We are named after our greatest fighters or leaders since our mothers saw potential in us. I was named after my mother's sister who was a great hand to hand fighter. Artemis was named after one of our leaders who happened to be a huntress with impeccable aim. Aphrodite was named after the leader who followed her because she was said to be the most beautiful child born that year. Naruto nodded and said, Wow! A lot better than where I got my name from. Artemis looked at Naruto and asked, Where did you get yours? Naruto blushed slightly and said, I was named after a character in my godfather's books. Fortunately for me it was before he started right that shameless filth. Artemis looked confused and said, What shameless filth? Naruto leaned over and whispered into her ear. As soon as he was done the archer growled angrily and made a mental not to hurt said man whenever she got to see him. Either that or hand him over to her mother whichever came first. At that moment there were four bowls of ramen placed in front of the four ninja. A few minutes later there were huge mountains of empty bowls of ramen in front of them. Ayame had a look of absolute shock and awe on her face while Tuchi had currency symbols in his eyes. Naruto looked down at the bowls and said, One never thought any girl had as big an appetite as I do. Artemis patted her full stomach and said, Unlike most of the girls from the hidden villages we take things seriously. So we don't let things like the amount of food we consume get in our way. Besides we have very strenuous training schedules, so we don't have to worry. At that moment there was a large bustling in the streets. Everyone ran to the road to see a large toad with its tongue wrapped around somebody jumping down the road. Did you just see that? Arisia asked after a few seconds of silence. The others all nodded. Well, Naruto said, let's see if we can't continue on the tour. As they all left they suddenly ran into by someone unexpected Hiyashi Hayuga. The Hayuga patriarch was actually looking haggard with sweat running down his face. Naruto. The man yelled as he grabbed the silver highlighted blonde, I need you to come with me right away. Naruto raised an eyebrow and asked, Sorry Hiyashi Dono, but I'm in the middle of. The Hayuga patriarch grabbed Naruto's shoulders and yelled, It's about Hanada, she's in danger. Naruto looked surprised and said, Can they come? I don't think dad will like it if I let them go around the village unsupervised and all. The man simply shook his head furiously in a yes motion. They all ran towards the Hayuga complex before running inside. Soon they found themselves in Hanada Hayuga's room. Inside was Hanada laying in bed with her eyes wrapped up in bandages. What happened to her? Naruto asked. It started a few hours ago, the older man said, she fell to the ground in the middle of training when she activated her Byakugan. She clutched her eyes and blood leaked out. It ook her up here and we checked her out and well, look for yourself. Naruto walked over to Hanada and asked, Hanada can you take your bandages off? Hanada seemed to hear him and slowly removed the bandages from her eyes. Naruto nearly gasped when Hanada's eyes opened up. Her eyes were no longer white. They were lightly blue with multiple lines in it almost like a crystal with a slightly silver edge to the crystal like lines. On top of that the sclera was silver. What the heck happened to her eyes? Naruto asked. Hiyashi answered, I don't know. I was hoping you would know. Naruto thought for a second until Elion and Kayubi started sending him in for as quick as they possibly could. Naruto said, I think I know. Do you remember the jutsu I used on Hinata when she was going into cardiac arrest back at the hospital? This is apparently in result of the stronger more potent chakras mixing with her chakra. When she activated her Byakugan the chakra rushed to her eyes and caused them to change. Hiyashi was pacing and said, this is not good, this is not good. Arisia looked confused and asked, How is this a bad thing? Hiyashi answered, The Hyuga Council will see this as a bad thing. They could have her put in the branch family and have her branded with the caged bird seal. Worse they could try to have her eyes removed and transplanted into someone else. Naruto shook his head and said, That's a bad idea. The chakra that created her eyes might still be there and the chakra would tear the persons the eyes are transplanted into apart from the inside. It would make things much worse. Hiyashi nodded his head and said, The only way I can overrule their verdict regarding my daughter is if she is taken by someone. 
Naruto asked, Hisahi are you about to say what I think you're about to say? Hiyashi nodded and said, Naruto Namikaze, will you marry my daughter? Naruto looked shocked as did everyone else. Hinata promptly fainted at the thought of marrying Naruto. Are you serious? Naruto asked. Hisashi nodded and said, I am. The only way Tatsi this survives is to have her under a powerful clan's protection. On top of that the council would be thrilled if they were able to gain more political power in the village. Naruto sighed and said, Well if it means saving my friend then I guess I don't have much choice. I'll do it. Hiyashi sighed and said, Thank you. You have just saved my daughter from a horrible fate. I'll write the contracts up tonight. Naruto looked at the Amazons and said, Well we better get back to the compound our leaders are probably done with the treaty negotiations by now. With that they left. As soon as they did Hinata woke up and said, Father I had the strangest dream. I dreamt that I had a mutated by Akugan and that I was going to be married to Naruto-kun. Hiyashi looked at his daughter and said, that was no dream. Hinata was silent for a second as she blinked with her new eyes. Once. Twice. Three times. Then the loudest mo high-pitched squeal echoed through the air and shattered glass and made the Inazuka howl at the moon since the squeal hurt their ears. Hinata then fainted in happiness with a smile that almost covered her entire face. Hiyashi was bent over with blood coming out of his ears. Note to self. Buy a hearing aid tomorrow, the Hyuga patriarch thought. It had been a few days since the girls from the hidden flower village came to the village. In that time Tsunade had come back to village, albeit she was still reluctant since Jiraiya had practically attacked her with one of his toads, wrapped her up in its tongue and then pulled her along with it all the way to Konoha. The woman almost had a heart attack when she saw Minato and Kashina alive. She actually thought she was hallucinating due to all the drinking she had done over the years coupled with the stress of all her losses and keeping ahead of all those debt collectors. Shizune, Tsunade's apprentice who came much later since she decided to go willingly, didn't take it well either as she just up and fainted. It wasn't until Kushian actually walked up and slapped her did the woman realize that she wasn't dreaming or hallucinating. The two Namikaze elders were then put in a subsequent death hug by the slug user. Upon their immediate recovery from nearly being squished to death the famous medic was then put to work trying to heal Rock Lee after his near tragic battle with Gara. On another note Kiba was finally turned back into a boy and had a newfound respect for women since he had been stuck as one. He also had come to have a slight phobia of older men since they had the habit of hitting on young women like he used to be. After walking a mile in a woman's shoes Kiba actually made a better impact on the girls. He was actually quite the romantic now when he wanted to be. While this did impress a few girls their parents didn't really trust him right away on account of the fact that he used to be a major pervert. Thanks to their skills shown in the Sakura and Naruto were promoted to Chunin. Shalimar was even promoted due to his tactical abilities and his obvious intelligence. On the darker side of things Sasuke had become more and more furious. He had seen his teammates grow stronger and stronger and finally get promoted while he was still weak and he was still a lowly genin. In his eyes it was totally unfair. Naruto, the dobi of his class, had excelled past him by leaps and bounds as did the weak fangirl. He was completely show up by the two that were supposed to stay weak while he was supposed to get strong. At the time he couldn't even go on missions or get training by Kakashi since his team was temporarily disbanded since he was only one man. What made things worse was that with Orochimaru dead he couldn't get true strength due to his curse mark being gone. A few days later, Minato had just finished watching his shadow clones do all of the paperwork he had when some chunin burst through the door to the man's office. Hokage-sama, the Uchiha is gone, the man yelled. What? The blonde cage yelled. It was a few hours ago, the chunin explained, Kakashi Hitaki went to check on the boy as he hadn't seen him in a few days. He said he saw the boy making a beeline for the village gates. Minato sighed and said, I knew I should have locked that boy up after his psyche evaluation. Get the two former members of Team 7 and get Kakashi. Tell them to go after the boy in the last direction he was last heading. We can't let that little runt get too far away. The Chunin then got his hide out of there, a few hours later. Sasuke was currently running for his life through the forest. His trademark Uchiha smirk was plastered on his face. He knew that the village wouldn't risk hurting him since it would give him all the more reason to leave. Even if he was caught they wouldn't punish him for fear of losing his all-powerful eyes. Poor deluded imbecilic fool. 
Anyway Sasuke's plan was to try and make it to Otogakure the hidden sound village since its now dead leader had given him some real strength. The boy thought that if he trained there then he would be able to become the strongest in no time. It was at that moment that a stream of gold flames shot out of nowhere and incinerated the tree that the runaway Uchiha was about to jump to. Before the naive boy could contemplate what was going on a flurry of shuriken embedded themselves along with the clothes at his shoulders into the tree he was standing in. Sasuke scowled furiously as he saw the members of his former team looking at him. What are you doing here? The duck-haired emo yelled. We're here to take you back to the village, Kakashi said sternly. The Uchiha spat and yelled, like I care. That weak village doesn't even have anything to offer me anymore. Kakashi walked up to the Uchiha and proceeded to smash his fist into the young boy's face. And to think, Kakashi said, the village used to treat you like a prince. Kakashi then wrapped the young boy wrapped the young Uchiha in ninja wire and hoisted the arrogant child over his shoulder. As they made their way back the Uchiha started ordering them to let him go. It was R really starting to get on everyone's nerves. At least it did until Naruto took out a piece of extra strength chakra proof duct tape and wrapped it around the Uchiha's mouth effectively shut the young boy up. As soon as the group got back to the village, civilian Uchiha lovers started clamoring about how the Uchiha was being treated since he was at the moment tied up and being treated like a criminal. As soon as the Uchiha was handed over to the Anbu he was taken to Hodling facility and had his chakra sealed as well as his eyes covered in chakra proof wrappings preventing him from using his Sharingan. Minato went to the council for some advisory. They decided with him that the Uchiha should be executed. If the civilian council was still around they probably would have tried to pin the blame on Naruto for showing the Uchiha up. They all decided that the boy's punishment would be execution under charges of trying to abandon the village. Treason was the one thing none of the hidden villages would stand for. Word of the execution went through T village like wildfire. The Uchiha's reputation with the villagers had gone down the toilet since his strength obviously wasn't what they thought it would be. When news reached them about the boy's attempted defection they pretty much threw the boy to his side like an old sack of garbage. Within a few days everyone was gathered in the main arena and everyone was watching. The clan heads were waiting in a certain box while the civilians were in the main seats. If any of the civilians had been looking they would have seen a few of the clan heads had popcorn, soda, and a few cameras. Minato stood in the middle of the arena and took out a microphone. The man cleared his throat and said, People of Konoha as you know one of our own has tried to commit treason and tired to defect from the village. Bring him out. The Anbu lead the traitorous Uchiha out from a nearby passage and lead him to the center of the field. He currently had a special seal on him that kept him from activating his bloodline. Sasuke Uchiha, the blonde cage said, You are here on charges of attempting to desert Konoha. How do you plead? Sasuke growled, Let me got you pompous fool. Minato looked at the arrogant boy and said, I'll take that as, guilty. Does anyone want to try and defend this boy? Silence. Anyone? No? Okay then. Any last words before you die boy? The Uchiha spat and said, You will pay for this you weak excuse of a Hokage. You and that whore of a wife of yours. Minato's eye twitched before quickly formed a Rasengan and smashed it into the Uchiha's chest blasting a hole in the middle of heart. As the body was taken away the seal negating his bloodline flashed. His dead eyes reflected the Sharingan before the eyes started to burn. After the Uchiha's body was taken away it was burned and the ashes were put in a coffee can. They remained in the Hokage's tower for a few days. At least until the janitor got it confused with some cleaning product and used it to clean the toilets. A few hours after the Uchiha's execution Sakura and Naruto had been called up into Minato's office. When they arrived they found the Namikaze matriarch and patriarch, Tsunade, and Jiraiya waiting for them. What did you call us in here for pops? Naruto asked, we aren't in trouble are we? Because if that's the case I didn't do it. Minato raised an eyebrow behind and said, no son you aren't in trouble, we needed to talk with you too about something. Sakura asked, what is it? Kashina said, as you know things are hectic in the village right now. We have to deal with powers outside the village, mostly the other hidden village. There is something else out there that has caught our attention. Jiraiya stepped up and said, over the past few years my spy network has been looking into all the hidden villages. Recently my spying has found a secret organization called the Akatsuki. Now terrorists organizations are nothing new. What is new is the fact that these guys are after the Jinchuriki. 
Naruto gulped as he heard that. Jiraiya continued, each member of this organization is an S-ranked criminal. We know that they intend on going after the different Jinchuriki, but for what reason we are not yet sure. This puts you and those close to you in grave danger. Sakura suddenly asked, What are you getting at Jiraiya-sama? What does this have to do with us? Suande answered for her protege and asked, How would you two like to become part of the Sanin? Silence. Then there were a pair of thuds. The adults looked down at the unconscious preteens. Well, Minato after a few minutes, they took that relatively well. A few minutes and two cold buckets of water later. Oh man, Naruto said, I could have just sworn the old lady asked us if we wanted to be a part of the Sanin. The blonde boy was then clocked over the head by Sakura who said, Don't insult Suande-sama like that. Naruto rubbed the lump on his head and groaned in pain. When the lump was gone he asked, How come we're getting this offer anyway? We already have you two don't we? Jiraiya nodded and said, Yes, but with Orochimaru dead we're one man short of three. Tsunade then added, Besides I'm considering retiring to become a medic nin. From what I've heard the hospital staff is somewhat lacking, and if I start teaching we might have a decrease in the amount of weak fangirls. Naruto thought for a minute and said, I guess that makes sense, but what are going to do for animals? Both of you have summons already. Kashina then walked over to her son and playfully bopped him on the head. You have a fox and dragon sealed in you son, the woman explained, and Sakura has a calling with falcons. You both have the ideals and the skills. All you need is the training. Naruto looked at Sakura who looked back at him, the two shrugged. Okay, Naruto said, but how exactly do we summon? Jiraiya suddenly said, before we do we might want to get to a nice open space before we do that. I really doubt the tower could stand something like that. The two preteens nodded and they all set out of the tower to one of the currently unused training grounds. Minato and the others stood away from Sakura and Naruto as the pair stood ready. Naruto, following instructions from Kayubi and Elion focused chakra into both of his arms. Sakura following Suad's advice and focused her chakra into her hand. The two slammed their hands on the ground and there was a humongous blast of smoke and debris. When the smoke cleared there was nothing. The kids were gone. What just happened? Minato asked with a shocked and horrified look on his face. Meanwhile, Naruto and Sakura fell to the ground and groaned in pain. Okay, Naruto said, what just happened? One minute we're summoning something, the next we crash into a stone floor. What just happened? The pair were then aware of the sound of growling. The pair turned around and what they saw shocked the pair to their cores. They were in the middle of a huge council room made completely out of marble and diamond. The room looked like it could hold a council of all the village at once. What really freaked out the two were the creatures that stood in the room. In one corner was a large falcon. It had a black and white feathers with a gold beak and large dark green eyes that looked like they could see for miles on end. On its back was a massive scroll. In another corner was a large dragon. It had black scaled skin that looked more like armor with a reed outline and large curved horns on its head. Red Dragon Arch Fiend from Yu-Gi-Oh which I don't own. The final creature was a large eight-tailed fox with deep gold fur and dark blue eyes. Who are you guys? Naruto asked clearly nervous at being surrounded by such large and clearly terrifying creatures. The fox said, we are the heads of the fox, dragon, and falcon clans. We brought you here because you tried to summon us without our permission. Is there a reason why? Sakura said, We were trying to summon you to help us in an upcoming war against a group called the Aktasuki. The dragon snarled, What would a simple matter in the human world matter to us? Naruto said, They are after the nine biju, we don't know why exactly. The falcon hummed and said, So they are trying to do that. Such madness they are dealing with forces beyond their control. The falcon's eyes settled on Sakura who looked a little nervous as she was looked at by the great bird. You carry our mark don't you girl, the falcon said, from what I can tell the boy carries the mark of the dragon and fox clans. The fox and dragon looked shocked and looked down at Naruto and saw the marks on his arms. I thought I sensed a familiar presence, the dragon said, you have Elion sealed within you do you not? Naruto nodded. The dragon looked at the fox. The pair huddled together for a moment while the falcon looked to be in very deep thought. This continued for about 10 minutes. Sakura and Naruto were both very nervous at the time. 
When the gained lizard and fox separated the falcon came out of his chance. Fine, the kitsune said, we will allow you to summon us as the issue you face may pose a threat to the summon world as well. We have but one condition. Naruto looked upward at the great kitsune and asked, what? The dragon answered, that you spend time training with us so that you may achieve enough power to face this evil organization. Naruto and Sakura looked at each other before nodding. The dragon turned to the fox and said, he'll spend a year and a half training with me and another year and a half training with you. Deal? The fox held out its paw and shook claws with the dragon. Later in the human world, half the ninja force had been stretched thin looking around for Naruto and Sakura. So far they had turned up nothing. Even their best ninja hounds couldn't pick up their scent. Minato and Kashina were devastated at having lost their son again. The two arrived late at home trying to figure out where kids had gone when they came across a strange sight. In their living room, laying on a couch, was a small white fox with three tails swishing behind it. There was a moment of tense silence. Kawaii! The fuzzy animal was then swept up into Kashina's arms and was promptly hugged to death by the woman. So soft and fluffy, the woman cooed as she snuggled the animal like it was a pet. Though I'm glad you find me cute it would be better if you didn't crush me, the fox said making Kashina cry out in shock and dropping the little creature. You're a summon aren't you? Minato asked, it was more of a statement than a question. The fox answered, yes. I was sent as a messenger from the falcon, fox, and dragon clans regarding the children who tried to summon us. Kashina and Minato leaned forward listening intently. The clan heads have decided to take the children to their clan homes so that they may train them in EHIR ways. The girl named Sakura will be staying with the falcon clan, while the boy named Naruto will be spending time with the dragon clan and then the fox clan. Is there any questions? Minato asked, how long will they be staying? The fox said, they will be staying for a duration of three years. Is there any other questions? The pair looked at each other and shook their heads. Very well, the fox said, your children say hello by the way. With his job done the fox burst into smoke and vanished. Well, Minato said, I'm going to bed. Kashina looked at her husband and asked, why? Minato smirked and said, for one thing we have the house to ourselves tonight. Second when Naruto comes back he's probably going to be pretty strong. If our boy tries to fight me for the job I'm going to give him the fight of his life. Besides we need to get back in shape anyway. I think all the ramen is starting to get to us. It was too late when Minato figured out his mistake. Are you saying I'm getting fat? Kashina asked her husband with a steely look in her eyes. Minato started to sweat and promptly ran. Get back here, the woman yelled. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.